badly drawn boy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jones with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'll tell you what, the stone is then. Oh, -ho -ho. this Thursday, this Thursday at the Grosvenor House Hotel. Yeah. Everyone in radio, anyone has uh, entered their show in different categories, saying, "Oh, you know, they get they get it down to." You know, winners uh, this year included the brilliant Dominic Mohan, former uh, showbiz editor of the Sun. Uh, lots of lot, lots of people won. Lots of people won. Lots of people won gold. Lots of people won silver. Lots of people won bronze. We didn't get a sausage. <laughs> Nothing. This show was deemed not not worthy of anything. I mean, not not a look in. The panel looked at it and said, "Well, no, definitely this is not. not radio. Didn't get a, didn't get a vote. See, that and that annoys me on so many levels. Let me let me tell you one. Right, I've never complained about losing an award. Okay, ever. Yeah, in mainly in TV. I know we've won a lot, but. We've been beaten a couple of, beaten by Peter Kay. Good luck to him. He's brilliant. Um, uh, beaten by Phoenix Knights in sitcom. A lot of people like that more than yeah, the Oscars and uh, vice versa, right? Uh, n no qualms. But the shoddy shite that I heard that night beating us, I was furious. I don't understand. There's, there's people, regional, it sounds like hospital radio, right? They, I mean, I shouldn't even be on XFM. I thought, I, you know, it, it, it's beneath me. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, give them a hand, right? Let's show them. And I want to know who the panel was as well. I, I do not believe it. Uh, how can they di- um, I was looking back over the, some of the shows, right, before I go, Carl, and I've just done a little excerpt of, you know, a trailer of what we, what we do, what we're about, and I don't know how the panel could overlook- play a bit, Carl, please. Shaking her muff, minge, <laughs> and tits around does not make her a hoe, then what does? These kids at school with big heads. Carl, what are you talking about? Shut- Oh, well, my name is Holy Fuck. Right, yeah. there's this monkey that, uh, was on a train station. Right. What, you, what if you mean cock to mean penis? <laughs> but it was me Down Syndrome son. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> so we've still got monkey news coming up. <laughs> You're an idiot! You know what I mean? That's, to me, quality broadcast. I don't know how they can say that isn't worthy. That's what we sent in <laughs> to the Sony people. <laughs> they listened to that. How they didn't think that was dynamite stuff. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. You know, I've been thinking about this since Thursday, because I've been a little bit uh, down in the dumps. Yeah. What I think it is, is that with the radio, with the TV show, the TV stuff we've done, we put a lot of work into that. Yeah. We, we get the script, we got the script, yeah, we, yeah. we spend a lot of time on it. What this show is about, it's very much about spontaneity, it's about our personalities, and I don't think we're ever going to win an award for our personalities. <laughs> I think that's where we're going Do you know on. what I think? I think that when we're together, we're with the auteurs of The Office and, you know, and, uh, we're strong on it, and we're just two, uh, we write it, we direct it, yeah. we, you know, we, we cast it, we, 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 we worry about the font and stuff on the, you know, we do everything. <laughs> There's a weak link in our midst, I well, think. On the radio show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, yeah, well, yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to think what the common factor is, because on the um, award-winning TV show, well, especially you and I. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll say, well, can we play a record, and uh, let me think about this, because there must be some, there must be something. There's got to be a factor. That isn't in the office that's in this, that means that the office is award-winning, and this is a pile of shite. Brown Sugar by, uh, The Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with Steve Merchant. And with us, um, Carl, Carl Pilkington, the third, third member of this, um, team. Mm. Team. We and, me and you do The Office. Award winning. Yeah, and me, us three do this, do this show. No awards. <laughs> Nothing. Carl, what, what are your thoughts? What do you think's wrong with the show? Why do you think the panel listened to our show and said, that is awful, it's not actually a radio show? Well, what? can I just point out, so many people may not realise that last year we won a bronze, so we've actually gone down, we've actually slid off the list all yeah. entirely. I know, but I mean, that, that, yeah, but Carl wasn't really as involved last well, year. Well, I remember last, last year, you, it was pretty much you yeah, and I. Yeah, 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 I mean, Carl's we just, we just started out on it, yeah, so I mean, so you can't really, you can't really compare. Hold on, though. Well, oh, interesting, interesting. What do you think, Carl? What, what do you think the reason thoughts, is? Thoughts, Carl? Any thoughts? I see what you're getting at, right? But- You're not stupid. But, when I put the compilation together, yeah. I made sure that it was mainly you two. Mm. Mm. So don't, don't be, uh, don't be doing that. Don't be playing that game. So you, oh, so you put the compilation together? Yeah. Right, again. Ah, right, interesting, because we, we were involved with we that. We usually do the office, edit the office and everything, we have mm. the final cut on the office. So you- Oh, I see, so yeah, you- Oh, right, no, 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 so you're the You had your fingers all over it, interesting. Yeah, right. Oh, interesting. So, oh, well, um, uh, that, so the tape was the smoking gun, and whose fingerprints were on it? Carl Pilkington's, interesting. Yeah. That's interesting, we didn't, 
get a sausage. Mm. But, you know, uh, do you know what, uh, seriously though, you know, you, well, I don't I mean seriously, it is his fault. I know, but I mean, we, we, it's our fault as well, because we should have known better, right? But- Than to employ him, yeah. But, um, I actually think it's a slap in the face. Mm. I want to know the panel was, a lot of Sony thinking, just adding it out to the same old people, mm. you mm. know what I mean? Every clip they played was a funny phone call. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And so, I'm Did actually- Did we send any of our funny phone calls in? So if anyone, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone cares, I think, I, th I, th I think we should knock this on the head, as a oh, protest yeah. against Sony. As I say, I've never complained before about Luna, but I mean this one, don't know what that, don't know what I want, I w or I want someone on the panel, it was entertainment, I want someone on the panel to phone up and say why they think this show is rubbish. Well, I'll, I'll apologise. Well, I'll not apologise, if they stand by the, if they tell me why, you know, because, you know, listening to that, that clip now, I can't see anything wrong with that as- No, sure. As sort of, you know, daytime radio. It's interesting, I mean, I, I don't think, um, our number one fan, Dickie Anderson, Richard Anders, was, uh, on the, on the panel, although he here has emailed in. He's Go got on, a couple of thoughts as to maybe why we- What win. is Dickers doing, man? Uh, Dickers says, commiserations on not winning a Sony, I can't believe you didn't win, naturally. Oh. I mean, apart from your show's obvious lack of quality and effort, having a monkey for a producer, offering the biggest load of tat as competition prizes, <laughs> saying hairy Chinese kid 48 times every show, <laughs> rockbusters, not bothering to turn up for weeks on end, only having three listeners, introducing the comedy characters Camp David Har Harry Fook, which I think he spelt wrong there, yeah. Stephen Merchant, I'm not a character. <laughs> Apart from insulting every race, religion, and sexual orientation, bickering like schoolgirls, we and haven't done everyone history. yet. We have not insulted everyone yet. We, there's loads to go. Despite the fact you generally bring misery into the lives of anyone who listens, I thought you were surefire winners. Better luck next year. Well, I mean, a couple of constructive, you know, criticisms there, but generally, I no, still can't nail it. Was he on the panel? Well, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, he's a fan, so. Yeah. Well, no, he, he's clearly a fan. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, lo he obviously loves the show. He's because he's. I mean, he has hit the nail on the head. Oh. Which, yeah. But uh, yeah. what should we do? Should, should we give up or should we try harder? That—that's always my dilemma in sure. life. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I've—I've I've, I've always gone for the first one. Give up? Yeah. yeah why? Yeah, yeah, why yeah, bother? Yeah. yeah. If they—if they can't see, just give—just give us the award, and yeah. then worry about it later, and we won't let them down. Yeah. Now they've got—they've got blood on their hands. Mm. We're gonna- Yeah. What should we do? To give a month, couple of months notice? I think so. Okay, well, there you yeah, go. I mean, seriously, I mean, I, because oh, I'm- I think- Oh, well, Andrew's here, I'm not being wacky now. Um, we haven't told Andrew, but- uh, I I'll, think we've won our course with this, so. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, okay, we'll give it a month, and it's because the Sonys yeah. didn't give us anything. Play a record. Yeah. There you well, go. Well, you got to do a bit longer than that. No, we haven't. You've got to give a month's notice. No, you got to work till about September, if you're gonna- No, we haven't. No. No, we can give a month's notice. we you know, whatever, they give the money back somewhere. We're, we're, well, we're, we're, well, well, you give your money back. Yeah, I know. What are you, what are you gonna spend your eighty quid on? <laughs> True. I'd be there waiting for By the way, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM one hundred four point nine. So, a few more shows. And I, I, I hope Sony are happy. Mm. They should encourage. You know, we've only been radio, you know, a couple of years. Exactly. Just you encourage young, ta you encourage young talent yeah. like you. Yeah. Instead of giving it to Radio One and Radio Two mm. and the old war horses. We just had a quick email. I wonder if you can answer this. It's James from NW1. He says, "Ricky, is Carl going to be on this week's show? Please let me know, as I may listen if he's not." <laughs> um, sadly, oh, he is here. Oh I mean, dear. people are already turning against you, Carl, because they've seen what's happened. Yeah. I think they've probably realised that we've I think we gave him too much. Enough. I think, exactly, I think we've got a spoiled sort of kid in our hands. It's sort of like, you know, we, we knew, we knew how bad he was, but we were trying to sort of bring him out of his shell a little bit. Yeah. Encourage, you've got to encourage sort of, um, children like Carl. Well, yeah, exactly. To sort exactly. of fend for themselves. Mm. Um, but, uh, I like the fact that Dickie Anderson had that wonderful rant. It, I mean, it was an articulate, email, it was quite long, and he must have typed it immediately. I'm thinking, because he's a fan of the show and he, he thinks I'm a, you know, a genius, we need a PA. Sure. Don't we? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon he'd come and work for us? Um, well, he can't be any worse than what we've already got. <laughs> I don't um, know. You know. So, there you go then, we're giving up, we're giving up radio. We're gonna concentrate on television. Carl's gonna probably go back to what, your little, just doing your well, sound. the thing I won a silver for at the Sony's. Funny that, mm. isn't it? Oh, you won a silver, did you? I got a silver, yeah. Oh, for yeah, doing, that for doing the proper job that I do here in the week. Well, oh, no, it's two of you for a start. Yeah. Well, there's three of us. Can't even get a bronze. 
Now who's the weak link? <laughs> right? Well, a bit weird, isn't it? Let's get. Let's look. Let's get, let's not argue. We haven't got many shows to do. To be fair, though, this this show is, is. I think it's more to do with the fact that you talk on this show that has brought us down. Right, I haven't said anything hardly today. No, well, this is an award-winning show potentially. <laughs> we'll add this one in for yeah. next year. <laughs> oh. If you could just keep stum, we might have a chance. All right. Well, coming up, right? Come let's on. put it behind us. Okay. Let's draw a line under it. Um, we had a meeting yesterday. We thought we better you know, for the last few shows, plan it a little bit. Mm. And me and Steve came up with a great idea. We're gonna offer Carl money to do stuff. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's the quality of the ideas on this. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, I've brought some money in, a lot of little stuff, because we had him, we had him showering with our mate Johnny for a thousand pounds yesterday. Yeah, we, we just got into a discussion and then one of us suggested that how much would it cost us <laughs> to pay you, Carl, to have a shower with another man? Not, and there's nothing going, going you don't, on. No, no, there's nothing going on. You just, you're just in a shower, normal shower, you're just watching, e washing each other, having, uh, no, not each other, just yeah. yourselves. You're just, you're just having a chat. Yeah, right, watching you go, yourselves, yeah. having a shower. Yeah. But and it's it, a regular we, shower in a, in a regular yeah. house. It's not a shower. And, a he, and pool. he went fine. He got we got he got a thousand pounds out of it. He wouldn't do nine hundred. A thousand pounds. But then we said, and we'll have to watch to make sure you do it. Yeah. And he went, no, that's he weird. So, but what, why? What's the? I mean, this is what annoys me, though, right? The whole idea of, oh, what would you do, right? So I bet you missed out there when what? we started this chat, saying, oh, I wonder what you do for money. It did start off with, would you rub Dale Winton's neck? <laughs> would you give Dale Winton a massage for <laughs> twenty quid? No, I mean, but, but, yeah, but it's you have to say no. Five hundred. You could. You got. We're trying to find out what your price is. What price, Carl? Is the name of the show. So, so you would you give um uh a uh, and just a, he's got a knot. He's got a bit of a knot. He's stressed. He's been doing supermarket sweep and he's furious. One of the contestants was answering back, calling him names, and he's got he's got all knots in his neck. You just put your th just give him a little bit of a you know five minutes. A, a little neck massage. How much would you do that for? He's naked and it's just a little neck massage. Nothing, there's nothing going on. It's like so you you're naked as well. Naked. But it's I'm, just I'm, a two of you naked up giving him a little massage. No, no, seriously. Uh, would you would you give him? Um, okay, would you would you give me a foot massage? For how much? Well, that well that's, that's what's your price. Much. And what are the rules though? Can I wear gloves? No, no, no. Just just, just you know. Let's start off simple. Would you take off my shoes and socks? Uh, for for I'd do it for like. Fifty quid. There's, you've got okay, okay, all right. Twenty quid to take off one shoe and one sock, but like you mean it. You just take the shoe off. You go, and, and as you're pulling down my sock, you pull the sock down slowly. You look me in the eyes and go, "What lovely ankles!" <laughs> Seriously, how much? What price? Uh, twenty quid a foot. Twenty quid a foot. That's got so, to be worth it. So twenty quid, you will take off my. Um, we we'll put on some soft music. <laughs> Right? <laughs> do, 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 no, 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 I don't need it today. That's that's what I was saying to you yesterday. You always do. You know it. what I mean? No, you, you don't. At the moment, I'm quite happy. Give it to a homeless person. Give it to a charity. Well, we'll get him in here. Well, wait, 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 are you still going to shower with Johnny for a thousand pounds? Not now, because you said, and me and Steve are just going to stand in the corner and, and watch. Well, you've got to make sure you do it. You might go in there and just like wet your hair and come out, pay Johnny five hundred quid, and go. Yeah, we had a shower. How will we know? Sorry, I'm quite interested about the shoe and sock. <laughs> I'm, I'm back to the I'm back to the shower. You just have to wash yourselves. We have to inspect that it's really clean because we want you to wash certain parts really. Right, well, why, why have you both got to be in there then? Well, why no, it's just one of us. It? Can we just take? I mean, we, yeah, or, or can, can Steve film it? <laughs> <laughs> as, as evidence, just as evidence. Or we, I tell you what, we leave the TV camera in there. We neither of us to be in there. Then we can just watch the video. Are you a couple of vendors? Are you a couple of vendors? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but can we can we discuss further the uh, taking of the shoe and the sock? Because uh, I think there's twenty pounds. In, I, I'm willing to pay twenty pounds to see that. A little surprise for you there. That's uh, uh Coldplay here. They're live through there. Thanks. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, uh, yeah, brilliant. Do you wanna do you wanna say a few words? Do you wanna yeah, say no, I'll have a quick word with Chris. Uh, lead singer Chris. Chris, good to have you here. Hello. <laughs> and um, um, how's it going with Gwyneth Paltrow? Brilliant. Yes. 
She's uh, a lovely lady. Yeah, no, I thought so. Yeah, I saw her in Shakespeare in Love. She's good, good in that. Yeah, isn't she? she would pass that on to her. Just yeah, say well, I'm yeah. Um, um, it's going all right. You going to get married to? Yeah, so I'm, I marry either Harold or Julia Roberts. Good. Woman. Yeah, either one is good. Yeah. Um, um, I know. I, I, I know. Interest. I know you're on holiday at the moment in yeah. Hawaii. I read in the no, paper today. No, you're actually here. I'm actually here. <laughs> okay. Um, got to uh, go now. Got to go. All right. Just a couple of questions. See you later, Chris. Yes, see you, Ricky. So that's the sort of guests. That's the kind of guests. We're just trying to up Just things. like Jonathan Ross. We've got guests like Jonathan Ross. That's Coldplay, just popped in. Just popped so, in. So if you're the Sony people listening, you better. And we've still got Carl to take off my sock for 20 quid, okay? Let's do it now. Let's just get it over with and do it now. Come on, Carl, let's get our cash out then, Rick. There's 10 pounds right now. Well, no, 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 you don't owe him because he, he owes you 10, so I just have to pay him 10. Okay. Yeah. So, go on then. Just not, take. Not whilst Coldplay are here. So they, they've had to shoot off. <laughs> Come no, on. I don't want to do it. Let's why not? It. Tell me what. on now for half an hour. Okay, well, okay. Well, at the, the end of this, why won't you do it? It's ridiculous. You won't have a shower, you won't take my shoes and socks off, you won't do anything. You won't get, give Dale Winton a rub down. What will you do, for Christ's sake? I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Except my mum and dad are, are, are like, I've heard about how well I'm doing in London. Yeah. Right? They've heard about, you know, the Sony Awards and that. They're yeah. talking to the mates, they're saying Carl's doing well for himself. Yeah. Let's have a listen to him on Sky. Yeah. They're tuning in, I'm taking off socks for money. What's <laughs> with that? That'll be the first time that anyone in your family has actually made, you know, money without stealing, thieving, yeah. or honest, some kind of depositing. Well, let's just do it quick then, because it's getting on his nerves. <laughs> it's actually annoying. Excellent. Excellent, all right. Yeah, well, give me the money, Steve. No, you, well, you should have taken a tenner off me. Right, okay. Right, okay. Right, okay. 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 Well, then let's go like that. You've got to do it properly. 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 Just gently. I can't see what's happening. Just pretend I'm working on shop. There's nothing normal. Come on, just get it done. What's that? What's the whistling? What's the whistling? <laughs> right. Okay, now do it properly, gently. Yes. <laughs> it's a sweaty trainer, which just makes right, it all the more. Just gently caress it, caress it. <laughs> Someone watching in the office. Caress it there. Don't just right. gently ease the shot. Just gently right. off. Just like right. working on a shoe shop. There's nothing. <laughs> Nothing weird about it. Just gently yeah, ease it off. I'm having the best. All right, yeah. now it's just, right, no, just come on, gently do it. Just Don't just, just rip it off. Down, yeah, yeah. Slowly, like, slowly tease it. it. <laughs> Tease it. God, I don't like this. I just wasted ten and I wasn't enjoying it. Now, wait a minute, you've got to say. <laughs> so, you've got to say. about my ankle. So, you've got lovely toes and I love your ankle. you got nice toes and that. <laughs> well, say it properly. I don't like it anymore. Do it, and you've got right. to say, you've got to, you've got to say for the tenor, otherwise you're oh, taking it back, you've God. got to say what lovely ankles you've got, but in a sweet, seductive voice. Right. <laughs> Right, you've got nice ankles. <laughs> that is not how you would seduce a woman. Like you that. would not seduce a woman like that, Carl. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Susan. I don't <laughs> Imagine that. I don't know. I don't feel good about Move it. Move it off, because I want to see if we can get him to massage your toes. <laughs> See, I don't know what's worse. I, d I mean, I didn't like the feeling much. That wasn't very nice because it was all, it was all rough. And I, I, you know, and he said he's a skinhead and he's playing on the feet. And then I thought oh, I've degraded him, so I don't know what I feel worse about. I'll g you can keep the tenner that you owe me if you massage his toes. No, I'm not doing that. No, no, no we paid him. He's done it. Yeah, the, the shoes are back on. We're with some else next week. Some else next week. Okay. If you'd like to Carl to humiliate himself for money, email in. Well, Susan was surprised that I was like, last night I told her about it. And I said, oh, why did you do that? I don't feel, I don't know what I feel now. I, that's not good. I don't know, that's not good, is it? And she just said, well, you know, uh, you don't like <laughs> chucking money away and that. And it was funny because we got talking about, uh, when, when we bought our first flat in Manchester, right? Uh, I bought a... <laughs> I bought a bed, right, I didn't have much money, and uh, what annoyed me is, I bought the bed and it turned up, and I said, where's the mattress? And they said, well, you don't get, you don't get a mattress with the bed, you've got to buy that separately. And I was like, well, that's not a bed then, <laughs> right? So I didn't have any more money, Suzanne's at work, so I thought, well, I don't want to stress her out at work and that, because mm. I know we haven't got a mattress for the bed. I had a word with my dad, right, he knew a mate who had one in the back of a van, right, he said, I'll have a word with him, he'll let you have it. Got the van, brought it round, stunk a diesel and that, but I thought, well, it's, it's free. <laughs> it'll do. Yeah. They brought it up, they stuck it in the spare room. <laughs> Suzanne got home, she looked at the bed, she said, that looks alright. She wears the mattress, so it's in the next, next room, but I thought I won't tell her because sure. she won't like the idea. She went in, just the room stunk of like petrol fumes <laughs> and that. Yeah. She said, what, what's going on? <laughs> I said, well, it's, a mattress didn't come with a bed. So I've sorted you one out, I've got this off my dad, mm. and 
we didn't have one night on it. She said, get rid of it. Yeah. Mm. I had to go and ditch it. I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> one of your father's friends is driving around in a van with a mattress in the back. <laughs> yeah. Was he a serial killer? <laughs> I mean... And she didn't want to sleep on it. Like some <laughs> silence of the lamb. What kind of a cheapskate is she? What kind of a woman is she? That she won't sleep on a mattress that has been in the back of a transit van. That's yeah, because like it covered in petrol, diesel, probably urine, and <laughs> Christ knows what else. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, would you swap pants with Steve for 50 quid now? You don't have to look at him, you go in the toilet, he, ta he takes his pants off in the toilet, leaves them there, you go in, <laughs> Right, you come up with your trousers on, you go in, right, take your pants off, put his pants on, leave your pants in the toilet, come out, you got his pants on, he goes in there, you come out and you swap pants. At the end of the show you put it back. How much? When you say pants, what do you mean? Just Jeans. underpants. Underpants. No, I'm not doing underpants. Why? Why not? Seriously, these were fresh on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, but, but for I the mean, BAFTAs, for the, uh, what's the service. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, it's name the price. It's gonna be more than twenty quid. It's gonna be more than twenty quid. It's gonna be, it's gonna be like eighty quid upwards, I think. No, clean on today. They yeah. were clean on today in their boxes. It's as bad for him as you. Don't, don't remember that. Thanks for that. Fifty quid. Really? Play record. No, hang on. You just said you'll give me fifty quid. If you go and swap pants. I don't know what's in it for me, I don't know why I'm doing this. It started off as torturing Carl, but not only am I out of pocket, I don't actually want you two to swap pants or touch my ankles. Well, Steve isn't I don't know what no. I've done. This is, I, 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 I'm the victim here. I've paid out and I don't even like it. Play a record, I want to think about this. Could, I mean, <laughs> I've got 50 quid if you. <laughs> as long as we can swap the pants, but both be in the room at the same time. <laughs> Band of Gold by the artist who featured in uh, uh, a recent Rockbuster uh, clue, which was I think uh, uh, the Jamaican fella needs an aspirin for his head, and that goes course to free the pain. <laughs> Brilliant. Rockbuster's coming up, isn't it, Carl? We uh, we settled now. Get it, get it going. No, let's 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 no. Let's I thought we weren't it. doing this anymore. I know. I don't know what happened. I, I don't, don't know. know. Happened. I, I mean. <sighs> But I mean, it's, I mean, we're shooting off in a couple of weeks, so yeah. What difference yeah. does it make? Well, we might, we might as well. May have mentioned it. It's a good time. Go on then. Right. Uh, three cryptic, cryptic clues like the one you just heard there. Mm. Uh, first one. Cryptic. <laughs> that is cryptic um, a word. First one. My younger brother spotted you the other day. Right. That's the cryptic clue. My younger brother spotted you the other day. The initials J S, J S for the band. Second one, uh, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. Look <laughs> at <laughs> the way he looks up, like, it's Oscar Wilde. Yeah. It's, oh. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid, the initials are A-M. And the third one, uh, the vibrators. And the initial B. What? Right? The vibrators. And the initial is B. So the first one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Oh, I know that one, that's ridiculous. J.S. The phone's going. Second one, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid, mm. A.M. And the third one, the vibrators, the initial B. So, email in and you win. You can say the prizes later, can't you? Well, I tell you what, this is terrible. I mean, we, we didn't even say the prizes, we weren't going to do this. The phone's going. Look at the phones, are going mental. Right, well, Carl, well, did you ever do paintings and drawings at school and then bring them home and your mum put them on the fridge? Uh, no, not really. I never brought them on. What, did you just screw them up and throw them in the bin? I just left them at school. Yeah. I've never had a bag. Never! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Excellent. Radiohead. There, there. On XFM. <laughs> 104.9. You see, no, wait, what, uh, this is giving me an idea because, um, I think, what the best thing about this show is what happens when the records are playing because mm. we we sort of we, uh, that's an example inarticulate yeah didn't have anything planned well, I start my mouth moving but I didn't have anything planned yeah like why was that why why didn't you have anything planned there what why, why didn't you know what you're gonna say then because what were you doing when Radiohead was on <laughs> oh well I made Carl a new uniform that he has to wear in the second hour what did I do you got 
Tissue paper. Yeah. Toilet roll, yeah. Ripped a bit off. Yeah. Made a little tie for me. Yeah. And put some in the ears. <laughs> yeah! So he had earplugs and matching tie. <laughs> yeah. And he looked good, didn't he? Yeah. He had earplugs and matching tie and I- and, uh, I squeezed it in there and he went, I can't, it'll irritate me. Mm. So, mm. I'm thinking of things all the time to make this more fun for me. <laughs> yes. And it is just like that. Can but I- sorry, a uh, quick question. Um, just want to raise- Steve, just want to raise a little point. Go on. Um, you say that you're spending most of your time thinking about how you can make this more entertaining for yourself. Yeah. I, is it worth ever considering the listeners? Well, I think that if- if- If you're I, happy, they're happy. Yeah. I'm not sure that's true. I, I've been monitoring a lot of the feedback <laughs> on the email and stuff. Yeah. It doesn't appear to be the case. But that's because Carl won't go along with stuff. Sure. I mean, they could see on the webcam his little uh, matching- matching earplugs and tie that I made. Mm. I just did a cartoon that went for 350 pounds, right? On yeah. the in- on the website, right? Mm. So mm. that's- that's one now, yeah, we're gonna do it- we're gonna make it really good, we're gonna give him lots of stuff and sign DVDs and everything, so that's great. 350 quid, who was it? Uh, I think her name was Joanne. It's not definite yet, cos we haven't got the money off her. Well, so she's- she's- I, 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 you know, you gotta trust them, ain't you? Um, and so, I, I think people would love to have had a matching- you know, I'd have signed it and everything. Little matching earplugs and necktie made out of toilet roll. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he- w and he didn't- didn't want to wear it. But I had a great idea for a show, right? We filmed the behind the scenes, right, of each show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get a, the, you know, the, a CD of what went out, but you saw what happened behind the scenes, right, and it follows us through a week, right, and it's called X-Men 3. Ah, uh, I see, because of XFM. Yeah. Right. And then we can film all Carl, what Carl looks like when I'm squeezing his head, what, what he's like when we're trying to make him touch us. Mm. All that sort of stuff, when he's getting all stressed out in the day and we just pop up, right, the what he looks like, his little head, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And would this be broadcast on TV? Or? I think so. I right. think Choice. It's all right, BBC okay. Three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. <sighs> Again. It's difficult because I, I, I mean, I'm very much in the, the centre of the storm. I'm very much the eye of the storm. Yeah. And I know that I myself would not want to watch that. Really? No, because it's. Any I mean, negative, Carl? He was like this when you came up with Cheapest Chimps. Uh, he didn't- he wanted to drop Rockbusters, what was the other thing he didn't like? Um, uh, that other TV idea I had. Yeah, what, putting a baby in a room, setting on fire and see if he can make his way out? Setting the room on fire. Let's yeah. not get silly. No, yeah. no, no, but yeah. he didn't like that, did he? No. I mean, I don't- I don't wanna sort of- I don't wanna blow my own trumpet, but it does seem to me that my criticism of those things is probably justified. I mean, cheap as chimps. Yeah. Where is it now? Well, wow. Donald McIntyre took it. <laughs> not really, Carl, not really. It is but, um, a, a pitiful <laughs> memory. Um, yeah. Your, both your game show ideas terrible. This TV show idea, I think, again, it's only interesting to you, Rick. This is what you fail to realise. You've got no sense of the greater public. They don't. They, to be honest, I'm I'm just taking this from what people are emailing in. They're not interested. See, in Carl. I don't read the emails. They're not interested in Carl. I, I don't read the emails. They're not interested in Carl. They're not interested in Carl. But if we did a documentary about him, like they did about Oliver, the the, the human Z, or no, that's a different case. Or that the girl that was older than her mum, or you know, all those other sort of. Things I think yeah. if we actually did a definitive documentary and got in doctors to talk about him mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. showed him that psychiatrist from Big Brother, yeah, and just talked about it and then showed him in his environment. I think it would be, I think it'd be brilliant. I think it'd be a brilliant show. But I think that's interesting. I think you're right. As some kind of anthropological study of Carl, fascinating. You making a little negative well, for uh, him. I'm not so convinced. But that'll be all be part of it. Play record. Let's think about this because I think this is an idea. If any broadcasters are listening, like Greg Dyke or. Um, you know, we'd even go to Channel Five with this. I think. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, alternatively, if you'd like to uh, incorporate Carl into some kind of Blue Peter appeal, let's do some. Like, let's just get Carl. Look at his face. How could you not see? A lot of people still don't know what you look like, Carl. Play record. During breaks, painkiller on XFM 104.9. A couple of emails, Rick, that I ought to notify you about. Um, Holly is emailed in. She wants us to wish her good luck. She says that she's one of 15,000 women who will be walking uh, 26 miles around London starting at midnight tonight in their bras to raise money for a breast cancer research. Prostitutes? Uh, no, 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 just regular ladies, I think. Oh, right. Um, but I, d I was at a loose end, so that's something for me to do. <laughs> 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 I'll, uh, no, I'll, I'll pop that and, and, and support them. <laughs> Um, um, also, we got we got to say hello to uh, Sonia, who's uh, it's her eighteenth birthday, and we're going to play a little Smiths track for her later. So uh, it's like we're trying we're trying to be interactive. Yeah, 
Um, I've seen how other DJs do it. They have phones. They go, and uh, what are you, how are you celebrating tonight? Oh, we're just going out, Foxy. Uh, have a good time. Here we go. This is, you know what I mean? Yeah. We've got to be. I've we, guessed we had we had Chris Martin in from Coldplay. Which going to be a lot. Of, well, Chris is still here. Hello, <laughs> uh, Chris. How do you come up with the ideas for your songs? Just make them up in my head with the guitar. And um, how old are you now? Twenty-eight. Thanks very much. And that more from Chris Martin later, I imagine. Cheers. And we've also um, had uh, a email. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. We've also had an email from Jim. <laughs> it's as easy as that. <laughs> we've had an email from Jim. He says uh, on the subject of the postcards, his brother once met the bloke who posed for the photo on those biros that when you tip them up, the black ink so it kind of sinks away and right. it shows him nude. And he was apparently an aspiring model and he got paid seventy five dollars for it in Hong Kong in the seventies. Carl, would you have done that? Would you pose mo nude for a pen for seventy five dollars? I mean, inflation, can't kind of, let's, let's double it every ten years, say. So, yeah, uh, so, uh, 150, uh, 300. I'll give you 600 quid to post news for, for biros that we give away for XFM. An XFM biro, where your clothes sink away when you turn it upside down. And what sort of shape was this fella in? He's look? in pretty good shape, yeah, I think. Uh, 600 quid. Yeah. I'll make it back on selling the pens. No, I won't do that. No. I always remember being at school, uh, when I, the first time I ever encountered one of those pens. There was a kid at school, Jason, and he had, uh, I had a pen, one of those pens, and he turned it upside down, and it was where the woman's clothes sink away and she's naked. Yeah. And I remember sort of seeing it, and him showing it to everyone, all the young lads, and them thinking, this is amazing. And, um, and I always remember thinking it was like the idea that it was sort of a way to cheat teachers. Oh, that was Jason. He's just got a pen there with a picture of a woman yeah. wearing some clothes. That's fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. If he brings a porn mag in, I'll have it. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, but I can't- But I've always imagined- can you imag imagine how embarrassing would it be to be- to be caught masturbating over one of those pens? <laughs> Business man! Yeah. <laughs> He's like- his wife catches him. <laughs> no, you're gonna- no, no, it's a silly. Um, I've had to- oh, oh, sorry. So, what are you doing? Just- I'm just doing some writing with this- this regular pen. Right, what? Well, no, don't- don't, don't turn it upside down. Ah. Can I just come round where you're sitting and just say, <laughs> why are you naked? The only thing I think more embarrassing would be to call, be caught masturbating looking into a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you maybe, for me and Carl, you're right. <laughs> um, uh, should we should give the Rockbusters clues again one for, final time before we, um, we give out the answers. And I should right. mention the prizes as well, <laughs> if you still want to enter. Uh, we've got some various things, a couple of CDs, a such shit <laughs> CD. you looking into a mirror. Uh, let's move on from that. Club Anthems 2003, Strange and Beautiful. Nude. Hey? I hate being nude anyway. Why? What do you mean you hate being nude? Uh, it's not normal if you walk about- do you walk about the house we're now on? Well, no, because we've got windows. Yeah, but- alright, with the blinds shut or whatever. Well, I have a bath. No, no, but say like- in. say like with, you know, with, with Jane and that. Are, are you happy walking about? No, just think, no, I, I, I walk around in my pants or a towel. I won't- I won't purposely walk around nude for the sake of it, no. <laughs> No, I know, so, but, but, but I- in the morning I don't mind, when I get up. So yeah. I go for a shower. But I don't sort of flaunt it about, I just wondered if that's normal, or- Well, no, I, what do you mean, is it normal? If, if- if there's no one can see you, then- No, like, but- but your girlfriend's in and that. But what I mean well, is- Yeah. It's like- you- you can put a pair of pants on, can't you? Do you know, all I'm saying is- Well, you put Steve's on if you want. <laughs> yeah, the thirty quit. What do you want? What do you want- do you want to put a pair of pants on now? <laughs> no, it's just like you're asking me to do it for a pen. What would you do, right? What would you do, right, if, um, you did that thing with Steve and you put left your pants in there, you went and you put his on, but there's, it was sort of like, it was damp. Right, so Rockbusters then, we'll get yeah. this out of the way, right? Uh, so the one. prizes, Carl, uh, mentioned there's a number of CDs, we've also got Wild Weather, um, a fascinating, uh, it looks like two VHS <laughs> set about weather, <laughs> about various weather conditions around the world. That must be selling like hotcakes. A uh, Sean Lloyd could be in that now. Yeah, indeed. You, and um, also signed by Norman. It's Fat Boy Slim's Big Beach Boutique. That must have been troublesome for um, the station that <laughs> that has uh, you know close ties with Norman to get hold of. But well done. And uh, that's Fat Boy Slim Big Beach Boutique. So yeah, there's a number of not bad prizes to give away there. And the clues were Carl. Uh, first one was, uh, my younger brother spotted you the other day, the initials JS. We had, um, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. And, uh, third one, the vibrators. That's and rubbish, the, that one. And the initial B. We'll Is give away the, uh, the prizes and the answers next. Um, yeah, yeah. what we got to play a record or do, what we got coming up? We got Monkey News. Yeah, we got that. We got, uh, We've got loads, too numerous to mention at the moment. We got the average. Got some of them. Oh, brilliant. Cram them in there. <laughs> I 
Different for girls. Joe Jackson on XFM 104.9. A retro cut. Um, bit of monkey news would be good, Carl, if you got that. Well, uh, we're, uh, well we're, we're struggling here. We're struggling, Steve. Wait a minute. I mean, I, I, you say that, but wait a minute. The answers for Rockbusters are coming up right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you thought people were turning off? Oh, up. we've got to, oh, what we've done. We've done, take my shoes off for money. Take my shoes off for money. <laughs> we've done that. We've done, um, oh, look at these funny postcard breasts. <laughs> and, uh, we've done, we didn't win a Sony. Um, coming up, Regular monkey, features. Um, oh, jeez. Got, got nothing, have we? Come on. Sometimes it's good. Come on, Carl, save us. You've got to save so us. We've done. those answers now. We're doing them now, Steve. Yeah. Right. Uh, first one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Yeah. The initials there, J.S., that was Junior Senior. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. Second one, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was A.M. That was Alison's Moye. Alison's Moye. <laughs> Alison Moye. Sorry, just one. give us the clue again. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. So, Muhammad Ali's son. Yeah. Right, Alison's no. Moye. Yeah. Brilliant. And then third one, oh, is a, an easy one in there for everyone to look and set apart. Uh, the vibrators and the initials, B, that's Buzzcox. <gasps> you can't say Cox. We that's why we win the award, that's why you can't say Cox. Have we got a winner? We have indeed. Um, I chose him because his name amused me. Um, which is a bit hard. Not Mr. Tits. No, 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 Gerald Preston. <laughs> Sorry, Gerald. I don't know why that tickled me. It's so unfair. It only tickled me because it's not funny. <laughs> it's There's so nothing unfair. funny with Gerald Preston. There is nothing <laughs> funny. I think well, it was because it sounded like it was a man of a different generation. I think that was why it sounded. Gerald Preston. It sounded <laughs> like. <laughs> That's terrible. I know. Right, Gerald. There's nothing funny about that name. There's nothing funny about the name. Gerald. Just Steve just made me laugh. <laughs> I, he don't, I don't know why <laughs> that made us funny. It made us laugh, but. It just tickled me. Oh, but but <laughs> Daryl, whatever you think of your name, don't worry because these points are including Fatboy Slim. There's nothing funny about Gerald Preston. I don't know, but Gerald, if you're a fan of wild weather, <laughs> but you've got a 2 VH set <laughs> coming to your way. <laughs> so you certainly will be interested in extreme weather conditions by the end of that, I would have thought. Plus oh, some arbitrary CDs, oh. so um, good luck, Jerry. Oh dear. Excellent. Um, right, brilliant. Good. That's that sorted. Right, let's have another tune and then maybe some monkey news. Yeah. Well, actually, now you've sort of mentioned a bit of monkey news, that I've found something in the week, right, that we've talked about in the past, right, that oh, I've got some other monkey stuff, but this is just, oh, forget it. Oh, come on! What? <sighs> come on! What's the matter with you? Right, do you know that thing we did ages ago? What? When, uh, we were out one day and we are talking about monkeys in, in a room with a, with a PC. And if you leave them in there long enough. Yeah, eventually a, 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 an infinite amount of monkeys, or one monkey in an infinite amount of time will eventually type the complete word of Shakespeare, yeah. Right, we talked about that ages ago. Yeah. I said it wouldn't happen. No, it, it doesn't make sense. You can't say it wouldn't happen, it doesn't make sense. It's a, a mathematical conundrum. It doesn't anyway, make sense. Go on. Anyway, right, they got a couple of monkeys. Alright, so not an infinite amount then. <laughs> okay, so, alright, but never mind. Yeah. Uh, got a couple of monkeys, put it in a room. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was a, if it was one PC or they got, got a job lot or whatever. Not an infinite amount then. <laughs> and, uh, left them in there for a month. Oh, not an infinite amount of time then, either. <laughs> okay. So two monkeys a month. Okay, go on. Yeah, I see the experiments no, working they're, they're so about far. about eight monkeys. Oh, eight <laughs> monkeys. Oh, let me just work that out as a, as a fraction of infinity. <laughs> it's one, oh, infinity, <laughs> eight into infinity. Oh, God, uh, um, a month. And what happened then, Carl? Did, did, they they the did they type the complete watch of Shakespeare? I'm assuming they no, did. No, they, 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 uh, no, they only did a proportion of it. <laughs> okay, what they, they just they? did Macbeth. <laughs> what happened then, Carl? Please they, tell us. They didn't have anything. They didn't come up with anything. You're an idiot, Carl. <laughs> you really are an idiot. Play a record. That's ridiculous. Well, what did you expect? What did you expect? A bit, a bit, a bit of Keats. And no, pastry no. of the Radio Times by one of them, the cleverest one. No, but what they did say is they didn't even get, they didn't even write one word out. One, no, you don't, no, infinity or nothing, that's the point. There's a big leap between any number you could think of and infinity. In fact, an infinite leap. Do you understand the concept of infinity? Don't rub your eyes. I, I, I lost him on Do You. Yeah. Didn't I? Right, play a Did record. they type any- did they type nothing from like any of the book- any of the Tarzan no, books? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but they must have read them. I mean that would be their favourite, surely. <laughs> I'm stunned. I c 
can't believe they didn't even do like a transcript of every which way but loose. Cause yeah. I can't believe it. They must have chosen some really thick monkeys. They didn't type any of Charlton Heston's speeches from, oh, um, uh, from Planet of the Apes. I can't believe it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You'd have thought six monkeys in a month would have done something. Yeah. At least a script for BJ and the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing, of course, would be doing the bear that it was a monkey, not a bear. Really? Stuck in a moment. You can't get out of it by you two. I know how they feel. Oh, just a quick thought. I just had a sudden thought. Um, just a little update on something we talked about ages ago on the show. You might remember I said once that, um, if I ever met Dido, I thought yeah. I had a good chance with her. Yeah, Because yeah. she looks like the sort of woman that would work in, say, a photocopying shop. Yeah. And yeah. she'd probably be quite charmed by or me. Or a secretary that sort of, like, wrote a couple of songs. Exactly. And the boss said, put, I entered her in something. Yeah. And it, and it won. She did them at the Christmas party, everyone clapped. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, just an update on that. So far, nothing's happened. <laughs> You haven't, you haven't, you haven't I haven't met her. Nothing's going no, on. So okay. I'll keep you posted on that, Rick. I know you're interested. I, I, I imagine it's a foregone conclusion when you do, though. It's That's only the beauty of it. Is, you know, when, when I hear you met her, you don't need to say any more. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just, just say, you, I'll let just you know. wink and say, I met Dido last night, and I'll yeah, go say no more. Exactly. You, don't, you don't need. <laughs> I'll just look a little bleary eyed. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, probably still wearing the, the same clothes. From the mace. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. Anyway, I just thought I'd keep you abreast of that. Yeah. All the breasts from London, Carl. Come on, Carl, cheer up. You've had, the, you've had a good Carl. week. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to do a month's notice? <laughs> <laughs> little bit of friction, little bit of friction between Steve and Carl. I think they're, uh, you know, they're getting to each other. Which is, mm. which well, is tr he's underpants are pinching. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carl, cheer up. You're lucky. You know how many people uh, would, would, Pay good money to- Carl, you had a good night out this week. You went to the, the Sony's, you had a free meal. Yeah, that, that annoyed me, I don't- <laughs> Well, we came away empty-handed, but- Yeah. It was a good night, wasn't it? You enjoyed that? Did you enjoy that? It... I ate it, but go on. I'm just finding more and more things are, are annoying me. Really? Like, even- Like, at, the, at that Sony's night, right, you've got a lot of, uh, respectable people going to that thing, you know, people yeah. who are high up at the BBC and that. Yeah. And- just the way, you know, it's it's a posh night, there's people there with dinner jackets on and stuff. Mm. And then I, I went to the toilet for a wee. Old fella in there. I thought he looks, he looks like he's been in the, you know, the radio game for years, probably done loads of award winning Sony stuff. Yeah. You know, all the BBC documentaries to do, in depth stuff, and I thought, you know, I wonder if I'll be like him when I'm, when I'm older, I wonder if I'm as good as him. Thinking all that, he's having a wee in the next urinal. Farts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. He just farts. <laughs> <laughs> Old fella in a dinner jacket, probably hired. And I but thought he's not even it's like they, they try to, they think, well, I better do it in here. And it's sort of like a trumpet. And uh, everyone, everyone just goes, yeah, it's fine. What's up with that? You know, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Is it, it's just the arrogance of doing he it. He just did it. Uh, it was, it sounded like a, a lost whale. <laughs> 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 and, and he didn't sort of go and try and clinch it. It went. He carried on, and then he went. Oh, that was a good one. Really, old fella must have been about seventy. Oh dear. And what better out than in? Yeah. But it's not though. I wasn't. I was. I wasn't brought up like that. You see. Right. Because I did it. I mean, I never really did it that much as a kid. <laughs> sure. And then I was at my mum and dad. You never. Sorry, you never did it that much as a kid. What parties? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not, not just like, you know, as a joke and that. We are taping this for next year's Sony Award, aren't we? We're taping this, what we're talking about now, aren't we? Mm. To hand in. Cause this is, go on. But I was at, at my mum and dad's, right? And, uh, Suzanne was sat on the floor in front of me and she was like, oh, rub me neck, it's hurting. So I thought, oh, and I hate doing that, it really do it bores me. Well, right? she's your girlfriend, for goodness sake. I know, Dad yeah. went and different, you're getting paid for that, go on. So I thought, the only way to shift her is I'll let one go, right? So I did that. <laughs> I love that! It's such a loving relationship. <laughs> That's great! Uh, so she's like doing the washing up badly. Yeah. She won't ask me again. What have you done? I've smashed the cups up <laughs> and I've <laughs> written, written in excrement across the wall. <laughs> well, that's no good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I won't do it again then. Give me the marigolds, I'll do it. I've nailed the cat to the fridge. What's <laughs> up with that? Yeah. Go on. But yeah, so, so I did that and it worked. She sort of got up and said, oh. And my dad said, what, what do you do that for? Yeah. <gasps> what was he thinking? So I said, oh, I hate, I hate rubbing a neck. Doesn't he add in? So he says, you know, I've never trumped. In front of your mother <laughs> for forty years. Sorry, where was this? Chigley. 
Why is this family talking like this? <laughs> yeah. um, never... Young Carl, I've never trumped in front of your mother in the thirty-five years. <laughs> why you'd- why- what? I don't know what- No, it's just- it's just that he said, you know, we- we've done a lot of things in the family that Hold on, what- what did he say that for? What, he's never- he's never trumped in front of your mother? He just offered that information up. Well, he, he just was surprised that I did it. He said, where have you got that from? Yeah. Whoa, the, the, the lower intestines, I thought. What do you mean? You have to imagine, imagine there's a class of farting. Oh, uh, no. we haven't, we haven't told our kids about farting. He <laughs> doesn't, he doesn't do it. We haven't told them about it. We haven't, no, we don't do it in front of it. <laughs> you have to learn it, do you? No, I know, but there's a, there's a place. That's what I was always told. Go on. There's a place for that. Cornwall. <laughs> so, um, and, and my mum, you know, it's the same. She, she doesn't do it. Right. If she, if she goes to the toilet to, you know, do, do what you gotta do, she, uh, she makes sure, like, she, she'll sort of say things like, are you going out for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> are you going uh, out for a walk? Does she think, that, does she know that you're broadcasting this? <laughs> well, yeah. She's probably around at the neighbours now, listening. Yeah. Any of you going out for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the door. So she, what, she kind of, she waits until everyone's left, or? She, she doesn't like the thought that everyone, do you know like cats don't like you staring at them when they're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I've never stared at a cat when he's doing anything. <laughs> Have you ever had a pet cat? What do you mean? Yeah, go on, go on. No, it's just that cats, uh, you know, if you get them a little litter tray. Yeah. I remember being told like, now <laughs> when it does use it, don't sort of go and look at it. It, put, it puts it off. I was the same as a kid. I didn't, it, when I had a nappy. <laughs> Who comes and looks at you when you're on the bottom? No, no, when I was a kid and I was in a nappy, right, yeah. I used to always, um, like, th there was a corner in the kitchen that yeah. I'd always go to, and everyone would be Why like- Why did you go to the toilet? Because I had a nappy on. Oh yeah, right, how old were you? Fourteen know, about, <laughs> about three or something. Yeah, right. And I used to always go to this corner, and yeah. everyone, everyone said, right, he's, he's going to the corner, don't watch, <laughs> don't stare at him. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I can so imagine you because you've got the same head. Yeah, you it's, look like you, a baby. it's just the way his head put in there. Would you? Okay, would you put a nappy on for fifty quid? No. Yeah, just I'm just be just sitting, just uh, doing your work. Right? No, anyway, just anyway, sit right? in the corner. <laughs> so I'm not, getting, I'm not doing that, right? <laughs> so yeah, my mum's like that, and something else, she's she's good. I mean, okay, people, go, people go, might go, not know. Uh, dinner pie. Oh, that's Mrs. Pilkerton just in the corner. Just don't look at. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. P. She just, she's just in the corner of our kitchen. Don't just look away. <laughs> What's she doing? Just, just, she's just doing her business. She's, there she is. There she is squatting. Are you going for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, Carl. Another, uh, another trick I've learned from her, right? If, uh, if you're using, say, a friend's toilet or something, mm. and, uh, you don't want to leave your mark, um, <laughs> just use- Go down the toilet and flush it. Use a, uh, take a box of matches with you. Yes. Yeah. Set fire to the girls. Set fire to the girls. Set fire to the girls. Burn the place down. And have a <laughs> wonderful crap and just leave when the fire brigade get there. Oh, forget <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Gareth in Catford. Right. Good work, Gareth. Um, basically, it's about this, uh, this monkey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the jungle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's got a gig out of hairdressers. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? It's got, it's got, uh, it's got itself a nice little job going in an hairdresser's. As what? It, um, gets people sitting down, um, and what it does before the people have their hair cut, that, it sort of sits there, and it goes through people's hair, makes sure it's clean, and, uh, people are loving it. Right, people backtrack so, so it's a, so it's a pet monkey. It's nothing to do with it getting a gig in an hairdresser's, it's a pet monkey. It's not working at Monkey and Guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, seriously, it, it's, it's in there. Uh, I think it might have started off as a job and then- So what does it say? It says, junior fifteen pounds, stylist thirty five pounds, <laughs> monkey sixty three pounds. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite dry. follow- it's in the jungle. It was wandering about. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe- maybe it did start But it off. looks good, its hair looks good, someone thought, hang yeah, on. Yeah, but never ever- you see, people make that mistake with hairdressers anyway. I always say, well, if the hairdresser's got a good haircut, go to where he's going. Right. All right? Because yeah. that's what I thought when I read it, about having yeah. a good haircut. How right. often did you go to the hairdressers? Well, not that much anymore, sure. but, but I used to always think that. Yeah. You uh, used to go to a bloke who told me had his shack on a railway bridge that used to shake when a train went over. Yeah. Because it was two quid. Yeah, but before that, I've, I've never had that much luck with hairdressers. Before that was a- was another place, and it was run by sort of, you know, these sort of- wannabe gangster type people. Oh yeah. But they'd, uh, you know, you'd go in what for What do you mean by wannabe gangsters? Well, sort of just- just petty crime stuff. You'd go in for haircut and then you'd walk out with a video recorder. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You don't have to take it. <laughs> no, no, but they'd sort of spend ages flogging you that whilst cutting your hair. It was their thing. It's like, right, sit down, you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for the weekend? What are you thinking of? Maybe a Sony. Yeah. yeah. So, and so that- that's when I stopped going there because it was like- it's just what I haircut, I don't want to be hassled yeah, Which one said that you had the hair of a Chinaman? It's a fellow who works in a railway station haircut. <laughs> well, he should know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's been around a bit, clearly, if he runs a shack <laughs> next to a railway station. <laughs> so, um, Can we just go back to Monkey News yeah, for a second? So anyway, that's all, yeah. I yeah. didn't quite follow why he- he- he's still- he's still- his- his salon is in the jungle? Or where is it? No, he- he was doing his- doing what he does in the jungle, right? Right. Um, <laughs> he's walking about. He wanders into the hairdressers. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have him on, like, as a job straight away, he was just there he was just said, this is nice. He's sat there picking the nits and- Oh, I d oh, Carl, I don't know where to start. Then- It's just- it's not- it's the embellishment. You don't- walk in- he walked from a jungle to an hairdresser's. I mean, you're an idiot. <laughs> you really are an idiot. I'd love to see you try and get a job in an hairdresser, if there was another <laughs> monkey up for it. You'd never get a job. So he was good at that. People said this is relaxing. Apparently he had really nice hands, soothing, yes. right, on people's heads. They said, let's put him on the payroll. So let's put him on the payroll? What do you mean? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay, this is the news item, is it? <sighs> Customers are queuing up to have their hair done at a salon in the jungle by a monkey. Mm -hmm. Judy, a pigtailed macaque, has a reputation as the best exterminator of head lice in Com King. Yeah. She is so good, some customers fall asleep under her gentle touch. Yeah. Regular Amporon Chekema said, Judy's hands are so soft and gentle, I really feel I can relax. But you know that is doing what it does naturally. It's looking for like salt and stuff in the hair. Yeah. And nits. It's not on the payroll. It doesn't complain about when it gets when it gets <laughs> deducted at uh, national insurance. <laughs> it's not part of the union. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but but a good monkey news, you know, yeah. backed up with uh, with good tabloid <laughs> with journalism. With yeah, with solid yeah. evidence there. So now that's I think we we should start marking the monkey news, Rick. I don't know what you think. Giving it marks out of ten, maybe uh, for both interest and validity. Well, for interest, I'll give it seven. For Carl's uh, Carl believing that there was something to this monkey, thinking it had a job and getting yeah, paid, but it was also <laughs> doing kind of perms two and colouring two. Yeah, ridiculous. Again. Yeah. Ridiculous. More monkey news next week. Hopefully, let's just hear that jingle again. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Peace train. Isn't that brilliant? Cat Stevens. Now, well, I've, I've sort of enjoyed the last sort of, you know, hour or so after. After the disappointment of the Sonys, um, I, th I think we are going to give up. To be honest, 
Um, do another week and then shoot off? Yeah, knock on the head. Okay. We are doing it for a laugh anyway, but- If they're not gonna reward us for that, then- Do you know what I mean? It's not really worth it. But, I- I'll tell you what could- but, what about this? Carl, can you find out who was on the panel? Can you? But what difference does it make? Well, I want to- I want you to interview- I want you to phone them up and- and I want them to tell them why- why, um, they didn't think our show was- Yeah, let them explain themselves. Just explain themselves. They've got to stand by the convictions. Find them all. W track them down. There's probably about yeah, three- what do you expect? That I want to tell the truth. No, you're right. The monk in you should have, you know, <laughs> done the job for you. I just want people- I don't want to be- I don't want to sit in a room and hide. I want the three people on the- on the panel, I'll find them out, to say, we didn't vote for you because we thought- it was shoddy, amateurish, annoying, there was too much swearing. I go, fair enough, well done, mate. You. We didn't vote for you because Carl's voice is an irritant, okay? Okay, well done, mate, you're all right. Uh, we didn't vote for you because, uh, Gervais, you're a, a fat, useless git who uh, understands nothing about broadcasting. <laughs> and you might do something. <laughs> yeah, and I go, right, I'm not so happy with that, but at least you told the truth. Mm -hmm. But. Get them on the phone. Find out. Find out from Andrew. I get noticed the, none of them have mentioned me, which is good. They I know, yeah. They pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They probably all love Steve. Mm. No one likes to pick on an invalid. Well, do you know what I mean? That's... I'm just... We, um, we got a player request here for, um, what's her name, who's... Don't believe it, Steve. Uh, Sonia, who's 18 today. We couldn't find William. It was really nothing worth Smith because... Um, whoever is in charge of the library, uh, I mean, they probably won an award for it, but, you know, she didn't ask for four non-blondes, so I found there is a light by the Smiths. So, a week to go. It's just, it's not, I'm not, I'm not. Blair, and out of time. They're joking, there's two hours to go. <laughs> on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. A new leaf, um, bit of a blow at the, uh, Sonys. Um, not like that. I mean, you know, we were taken aback. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, we've got guests, Jonathan Ross won and he has guests, so we're gonna have guests in. Uh, one of which is, uh, sort of a tie-in, he's gonna explain himself, it's, uh, Dr. Fox, Dr. Neil Fox, popped in for a chat, it's a pre-record, we've got that. Although live, in the second hour, we're gonna have a chat to the girls from Tattoo, who are, uh, uh, upstairs at the moment in Capital, and they're gonna, they're gonna pop down and have a little chat with us. So we're really trying to, you know, make this more of an interactive show. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we don't know yet whether we're gonna give up, uh, or not, it depends how this show goes. Um, yeah, look forward to that, but we've got some great, we went down to the big library so we don't have to rely on four non-blondes and the, uh, you know, the two jam tracks that are up here. We went down to the big library and, uh, we've got some great tracks, Steve, haven't we? That's we've got different. some classics. Should we play one now? Well, before that, I just remember that some of the criticism we received, uh, I think, was that we're perhaps not taking into consideration the listeners. A lot of shows, a lot of radio shows, they cater very much to the community, to the area which they're broadcasting, mm, they interact yeah. with the, uh, with the Where's the fun in that? Do I, I mean, agree. Well, for me, really. Um, I, I, I'd just like to justify why we don't tend to um, correspond or interact with the listeners. Here's a, a typical email from Vicky, age 25. She asks, "Do you ski, Rick?" That's her question. <laughs> no, I do you don't. ski? Yes or no? <laughs> no, I don't. No, you don't. Right, I there don't. you are. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> Brilliant. Keep those coming in. <laughs> See, he's now he's turned him against us, Carl. What do you think, Carl? What do you think of Steve's attitude there? It's all right. <laughs> More insight like that coming later. <laughs> Black Grape, Kelly's Heroes, next to Fem 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington, okay? Proper proper radio. As you know, we're a bit gutted that we won nothing at the Sony Awards. We found out that, uh, on the panel was, uh, Dr. Fox, probably one of the, the greatest, um, DJs in the world. One of the great I, living broadcasters. I, I, I certainly think that he's, he's up there. Yeah. Um, with, uh, with Tarrant, John O'Coleman. Um, and so, and we, Chris we asked, uh, great Chris Moss. we asked him to, he's also on the, uh, you know, pop idol panel, so he, he can he make and break people, so, yeah. 
we asked him, basically, to explain himself. Why did we win nothing? Why were we so bad? This is what he had to say. The award, guys, was called the Entertainment Award. All right, now, in itself, I think that should probably tell you something about what should be on the tape. There should be some entertainment. And, uh, it just wasn't very entertaining, actually. I don't mean that sounds quite horrible sitting here in front of you now, but it, it just wasn't very entertaining. But fundamentally, what, what elements did you not find entertaining? Uh, the fact that it didn't seem to entertain me at all. Uh -huh. part of it. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a, like, how long's a piece of string, isn't it? What is entertaining? We have talked about string on the show before, though. But uh, then there were loads of people I'd never heard of in my life, and some of those were perhaps a bit more entertaining than you. The people that got, got silver, I think they were called Joe and Twiggy. They worked for a station in the Midlands, uh, I think Trent FM. They were actually pretty funny. Funnier than ours. Stuff. Yeah, what? Yeah, they were actually. Yeah, they were funny, and they seemed to they seemed to sort of understand their local. They seemed to understand their market a bit more. Mm. And then I got onto yours. I think, oh, great, Ricky, your face. Yeah, he's really funny in that program, isn't he? I must watch that. I'm gonna absolutely die laughing here. And uh, oh God, it was painful. How would you have improved it, just listening? <sighs> bit of humour, be right. quite a good bit of humour, essential, I would think, for an entertainment show. Um, a bit of prep, you know, a bit right. of, so get in there and actually think about what it's going to do, perhaps. Well, right, right, okay. Um, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Fox, for your honesty. We've got to the bottom. Wh while you're here, can I just show you this? That, that lump. Do you still do prescriptions? Dr. Well, Fox, there. He was, you know, he was honest, he was blunt. He was blunt, you know, he, you know, that's- I'd like that's a second opinion! I really do, and he's not actually a doctor. <laughs> um, in fact, he, well, he used to be called Dr. Fox, and now he just calls himself Neil Fox. I think he's been struck off. No, he's Neil Fox, MD. <laughs> right. He's just, I yeah. wondered if there was some malpractice that something They're happened. I mean, we Someone can't- was under, and he sort of, you know, <laughs> went a little bit crazy. Let's leave it there! <laughs> yeah. Because Froggy will not take that lightly. Who? Froggy. What do you mean Froggy? He's Dr. Frog now, he's changed it to <laughs> Fox, right, he hated right. Fox. But uh, are we going to heed his, his criticism? Because it was about, there was no preparation, yeah. we weren't funny, fair enough. Yeah. Um, there was just really no content. We didn't care about our- We didn't care about the show. The demographic we were meant to be aiming at. Um, 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 just sounds like a lot of work, all that. Uh, well, I, I think what we can do is we, we can take all on board and immediately forget it and <laughs> carry on, because it's easier. What about that? Brilliant. I'll tell you what we could do, though. Play some bloody great tunes. <laughs> well, thanks very much. you got the style on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, isn't it? <laughs> Alright? Brilliant. Well, you know, the funny thing was, the, uh, the day of the Sonys, the Rage R figures came out, that's the body that tells exactly how many listeners you've got, etc. And, uh, um, XFM went down a little bit, across the board, except one show, Steve, that went up 34%. Keep talking. Well, what show do you think that was? I'm trying to think, would it be Zoe Ball? No. no. Would it be Christian Connell Breakfast Show? No. no. It was this little mother <laughs> of a show. <laughs> really? Up yeah. 34%? Yeah. Everything else went down, we went up 34%. Yeah. So, maybe Dr. Fox should be listening to those figures. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah, will we get a pay rise? Will we get a 34% pay rise, Carl? Ooh, up to 80 quid a month. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, for, for the last, like, two years there's been nothing there, and you've still been getting the same money, haven't you? That's the way it works. There's been what, then? It's, you're not paid per listener, are you? It's just... You know what I mean? <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've, they've each given us five pence. <laughs> exactly. Um, I went along to, uh, I came in from the presenters meetings this, uh, I've never been before, before, a presenters meeting, I didn't know they existed, and I just came in to annoy Carl, it was about five to six, um, so I was gonna get him as he knocked off, we're gonna have a Sorry, time. and the presenters meeting is what, that's where they dish out which amusing news stories they're gonna read out, is it? Yeah, or th no, no, what order they're gonna play, um, uh, athlete cold play, <laughs> right. uh, the vines. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I went upstairs, all, all people were there, and, um, quite interesting, wasn't it? Carl. Yeah. You know why the figures went down a little bit? Go on. The war. Is that what they said? The war, yeah. At uh, one, <laughs> one point, I said to Carl, just how many listeners died in this war Because <laughs> I thought he was saying that they were, they were at the front. Yeah. Or, or, or XLM listeners went, well, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to Iraq. Well, the reason our listeners- Tell Zoe went... to tape it for me! <laughs> the reason our listeners show went up is that, that just tells you who's listening to us. <laughs> Cowards, <laughs> yeah. yellow bellies, children, <laughs> women. People with fallen arches. Yeah. Terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. 
Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, it was quite a good meeting. Now I've told some- So what exactly, is there anything I missed out on this? No, no, they just, you know, it, it went, it went down a little bit, except our show, which went up 34%. Up 34%, but yeah, no awards remember for that. that. And then you went all, uh, out, you went out afterwards, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we went to, uh, went to a bar to have a couple of drinks and that. Yeah. And then, uh, a few of them went on to, uh, on to string fellas. No, they didn't. No, well, some of them did. Zoe Who? did. Zoe and, uh, f you know, a few of the office people and that. String I, I went fellas. Home. Yeah. To, to what? To watch lap dancing? To be, what? Yeah, that's, that's what goes on there, isn't it? I know, it's mad, isn't it? Have you, I've never been to string fellas, I don't know what happened. No, uh, I, 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 but, no. Uh, what, why, why would they? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I was talking to people about it the day after, and they said, oh, you missed out. I said, well, did I? So what, how does it work? They said, well, you know, you pay. Never quite understood lap dancing. Never quite understood it. Well, it's, it's, it's basically someone dancing naked rubbing their arse in your face. Yeah. That's basically the gist of it, is it? But you, but you can't, the rules is you can't touch. Do they do a, um, a home service? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's just, it's nearly, I, I, I've got to be careful what I say here, but it, it's sort of, you know, I'm not having dissing string fellows or anything, but is that not sort of like one step down from prostitution? That's such someone. an antiquated, what, no, are you I mean, 19th century? <laughs> no, but I mean, what, what, it's like, it's, well, I, I don't, I don't quite understand it. I, 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 have you, have, I, I don't get it, I don't get it. Because the thing is, the, the, I said, how does it work? They said, uh, you pay 20 quid, <laughs> you get, you get some clean money, sort of, like, little vouchers that you stick in the knickers or whatever. Oh, God, clean money? Yeah. Disinfected money, okay. I just like vouchers. Can you put loose change in there? Because <laughs> I got a lot of that. <laughs> but, um... I owe you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah go on. 20 quid it is. Right. And, um, I, I just don't get it, because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not tight with money or anything, but... No. You pay your 20 quid, they dance in front of you, but you're not allowed to touch, which to me is like going to a restaurant, ordering a nice big warm dinner, and they put it in front of you, and it's like, well, you can't eat it, and you're saying, but, well, it's going cold. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of some bloke sitting in Stringfellows, businessman, right, it's paid 20 pounds, there's an arse waving his face and he's going, can I not just, they go, don't, so he goes, it's going cold! Look at it, it's going cold! <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. It's oh. going cold. That is, I, I mean, see, Carl in the week was saying that he doesn't like sayings and phrases and metaphor and analogy and I was going, you know, and, and, and he thinks it's sort of like, you know, one step away from poetry. But he comes out with the most evocative phrases. Mm. That, that, that is a straightforward analogy. Lap dancing is like being given a meal that you can't eat. See, that's, that's, that's great. Mm. That's how you saw it and that, 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 that's so much better than saying it's, it's mad you can't touch or it's a waste or, do you see what I mean? I was, I was trying, we were trying to inflame his, um, enthusiasm in the week and, uh, I said about, um, different phrases and he goes, well, why not just say the actual words? I was going, well, it's more poetic. And I told him the, uh, Isaac Newton one, um, uh, if I have seen further than any other man, it's because I've stood on the shoulder of the giants. And I said, well, that's because, you know, he's saying, um, uh, you know, I'm getting lauded for being this great scientist and all these discoveries and being a genius, but I'm saying, you know, if it wasn't for those scholars before me that had come up with what they come up with, you know, I wouldn't have got this far. Carl went, what did you say? I just said, well, I, I prefer him to give me a name check. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? If he stood there and he's saying how good everything is, don't just class me, don't, like, don't sort of put me in with a load of other people. Give me a mention. If you were one of the other scholars? Yeah. Yeah, I think there were probably people that died sort of years before him. I think he's saying more that he's thanking the body of work yeah. these scientists and these great men had, had handed down, you yeah. know, through either books, material, teachings. He's not that, giving yeah. a big shout out to the collective science posse. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, thank you, actually I copied Nigel's. <laughs> he's <laughs> not saying that. I, I was, I was like, earwigging. <laughs> I heard what Nigel said about it, about the third law. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I look into sayings and stuff Go a lot on. more and see if they work. Well, one, one that, um, happened a couple of weeks ago, right, you were talking about the, uh, you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it. Yeah. What you said. Well, I never understood that, because I thought, well, what's the point of having your cake and not eating it, rather like your lap dancing analogy, but it actually means you can't have eaten your cake and still have it there, yes, obviously. Exactly. 
Well, the, the time that I saw that same work, right, I was I was in Asda with Suzanne. Yeah. And do you know those big binders you get with nice cakes in them? Yeah. For birthdays and that, you can get one with like David Beckham on the front of it. Yeah. You can have one with, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine, if you R want. Ricky Gervais. Yeah. yeah. You can have one of them. And I saw one of those comedy ones where it is like a big pair of breasts. Yeah. And that is when, you know, you can have your cake and eat tit. <laughs> play records. No, but you see play what record, I'm saying. Play record. No, okay, I want to talk to you about it. About pants. Placebo. This picture with the androgynous vocal talents at the helm there of Brian Maloko <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Informed Gervais. Yeah. Broadcaster. Excellent. Did you see, I think, I'm sure, I don't know if Carl saw it, I know you watched it, Rick, the, uh, it was extraordinary, it was a Sky One TV show the other night. It was something like, uh, um, uh, reality TV. Oh, yeah, I don't know what it was called. Yeah. Excellent. And it was about basically what the fortunes I of various. I cannot get enough of it. The fortunes of various reality TV stars uh, since they've come out of the show. Christine Hamilton out, coming out of the jungle. And obviously, once again, always a pleasure to find out what Fats Waller is up to, Rick Waller. I mean, oh, he's in the band now. He's got his own band. He was playing in some club in Rochester. There was about. It's sort of gospel, sort audience. of gospel rock, that sort of soul gospel rock thing, like something you see in the in, in the commitments or something. And uh, and the when leather. it cut to the audience, it was like it was in Butlins. It was just a big dance floor, and there's just people like, watching indifferently. And you went, the people that were here <laughs> loved yeah. it. I mean, it's a bit sad. Have to say, oh, I know. The size of the man, his leather jacket, Carl, was extraordinary. I don't know how many animals had to die to make it. It was like. You know, it was it like if he'd have fallen off, it'd have been like the Hindenburg. Yeah, because it was like uh, a zeppelin. Oh, it the was, humanity! It was people. <laughs> it, I still think when I see him wearing a coat like that, it looks like he is stood on the shoulders of two other people. Um, it's yeah. just a joke. Just it's just like a circus act or something. <laughs> yeah, because his head doesn't make it doesn't make sense. It looks like it's one of those things that you steam yourself in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You put your yeah. head out that. And it's, it's, yeah. Is that a machine you're in? No, it's a or coat. One of those old-fashioned iron lungs. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, there were some magic moments. But there was a great, because once again, I mean, I missed a lot of, um, the, the first series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, but it Brilliant. showed once again, uh, the moment with Darren Day. Darren Day, a lovely guy, but that moment where he went off and sat on a rock I, mm. and came back and he'd written a song. I know. Which he just, and I can't, it was also, it was also things like, I'm in a hotel room in another town. I know, don't, okay, don't. And do it, it was just, it was like something you'd write when you were 14. It was unbelievable. When they showed it again, it's just stunning. I, I love songs you write when you're 14. It's like your first sort of like song that you could, you know, you know three chords. And it's always, <laughs> it's always stuff like, there's a man, he's a lonely man. Take a look at him, he looks a bit like me. <laughs> yeah. It is me. <laughs> it's that sort of thing like, we want to play it with someone that, and they, you want them to go, my god, you're deep. <laughs> yeah. My God, you're brilliant, aren't you? And that's about you, is it? No, oh, yeah, it is, yeah. I, I have to say, this is such a terrible confession. When I was doing a school play once, God. when I was about that age, 15, <sighs> right, there was a girl, uh, who was in the cast with me, yeah. right, and she sort of, you know, she was giving me the eye. I was thinking, yeah, well, she, I kind of thought she was, right? And there was, <laughs> it was glass. <laughs> but there was another guy, there was another guy there as well, I was sort of competing for affection. Oh, no. And uh, he was quite a witty guy. His name was Scott Hansen, he yeah. had long blonde hair. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, well, the way to impress her, because I was 15 or whatever, I thought I was pretty smart. I sat in one of the adjoining dressing rooms, reading a copy of the, um, philosophical, uh, book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I didn't understand, but we were, so I sat there reading it in the hope that she would walk in and think, my God, you're he, reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. You don't go with the crowd, you don't want to come next door where we're talking about nonsense and people yeah, are flirting. We're talking about the bangles yeah, and yeah. curly whirly. You're in here saying, look, just, if you want to come and talk to me, you're welcome, but I'm not, I, I'm I, a you, thinker. I bet you thought you were Kwai Chang Kane, didn't I, you? I thought it yeah. was like she'd think, Jesus Christ, I know, I've never met anyone like him. That is genius. And she, she I remember what, the one time she accidentally walked in, she went, oh, oh, sorry, wrong room, and left again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Sorry, at uh, 15, so this is about the time you took to wearing a bow tie to I'm impress people. I'm wearing a bow tie. I love yeah. that. No, I, I used to watch a lot of Harold Lloyd films. <laughs> and, uh, he always seemed to do it very well. I love it, I love the idea of a 15, you going, well, it's time I went to wooing. Right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> right, on yeah. with the bow tie. Where's the zen? <laughs> um, where's the pipe for my bow tie? <laughs> <laughs> it's a time I got me a bow. Yeah, yeah. I love that. But uh, songs are great as well. The other, the other thing you do, sort of when you're about 15, 16, is start writing songs about, like, the world's trying to take a piece of me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you think I'm going down? I'm coming back. I'm against the ropes. Yeah. They try to drag me down. <laughs> it's like you want to be cool, Han Luke. Yeah. yeah. They put me in this emotional prison. The no. man's on my back. <laughs> who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who? who? They, they try and take a piece of me. Who? Who? <laughs> who yeah. do? Wow. Well, you're you know, 14. Parents and that, don't they? You're so really comprehensive. The teachers. Yeah. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. I still remember a poem. I like to say his name. We're, we're about 14, 15. And, uh, this, we had to write a poem, and, uh, obviously everyone's was, um, pretty rubbish, but we m mercilessly took the piss out of this bloke, because I still remember the poem, and it, th how he did it is he went through a dictionary and found things with that, and I, this is, this is a poem, right, okay, remember? I've remembered this for 25 years, right? The reason why, the reason why, the reason why I had to die, did I bleed the blood of greed, what was my destiny? <laughs> <laughs> and when we hear this, we were laughing. I mean, for a, a year, we would go, uh, what was my destiny? <laughs> it, it was just great. Here we go, I enjoyed The that. reason why, the reason why, the reason why I had to die, did I bleed the blood of greed, what was my destiny? <laughs> oh, oh, uh, that's almost as catchy as monkey news. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, I've got some monkey news for you. Let's play a record and come back and I've got some great monkey news for you, Carl. That's from the REM album that people tend to forget about now because it was so kind of poppy and such a massive hit out of time, but there are some good tunes on it. And there's one of them, Near Wild Heaven. Excellent, on XFM 104.9. Carl. Go on. Watching a program yesterday, uh, and it was about these Japanese snow monkeys. And it was all about how animals learn things that aren't inst instinctive, particularly sort of primates because they see other people doing it, and they start a culture, and they can pinpoint when these monkeys, when one monkey first went down and got in the hot water springs and stayed there because it was hot, and the others copied them, and now it's a, it's part of a, almost a culture, you know, that, that won't be handed on because it's not instinctive, but it has to be learnt each time, and uh, you know, and uh, they um, they groom as normal like other monkeys, right? But they're they're really intelligent, and um, obviously the reason they groom other people, other other monkeys, is because they eat the mites. But the, also, the monkeys have learned they like being groomed, okay? So they showed this one monkey, it went to a deer, okay, and it was grooming this deer to get its mite off it, right? But then it didn't eat it, it held it in its hand, it went over to a monkey, put the mite on itself to show the monkey it had a mite, and got a free grooming. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. That is Because it gave up the food, knowing that if you put one there, this monkey would look for mites on it, yeah. and it would get a free grooming, and it was like having a little massage. What do you think of that? It's not bad, I've got some better stuff coming up later. <laughs> <laughs> on monkey news. On the official yeah, monkey do, news. Yeah, do you see the, do you see what, see what mine though, mine's true. I mean, that's an interesting and extraordinary It actually happens, discovery. it's social behaviour amongst primates, I, just, I saw it, I saw it, it was, you know. Did it rob a bank, Rick, at any time? It didn't rob a bank, and it didn't open a hairdresser's. Oh, uh, so that's what you're letting me, that's what you're I letting am, yourself it's not, it's not quite good enough, is it, my monkey news? No, I've got some... See the difference, where I, I, I named the species, explained it slightly, told you an interesting fact, mm -hmm. as opposed to, there's this monkey, right? And, uh, Look at him looking at you. Yeah, it's he's not interested, Rick. <laughs> can I tell you now, can I try and describe for people the face that Carl has? I'll tell you what it's like, it's like if you draw, um, some eyes, a nose and a mouth on a balloon, and then inflate it to about half full. That's what Carl's face looks like. That's what his head looks like. It looks like a face you've drawn on a balloon. Very small, the rest of the head huge. It's, it's just that like today I'm a, I'm a bit tired, right? Mm. That's one thing. Why are you a bit tired? I just haven't been sleeping, right? Why not? I don't know, I've got a lot going on in the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if this would be like The Simpsons, if we could actually look in there, there would be two monkeys grooming yeah. you. Uh, Plus you've, you've been talking about, like, stuff that I can't relate to and that, so I'm- What, I'm, writing poetry? Like what? Reading books. Yeah, what? doing poetry and stuff. I never did any of that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? At, well, at school they didn't, they didn't bother. They tried to get us to write more, right? 
Right. By, uh... Giving you a pen? Well, they, they used to give us these school diaries. Yeah. Little, little red book. <laughs> and it was a way that they kept an eye on what you were doing out of school hours. Right. right so some kids would write down, you know... <laughs> Stole a bike. Yeah. Burn a house right. down. Yeah. But when I was at school, around that sort of twelve age, I, I didn't get up to much. You have no money, there's no you can do. So every night it was the same thing. I'd get home and you, I'd have to- I'd have to go to the shop, right, and get some potatoes and some bread every okay. night, right? And I kept taking this into school. Sorry, wh what was it? Dublin in the 17th century? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean every day you went to the shops and got potatoes and bread? <laughs> That's- that's kind of what I had to get all the time. <laughs> what, what why? Had. What did you have? Chip sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. Right, and, so uh, you went to the pit- yeah, you went there. So I kept- With I kept your putting that, stick. <laughs> yeah, I kept, yeah! I kept putting that in the diary, you know, every night saying, <laughs> went, to, went to you phase. That was the name of the show. <laughs> yeah. What is it called? You phase. What is it, you or you? Like H U G H. H U G H, yeah. Oh, is that was his name? You phase, right? right. Used yeah. to go there. Get the potatoes and bread, bread and that. I have to pat someone who's named a shop after themselves. <laughs> I'm not going to say what we sell. It's named after me or nothing, or I'm not opening. <laughs> Mainly potatoes and bread. Yeah. White sliced loaves, King Edwards. And the teacher used to always say, just write something different in there. Make something up. Because yeah. like you know, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through to Friday, every night it was just went to you phase. Went yeah. <laughs> to you. Phase. So you sort of you. you Are you sure? To... Sure, it wasn't an advert. Sure, it wasn't paying you to say. Uh, Get my name in the book. <laughs> yeah. The only t the only time that it changed, and she said, "Oh, that's that's made it a bit more interesting." Was when it was my birthday, and I had to buy a cake, potatoes and a cake, and she said, "Oh, that's good." Yeah. That was my thirteenth birthday. My mum said, "I got on from school." She said, "Oh, you're thirteen today, teenager, big big turnover. Go and get a cake." That's your experience of writing. No, what? Well, no, that's your guess. experience of your thirteenth birthday. Oh, by the way, you're thirteen today. Go and get a cake. Yeah. Brilliant. Big surprise. Was yeah. it a big surprise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is brilliant. So, I love it. That's that, the only sort of writing. Well, yeah. and they never asked you to write essays or stories? Did anything? you never write a story or a poem or a- The stories I did earlier on were, you know, you, you made them up but it was that thing that I'd, I'd always end them with <laughs> and an alarm went off and it was all a dream. Every right. single one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't- they didn't- I mean it was a bit of a- <laughs> I bought some, like some potatoes and some <laughs> <Yeah>. bread, but <laughs> I woke up and it was all the dream. No, 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 no. Then I went to Shouts and bought some potatoes and yeah. bread. But did, did you ever do anything that right about an adventure when you were a spaceman or you were in- you know, you were uh, a cowboy or- No? Yeah. All the teachers like had scams going on so like- <laughs> In English, right, <laughs> you'd go in there and the teacher would say, right, what we're doing today is, got a load of brochures from Thompson, but they say like 1983 on the front, so I've got a load of stickers here that say 1984, let's see how many you can do in half an hour. You are joking. Did you go I'm to school with Oliver Twist? <laughs> Sorry, you are joking. I'm not, that's what they did. So the teacher must have been getting like a freebie or something for helping them out. You, is this- Honest, honestly, yeah, that's what it's from. That is fantastic. They were all at it. They, all, all <laughs> they were all, other than Mr. Fagan, you had <laughs> yeah. And then when they saw Karate Kid, they had their, every kid washing their car, going wax on, wax off, hurry yeah. up. Yeah. I'm teaching, I'm teaching you something. Wax on, wax off, paint the fence. So I'm just saying, you know, that's that's why I'm a bit quiet because you're talking about stuff I can't can't relate to. And why and why didn't you sleep last night? I'm just I, I haven't slept well for, for since I was about twelve. <laughs> Do you sleep well? <laughs> well, wait, 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 you can't let that go! I haven't slept well since I was twelve. What do, do you know, mean? Do you know, like, a proper... I used to love going to bed as, as like, a kid. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, oh, am I gonna sleep tonight? And, and I sort of wake up about four times. Right. Whereas when you're a kid, I remember really loving, like, going to bed. I'd, mm. I, what, there was one time where I actually laughed. Myself to sleep. Because I couldn't believe me luck. Is there something wrong with him? What do you mean you laugh yourself? Have you ever know, had it when you're, when you're really tired and you get in bed and the pillars feel Yeah, it's all cold. Yeah. And, and it's like, I can't believe this. Yeah. And I, I, it happened twice. Once when I just went to bed and I was really looking forward to it. And also when I, I helped my dad out once, like through the night, he worked at, like, at this paper company, right? And uh, <laughs> I helped him out and I got in at about four in the morning with him. Got in bed. And I just was like, I, had, I, I was laughing my head off. I had to put the pillow over my head because I, I couldn't believe me. Look, like I, I was like, oh, this is great. This I'm going to sleep. 
I, I just have to say, life up north is so extraordinary. No, but you must be the easiest kid in the world to please. No wonder she knew she could just go get a cake. It's sort of like, uh, what, what was he expecting her to say? He were expecting an extra hour in bed, <laughs> yeah. but we got him cake as well. <laughs> go I to bed love that. any supper. Brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. It, your just, own it, bed. How long was it before you got your own- what did you, just, you used to do before? Just some straw in the corner? No, it's just that- that thing of when you're really tired and- And do you ever do this with Suzanne though? Do you ever laugh yourself to sleep with her? <sighs> no, that's what I she mean. She can't sleep because you're chuckling away. I'm just- I don't know what's up with me. I've got a lot going on. <laughs> what, what- what- what do you mean you've got a lot I going on? I don't know. I was talking to the security bloke before saying, do you sleep? <laughs> Have you got much going on in your head? And stuff and- I don't know. He wasn't insulted by that, I'm sure. Going up to someone and going, have you got a lot going on in your head? That oh, is brilliant. It I worries me. It's interesting that um, your lack of sleep coincides with the diaries and the uh, the writing of the bread and potato story every day. I don't know if once you had that responsibility. Why don't you every night go to Hugh Fay's, get some bread and potatoes, you don't have to eat them, then go to bed and I think you'll be chuckling yourself to sleep <laughs> in no time. <laughs> I'm stunned at Carl's rudeness, okay? That was badly drawn boy, by the way, all possibilities. There's a lovely chap just calls in saying about, sounds, and Carl, because the record's ended, he doesn't say, oh, I've got to go the record's ended. He went, yeah. And he, but, so, he's still there. Well, 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 cut him off. He's well, well, just check if he's still there. He doesn't want to be on radio. I'm, he said I'm, he didn't want to be I'm on the radio, still, but I think he should apologise. I'm still here. Hello? Hello. Hello. Alright. I'm still I did ask not to put live on radio because I get very embarrassed. No, don't but worry. All we want to do is we just want to apologise for Carl's curtness and his rudeness. No. All I want to say is the station is good because you, you couldn't have a worse slot on a Saturday afternoon, right? Because the youngsters are in the boozers, the older fellas are doing the punting, the racing, the football and whatever. The thing is, the state you play, if you want, if you want to get number one... This is XFM, not Radio 2. If you want to be, if you want to be the top, all you got to do is start playing Natalia and Bravely and this and that, and have your audience with one puke of hair between four legs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you now that's why I don't want to go live on radio. But you are. I, 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 when when Christian got a little bit sick about being thirteen, then he got to go. Whatever. Uh, you, you, you're the soundest station in the area. You cover. I don't like all the stuff you play, the, the station plays, but it, you're actually doing what's there. Thank and you, I tell you very what, much. You keep going. You keep going. Persevere. And, and you'll make me, it's well worth listening to anyway, okay? Thank otherwise you, cheers. I uh, otherwise I wouldn't Can you it. hear us? <laughs> Thank you, bye. Dead sound, mate, be careful, yeah? I mean, I can see why you cut him off. No, <laughs> stop it. Man right. alive. We've had so many calls. Carl was getting annoyed. There were so many calls. And, uh, we've had suggestions from, uh, Ned saying talk about Jimmy Savile. Uh, John in North London. Um, I've just got John in North London. What does he want us to talk about? Oh, I've forgotten. Becca from Liverpool <laughs> wants to talk about Tracy Emin and Damien Hurst. Art, um, Paul Andrews, your mum called, stop calling her, telling her to listen to XFM. Yes, you, Paul Andrews, is about 38, at home with your wife and kids. Your mum just called in. Um, uh, I think uh, someone wanted amazing monkey facts. I can't even do this right, can I? Uh, to be honest with you, last week we were slagging off Carl as being the weak link in this show. <laughs> I think it's clear what the weak link is. Um, Oh God, who's the bloke who wants to Haley to go with him to X Men? See, I shouldn't make notes. What's wrong with you? <laughs> if you didn't spend so much time squeezing his head and eating pies, we might get uh, something done. Right. Okay. Then what should we talk about then? Um, right, Tracy, play a record and we'll discuss this. Tracy Emin, make your okay. bed. Make your bed. <laughs> David Ayres, stop cutting up sharks and things. Um, Picasso. All right, right. Rockbusters. What have we got for us, Carl? <laughs> right. Um, there we go. Then three clues, Stick three cryptic it. clues, couple of initials. Email in Ricky at xfm dot uk. Win some stuff. Do you want to go the through the stuff? Yeah, you get them. You're definitely we... improving yourself as weeks go on. We've got um, a, a, C a three CD set of the best of Inspiral Carpets. How they've strangled over three CDs, I've no idea. Yeah, I know. Extraordinary. Um, a number of other CDs, all of which are okay, plus um, a T-shirt and a copy of Marion and Jeff Series 1 on DVD. Not bad at all, in an XFM bag. Well, he's noticed X-Men 2 isn't there, because it's not out yet, but it is at the cinema, so I think Hayley should go with, what's his name? Shut well, up! Okay. Right, go on, Carl. Right, the clues are, clue one. Um, that, uh, 
Oh, they're having problems then. Oh, this is <laughs> right, brilliant. Well, this, is, <laughs> no, this is what we're doing. I know. For. I'll tell you what. I, I think Foxy was really soft on us. I think he's- oh, go on. This is what we're tuning for, okay, so this- Go on. again. So uh, go on. <laughs> this is brilliant, come on. This is like, who wants your millionaire? It's Carl. Go on, Carl, uh, don't worry about him. He doesn't- he doesn't understand radio, Carl. He- uh, he-, he, he, he I heard his show before we had us, he was doing it, it sounded just like Dr. Fox. Yeah. Right. Go on. Uh, clue one, uh, they're- they're having problems, the, uh, <laughs> they haven't- they haven't got any rice. <laughs> say it again, and say it like it's written down. Right. Say it like it's like you're reading it as opposed to making it up as you go along. I know you are, but say it again, because all the ums and ahs, people think are integral. They're- they're having problems. Th uh, do it again. They're having problems, they haven't got any rice left. <laughs> different! <laughs> different! <laughs> Encrypted clue every word, that's, that's the matter. Clue. And what's that. the- what's the initial? CC. CC, right. and the clue again. They're having a few problems in that. <laughs> Because they haven't got any rice left. Different <laughs> every time! He's <laughs> Ah, go on, that's number one. Uh, second one, the Geordie fella doesn't know what he's been charged for. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, okay, and what's right. the initials there? D W. Oh. The Geordie fella doesn't know what he's been charged for. Right. And the final one, um, if he had two bricks <laughs> and he had to throw them at two women, right? <laughs> Right, you've got to go through this without going, right? Oh, yeah, just do it again. Just say it again. Think what you're going to say, then say it. I had two bricks. Oh, it, no, it was if I had before. Well, I've got a <laughs> Stop it, isn't it? Stop, because I'm going to burst. Right, Carl, work out what you're going to say and say it. Right. Okay, just calm down. Okay, Can we just over and calm down? Okay, right. I had two bricks to throw at two women, yeah. and I didn't hit either of them. Okay. The initials M M. Right. Okay. So quickly again. Uh, they haven't got that. I've right. got that. I've got that, and it's brilliant. That is a brilliant one. Okay. Right. <sighs> they've they've run out of rice. They've got problems on their hands. C C. Right. The second one. Geordie's yeah. fella doesn't know what he's being charged for. Right. B W. Mm. And I had two bricks to throw at two women. Didn't it? It any of them. Right. <laughs> That's M M. Email in Ricky uh, Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Play a record. Win some stuff. In it's uh, email at me, Ricky uh, Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Oh. 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 White stripes. Seven Nation Army on XFM one hundred four point nine. Carl, um, are you thinking of starting a family? Only if, like, an accident happens or something. Yeah. Do you, were you there, Rick, when, uh, we were chatting about this the other day? Oh, yeah, no, I was, what did you say, Well, Carl? we were talking about his career and that, because he's on, um, MTV and I was going, oh, you gotta do this now. He's going, look, if it happens, it happens. I said, I've said to Suzanne, if it happens, it happens. She goes, well, what are your plans? I was like, same with, uh, Bailey. She said, are we gonna have kids or not? I go, look, if it happens, it happens. I go, well, how would it happen? He goes, if a condom splits. Amazing. I love the idea that that's the way you plan for a child. Imagine telling them that. When- where- where was I conceived? Can't remember, the condom split. Yeah. You were an accident. I love that. The well, romantic I, nature of that well, is just I was just told I was an accident, but, you know, it doesn't oh, matter, does it? Enough. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but it doesn't well, matter. Do many people sit down and say, right, do you think we should? Yes. Well, I stay lay down. <laughs> yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play- you can't sit down, you haven't got time for that discussion. No, it doesn't mean the conception, I think it means bringing up a child till it's- Eighteen. But the thing is as well, it's one of them, innit? It's like, if you think about having one, you go, well, the, ne the, the sort of negatives, you know, outweigh the positives, yeah. I think. Right? Go on. But if you have one, you go, oh, it's not that bad, is it? So what are the positives <laughs> and what are the negatives? Uh, Like I say, the negatives outweigh it. I can't think of that many positives. They, they get in the way, don't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, Cost you a lot. Costs a lot of money. Same with marriage. Like Suzanne saying, we'll get married, so what for? Well, marriage doesn't cost anything. Well, it does. Well, no, and if you go to the registry office and then yeah, buy then, a house. But then what's the point? Well, tax breaks, you know, presents. I don't <laughs> think you get them anymore. Do you? I looked into that. <laughs> <laughs> you old romantic. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather have, a ring or a 3% <laughs> saving? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't see the point anyway. I that, got down on one knee and presented with some inland revenue forms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just to show the benefits. That, that is great. 
I mean, if you are planning it, I think you got to involve me and Steve in the radio station because it'll be. I mean, you take quite a lot on, don't you? Mm. So if you've got a kid at home and you're not and you're not sleepy, you haven't slept since you were twelve. You've got this. You've got MTV. You've got a kid. You know, it might be one step too far because I wouldn't want. I I wouldn't I wouldn't want to push you over the edge. <laughs> well, Maybe, see, go on. Sorry. No, I just was going to say I was talking to Suzanne last night about it and saying, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, about earning money and that. And she said, "Well, you already sort of earn a little bit more than me. Mm. So you know, if you get loads of money, she said, I'd be happy staying at home." And doing nothing, maybe looking after a kid. I said, "Oh, so that's not happening." <laughs> <laughs> right. I said, "I could have a load of money now, tucked away. I could have won, won some money, and I wouldn't tell you. I still want sort of that check offer every month because I get a check offer to sort of pay the bills." Yeah. And I think you need to keep that in a relationship. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Work as a team. Yeah. Yeah, that's not working as a team. Of course it is. Well, no, you share everything. Sharing everything is working as a team. Yeah. Whether you earn most or less. from thirty-five grand back. It's not like you think that, oh no, I've, uh, I won the pools but I give her arms, she'll get lazy, she'll just <laughs> sit around the house doing nout. So well, she's still got to go to work in a job she hates. Yeah. I'll tell you though, she, she thinks that it'd be the worst thing that could happen if we got a load of money. Cause she'd want to go to Egypt, I tell her I'm not going. <laughs> why would she want to go to Egypt? I don't, that's what I said. No, why would she- <laughs> why does she want to go to Egypt if she wins a lot of money? She said it's- it's meant to be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so- so the incredible- Wonders of the pyramids and the Sphinx and so on. That's not of any interest to you. I've seen it though on the telly and that. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to go all that way just to see it. Exactly. Right. No, exactly. That's probably. To experience yeah. other cultures, other lifestyles, travel broadens the mind. Wow. Well, you don't. No, not really. You've seen enough different ones here, haven't you? Yeah. There's there's parts of uh, Wyvern. Oh, you haven't seen yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, so so the, you're you're you don't want to make enough money. You don't want to make a lot of money because you're worried that Suzanne might want to go to Egypt. And then that'd be- No. And that's going to tell you I don't tell her that I'm making a lot of money. I can still tuck it away. Right. And what and will you do with it? When- when- but when are you- when are you when, when, when you, you turn up in a big, um, converted limo goes da 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 come on, we're going to a bingo. Where'd you get the car from? Never thee mind. Right? What- won't she be suspicious? Hmm. When you've got a pet chimp. You know what I mean? What are you- I mean, yeah, what would you spend it on? Is there nothing that you want for? No, I've never. No, there's there's now at the moment. Honestly, it's it's. Uh, I'm quite happy. Do you know what I mean? I don't ask for much. Don't but you're not much. happy. You're always whinging always and moaning. Always whinging. Always whinging. It's clearly, there's something wrong. What if someone gave you? What? Okay, right. Let's let's be serious. We're not talking about billions, right? But if someone gave you. Uh, a cash injection, just a one-off cash payment of two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Okay, what would you do with it? I mean, that's too easy because that should obviously be a house. That should be the best house you can find in I'll London. I probably want to go and see a tornado. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's on your list. Okay, uh, so it's so it, you it's, know. In many I, ways, he's so sweet, but you, d I want to shake him. Can I just point out to you, Carl? I don't know if you know this. But if you get caught in a tornado, you do not whisk off into the la magical land of Oz. And land somewhere nice. Yeah, and crush a witch. S still in your rocking chair. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It's quite dangerous. But you go and see a tornado, number one, fair yeah. enough. Number two? What, what, what brochure is that in? <laughs> that one? That was Texas, isn't it? Okay. Oh. Number two? Uh. Texas. <laughs> so he's got tornado what number one. What brochure is that in? Number it's two. Texas, isn't it? It's Kansas, I think, mainly. Well, can I just- I noticed someone's emailed here a link for, can you believe you luck, Carl? Monkeys for sale. Now, I don't endorse this in any way, but here you are, here's a monkey for sale here. Oh, that's terrible. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, it says, male, very smart little guy, yeah. loves to play and gives kisses, yeah. wears diapers and clothes, yeah. has been around lots of people and loves them, healthy and loves to eat. It's dead, Sounds like it? Ricky. <laughs> How much is that? Well, it wasn't Carl, but it says it loves to be around people. Yeah. There's a gibbon there. A given for- It's pricey though, it's like that, uh, Donald McIntyre program he did, that Cheapest Chimps program. He didn't do Cheapest Chimps. He well, didn't do a mm. program called Cheapest Chimps. He's saying that, but- Well he didn't. Mm. There's that no point, did Donald McIntyre do a program called Ch Play a record a minute. Play a record.
Lydia Skinner, of course, Sweet Home Alabama. Always worth a play, I think maybe once a month. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Carl, um, we're talking about having kids and stuff. I've always been quite thankful that Ricky's never wanted to have kids because, um, I just think he would set the worst example for a child that he <laughs> possibly could do. Um, just in conversation the other day, just happened to mention that he's taken to eating in the bath. Yeah, well, let me explain some. Let me explain some. Right. Um, I've got busy schedules. Yeah. <laughs> I get up, I meet Steve at a certain time, then I go, oh, I've got to go at 3 30 today, Steve. I'm working out at four, I work out at four till five, I have to have something to eat before I go out and I often meet Johnny for a beer at six or something or go somewhere. So I thought, oh God, um, if I go around and have a bath straight after, then I have something to eat, I go, oh, I've got, a, sometimes there's chicken legs, right, and they're greasy. So one day I thought, hold on, I'll go to the bath with the chicken legs, I'll eat them in the bath, and it's brilliant, so I'm sitting in the bath, I eat the chicken egg, it's really greasy, right, I just throw it, in the bin, go under the water, come up, I'm clean. <laughs> I've eaten, I'm clean, I get dressed, I go, I'll meet Johnny. I've lined my stomach, and the good thing about that is that when I come home, a few beers, and uh, I've eaten the chicken, I go, there's only bread left, I just wipe it round the bath, I've got a lovely bread and dripping sandwich, that's not true, that bit. But I do, I do, I do eat in the bath. I mean, I, I d the second week of doing it, I was just eating in the bath, I was eating, I think I was in chicken eggs again, I'm eating in the bath. Jane walked past, just looked in at me, and she went, Christ, Caligula. What? Just me and Pat Roman Emperor eating. <laughs> Caligula, to be honest, is just too cool and impressive. Not Caligula, old man Steptoe. Have you seen the one where he's in the bath eating the pickled onions? No. He sat no. in the bath, he literally sat in the bath <laughs> eating some pickled onions. Some of them slip under the water, he fishes them out, put them back in the jar. I'd never do that. No, you would, you'd eat them. <laughs> you would never know. You, you, they wouldn't let food go no. by like that. But it's so. Uh, but it's the fat. It's chicken. It's big, greasy slabs of chicken. Yeah. You're throwing the bones on the floor. No, I'm <laughs> for, putting for the wolves to stand. <laughs> I'm putting them in the bit. Stop biting your nails, Carl. Not only can you hear it, it's really rude. I don't know. I, what? Yeah, you're criticising him. Yeah, criticising him for biting his nails. Yeah, you don't know where they've been. You eat chicken in the bath and then <laughs> go under the water and come up clean, whilst sat in some water swimming with grease. <laughs> And fat. <laughs> and chicken bones. Yeah, and breadcrumbs. Well, I like to bath. I like to bath like I, I, two or three times a day. Think, but do you not see why that's not cool and impressive? It's not like we're all gonna go, why haven't we all thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest though, Steve, that is the only time I eat oranges. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that is, that, that's, I, I've always thought that, an orange, I go, oh god, this is too annoying, and I don't bother, I don't bother eating oranges, unless I, they're tangerines, you can peel them in one and put them in in one. It, I do not, I don't have big jaffas, there's just not, it's not worth it. What is wrong with you? you firstly, have you ever thought about cutting an orange into four quarters with a knife? Waste. What do you mean, a waste? More washing up. <laughs> Yeah, right, so, so this is what you got, this is why you can't sleep at night. Because you're thinking, I gotta run a bath and have an orange. I haven't got time. I'd like an orange now, I need the vitamin C, but I gotta run a bath for it. At least have a shower. I'm gonna be in there with another man. Oh, oh dear. It's like, you, the two of you are just, you, you are like children. You're infants. Your mentality <laughs> is ludicrous. And you're embarrassing us in front of our special guests. Oh yeah. I uh, can't believe it. Now, of course, last week, we've had, tattoo, yeah? we've had a number of letters, Rick. I'm just reading them now. So, okay. last week, loved your interview with Chris Martin from Coldplay. Yeah. Gene Genius. Another one here. Great insight into the man who wrote Yellow and <laughs> Clocks. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, yeah. Steve Merchant's interview with uh, Chris Martin was amazing. He showed his own TV show. Yeah, Just yeah. some of the letters we've received, Rick. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this week, we're very lucky to have with us uh, Russian pop act Tattoo. Round of applause Hi. for them. Hello. Lovely to have them here. Uh, Tattoo. Now then, of course, it's been much contra- there's much controversy that your kind of lesbian shtick is mm. just something to try and whip up some um, press attention. Uh, yeah, yeah. We are, <laughs> we, are, we are proper lesbians. We d uh, we love Fanny more than cock. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And uh, tattoo, lovely to have you. Yeah, um, yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, now then, uh, you've got uh, you've got some live gigs. I understand plan. Yeah. Duh. Okay. I can't help but notice that you sound, dare I say it, Tata, you don't sound so much Russian as German. No, we, we cannot do the accent properly. Um. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Tata, it's a joy to have you. Thanks for coming, mate. Um, yeah, um yeah, and yeah, finally, yeah, you. uh, your lesbians, could, would, for instance, either myself or Carl yeah. be able to convert you yeah, from yeah, the lesbian yeah, ways? Yeah. We, we like the moth so much that the knob is no good for us. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well thanks very much, Tattoo. Yeah, thanks, Tattoo. Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah. Um, ne next week, share. Brilliant. So if you've got any guests, <laughs> special guests you love us to interview, 
Uh, then let us know. We can watch events at xfm.co.uk. And we'll try and get that Oh, I did play a record card. Rockbusters answers next. I was gonna say, well, do you wanna do that? No, let's do it next. After the- after the record. I was gonna say something. What were you gonna say? About gays and that. What? In a bit. What were you gonna say? Oh, we'll look forward to that. Martina Topley Bird. Need one on XFM 104.9. Right, there goes the girls from Tattoo. See you later. Well Thanks, done. Thanks, girls. Cheers. Probably right, a couple of listeners Carl, there. um, what were you saying before we cut you off? Um, yeah, it's just like, you, you know, you had the girls in and that, and it reminded me I was talking to <laughs> Steve in a week. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think it's, uh, when people were talking about going to string fellas and that. Yeah. I was talking about seeing Naked people. Ah, no, I, yes, I asked him, I said, when he used to watch, uh, say, if he accidentally flipped onto BBC Two and some ballet was on, would his eye ever been drawn to maybe the gentleman's lower regions <laughs> rather <laughs> the than the ladies? <laughs> the gentleman's package? Yeah, would, would your eyes ever be accidentally drawn to that and you couldn't resist it? And Did you, you said, and you said yes. Yeah, because, right, oh, I don't dear. think I'm, uh... Oh dear. Well, go on, I mean, fair enough. All right. I'm oh, always I... looking at the beautiful ladies, but, but fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, go on. But... Right. Have I you ever looked at Wayne Sleep's testicles? I went- I went out- Have you ever looked at Wayne Sleep's, uh, penis and testicles? I went out on a night out, right? And it was some, uh, it got to some point in the night where two women mm. and two fellas got on the stage. Right. Right? Uh, started stripping off. Yes. Mm. Just yeah. what, members of the audience? No, no, I think they were, like, part of the act, right? Right. And, uh, what was this, Panto? <laughs> they're down, the, you know, the fellas were, had like their undies on, and the, and the girls just had their knickers on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Sounds pretty erotic at the moment. Go on. And, at the same time, they all whipped the pants off. Yes. Right? Yeah. It now, was Spock's Fizz, wasn't it? The, the, <laughs> the adult show. Now I said to Steve, at that point... Sorry, I wasn't there. He said it to me later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah! I yeah. said, well, well you, have a, you have a quick glance at the fellas. And then the annoying thing was, you sort of, I thought, right, now I'll have a look at the women, and it was too late, they put the knickers on. <laughs> How long were you looking at the feathers? Not that long, but, but why were you looking at them first? Uh, it's human nature, isn't it? Why? I don't know, but I'm sure you would have done the same thing. You just, you just sort of think, well, how, how, how are they shaping up? <laughs> so I it's, a, it's a comparative up test. So what was the, what was the, who had the biggest knob? Who had the, which one of the blokes had the biggest knob? No, they were, they, it's like, you know, normal. <laughs> but, I, I, that's This that's is all. a, this is a whole new side of you. This is a whole other area. So you look at ball ballet dancers, you look at the gentlemen's No, I don't, package. I just was, when he said this, it yeah. reminded me of this night when I was walking home thinking, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> didn't, didn't get a look. Cause it was where out. was this? What, what <laughs> event was this where people are stripping off? Carl, i tell you what. You are the most interesting man I have ever met. But are you comfortable being nude and that? We've done this. Well, I don't know what this is. We did this last week about are you comfortable being nude? No, I, think I know. I was talking you're about probably that. most comfortable being nude. It's just probably not in public. Hmm. Well, Ricky's only really comfortable nude when he's eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing to get. You know. Yeah, you can just wipe yourself down. It. Yeah, you just sit in the bath. Yeah. No, but I've talked about that, and then when I went, when I went home, I was talking to Susan about it, and she said, "What's all that about? You not you don't like being nude, right?" <laughs> and I said, it's, "It's not." It's like I'm part of an Alan Bennett play. It's just I love the way you talk. Remember once, right? So I don't know if you should talk about this, really, but well, that means you should. So go on, go on. Uh, oh yeah, right. We went to. um Went to Tenerife, right, one year, oh, and I was still living in Manchester. I'm scared now. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. I'm actually no, I'm scared. Just, I'm, I'm thinking about Suzanne, but she's she's. Well, I, do, I well. don't want to know anything about Suzanne, Come to on, be honest. No, but it's, it go involves on. me more. Go on, the story. Go on. I'm just explaining to you that I don't like being nude. Mm. Yes. Go on. So you're in Tenerife. In Tenerife, right? Didn't have much money. Stayed in this apartment that wasn't wasn't that nice, right? Had cockroaches in it and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, didn't have much money to go out at night. Uh. So, we're in this sort of death trap of a- of an apartment, right? Uh-huh. Anyway, so when I was younger, right, had a bit more energy, 
So, <laughs> he's 30. 90, I know. So, you know, yeah. start having it away a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joy. Beautiful. It's so, gone, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a word. I love it. Go on. Right, so, you know, doing what I do, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Someone starts banging on the door. So, see if it. it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you mean knocking on the door, right, okay. Yeah. Knocking on the door, right. So Suzanne said, you better get it. So I said, well, I can't get it now, can I? I'll have to wait a bit. Right. I can't, I can't it's, go to the door. Go on. So the banging's getting louder. Yeah. Someone at the door. Yeah. And she's like, oh no, it must be important. I'm like, in a minute. Just, so anyway. <laughs> in a minute. I, I don't want to know anymore. Can you go no, no, come on, finish the story. Open the door. It's a fireman. So I just stick my head round and he's going, you'll have to get out. The, the building's on fire. Right? So I'm like, in a minute. Sorry, you weren't still having sex at this point? No, no, but, you know, right. still sort of got to wait a minute or I can't get my pants on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, I wish I'd- I'm so sorry. Right, go on. So the, 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 now, now so the, the place is burning down. So the, it could be a serious big fire going on. Yeah. I'm sort of waiting. You can hear people sort of screaming and that, panicking. Yeah. Is that because the door's <laughs> open and you're nude? Fire, the fireman's saying, will you get out, will you get out? I'm saying, in a minute. Right. <laughs> and Suzanne was saying, you know, think of something that's not sexy. Sure. So I was thinking of people, you know, thinking maybe down in a fire might sort of calm you down. Yeah. But the fireman said, we need a big pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure, go on. go on. But what I'm saying is, that, to me, I, I wouldn't have wanted to go out and be safe over, do you know what I mean, over being naked. I don't like walking about when out on. So what I'm saying is, you <laughs> that fire. I love the idea of everyone huddled in there with the other firemen, <laughs> it just, the camera's fans long and it's Carl. Yeah, a typical news report. Naked. With still But would you, would, you, would you have gone out, we're now on. But why do I have to go out with now on, I just grab a pair of jeans. All right, but you just, you know. What? There's a fire, Carl! Yeah, well, can See, you know, not you... everyone looks at men's packets. That's only you, remember. Most of the other firemen wouldn't be going, oh, look at him. But he's what I'm interested in is, how long, to see us. Carl, how long did it take, and did the thought of dying in a fire help? After a bit, but the firemen sort of had a go at me. Sure. What do you mean? Well, like, he wasn't happy that I was dawdling. Well, to be fair, but what can you do? Answers on a postcard. <laughs> <laughs> to the usual address, XFM, care of Leicester Square. Well, let's just get these right. No, 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 let's play record, let's have Rockbusters and oh, Monkey News. We're going to have Monkey News. We'll squeeze them in. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a god awful small affair. Life on Mars by David Bowie on XFM. Right, come on, we're running out of time. Blockbusters, Blockbusters. results in. Sorry, oh, what a giveaway. <laughs> oh no, embarrassing. I've given it away. <laughs> Straight into monkey news. Go on so, then. So, uh, yeah, Blockbusters, what were the clues? Right, the clues were uh, the first one was uh, they're, they're running out of rice, so they've got problems. That was CC. That was China Crisis. Right? Okay, yeah, if they ran out of rice in China, it would be a crisis, fair enough. Second one, the, uh, the Geordie fella doesn't know what he's being charged for, right? That was Bill Wyman. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And the, uh, the third one, I had two bricks to throw at two women, and <laughs> I didn't hit either of them, that was Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. <laughs> I let him up, those were alright, though. That's extraordinary. The winner? Uh, Gina. I think Gina Ferry. Well done, Gina. And, uh, the reason I gave it to Gina is because she's included, and this is a wonderful segue, some monkey fact, uh, information of her, of her own. She says, apparently, that the group Chumbawamba got their name from one of those monkeys in a room with a typewriter experiments. Someone did it as a joke, and Chumbawamba was a word that was typed out, and that's the group, that's where the group got their name. And apparently. their lyrics. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Which so, is, um, which is good. So let's have official monkey news, play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. Alright, we've got to be quick. Go on. But, uh, this is something that was sent in to me ages ago, and I don't know why I haven't done it yet, because it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, we were talking about monkeys typing, mm -hmm. um, the Shakespeare theory and all that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this is about, uh, a little monkey called Marty, right? Basically, uh, it's in some science lab, right? It's in there. Uh, it was wandering about out of its cage, right? The lab fella was busy on the phone or something. Yeah. Right? And, um, mm. Typical. It's wandering about, it goes up to a, a PC, that's in the corner, a little computer. Types down, my name is Marty. Right? Mm. So, the fella got off the phone, saw this on the screen with the monkey sat there, says to his mate, have you done this? Right, hold on, Carl. Right. Let him finish. Oh. Before you question, always let him finish. I don't know what to do. Time's against us, come on. He said, uh, he said, have you done this? He says, done what? He said this on, on the screen here, saying, my name's Marty. Right? He goes, what are you talking about? As he's having an argument with his mate, saying, you're lying, you did it. Monkey's sat there, typing, this isn't a practical joke, my name is Marty. Right, and that's the end of the story? Uh, um, I'm not coming in next week. Uh, that's I think, we I, think I, it's I think we need a week off. I actually think we need a week off. It's doing a, uh, a web chat or something. Uh, you can go online and have a chat, chat with it. The monkey's doing a web chat? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Has he right, got his own website yet? His uh, favourite Buffy the Vampire stuff here? Have a look at that, have a look at that. Right. Do you believe that, Carl? It's all there. No, but do you believe it? Do you believe that monkey could type that and then say this is not a practical joke when he's all arguing? Weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What do you reckon, Steve? Yeah, well, it's obviously a, a wind-up. It's a joke. It's not even- you haven't even got some of the facts wrong. It's just a wind-up. Have you noticed the date? Is it April the 1st? It is April the 1st. You are joking. That it was sent. You're an idiot, Carl. It was sent on April the 1st, Carl. So you're saying the monkey knows it's April the 1st, but you and don't believe- wind up. Yes. Yeah, I think the- I think the monkey it has thought, I'll do it on April the 1st so that people think that it's a wind-up, but in actual fact I am a monkey that can type and read. It's a shame you never went into investigative journalism. You could have brought down, you know, oh, the Watergate Carl. scandal. Poor Carl. Well, I was thinking of a song that sums us three up, yeah? What are we? What are we? What do you think- how would you sum us up? Um, tricky. Well, young, gifted, and black. And true enough. Apart from apart from a couple of them. Yeah, well, we're not gifted. No, and we're not very young. No, I'm certainly not. Should we take a week off? Yeah. Should we maybe just knock it on the head altogether? We'll take a week off and see what happens. Okay. See you next. No, not let's not see you next. See in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Cheers, then, Carl. Out of Time on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I really like that Blur track, I think it's the best thing they've ever done. Blimey! So, Strong words. They can quote me on that if they want. <laughs> yes, on their, <laughs> I'm sure they'll rush to. On their, uh, on you their know, posters. one of their albums, yeah. if they wanted. Well listen, you're lucky I'm here Steve, okay. right? Okay. Um, you can see, you know, you know something that's happened, I've done my back in again. Right. right? I've, I've got a special chair in here. I mean, Agony, yeah. and I want the strongest painkillers I can get. Right? Okay. I feel a bit. Right? Carl, I had to call Carl up today and say, "Look, I don't know if I can make it in. Can you come and get me?" He came over to my house. We got in a cab, and he got me here. Right? Um, while he was round my house, uh, Jane showed him um, sort of camcorder footage of how I actually did it. Of how you hurt your back. And uh, I, I wanted Carl to tell you because I was actually worried that if I didn't turn up, what you'd say to me? Yes. What 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 was I doing, Carl? Right, so, I get round to his place, right? He says, right, hit play on the video, right? Uh, have you ever seen a gorilla having a fight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Him and his mate round at his place last night, decided right. to sort of have a bit of a wrestle. Yes. Um, it went on. I mean, how much footage? Uh, honestly, it was like a scene from Women in Love. Yeah. Um, we'd done about five fights. We had to stop at one point because his arm was bleeding. We You'd had about out. five fights. Yeah. Well, we were wrestling. We were doing wrestling, right, in the <laughs> just behind what, in the, the lounge. Couch. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were on our knees and then sort of like to him and you know, and I kept I kept winning with an arm lock. Right? Yeah. And then the last time like, he sort of th threw me and I, and, my, and, I went on the back and my back was done and I was you know it was Ian Morris. Yes. It was uh, you know. 
<laughs> yeah. isn't, now, isn't he a, um, isn't he the commissioning Channel. editor of comedy at Channel 4? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, the funny thing was that we'd, we'd had lots and lots of wine. And we went you surprised to me. <laughs> yeah, right. And we went, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to take and film this. And the time we filmed, I said, film this. And Jerry went, oh, right. And <laughs> I took my shirt off. <laughs> It's right there, and it's, you can just hear slapping. Oh, Why, God. I, can I just ask though, I mean, it's a Friday night, you know, you yeah. have a couple of drinks, you yeah. know, some intellectual conversation. Yeah. How does it get round to, do you fancy wrestling me? Well, I'm- um, And um, having it filmed? Well, I was, it was on the couch, but I kept sticking my socks in his face to annoy sure. him. Sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then he, he hit me on the shin, and I've got sharp shins, and it hurt. And I was, I was going, I'm gonna smack your face in these yeah. and kickboxing. And it's that thing, like, you sort of joke, and they go, come on then. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you start, have you ever seen the thing when Jack Osborne fights that skater dude? No. On the no, Osborne? I, I was very much the Jack Osborne figure. Right, yeah, the fat bloated guy <laughs> just came out of rehab. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what it was like, Steve. Have you ever seen, like, the David Attenborough stuff? <laughs> Where, like, a tiger will be ripping a deer's head off, and you think, why doesn't the camera crew stop it? Yeah, yeah. You sort of watch, you're thinking, why was James why just letting this happen? Why is she not stepping happen? in and intervening? Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, she said, right, you've seen enough, haven't you, and stopped it, so I don't know how much footage you got. <laughs> It wasn't much. It wasn't much. But because your lounge is not huge, and there's not much space between the the, the back of the sofa and the oh, table. I didn't need that. It was just a, it was just a, a pain or a submission. So it was just, <laughs> it was all over with like one of us throwing the other on the back. Arm and up. how does it? I mean, how do you start with the wrestling match? Are you both stood up or you're no, on, the, on your knees and you sort of like go together like rattling seals? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh dear, like a giant walrus. It's not gay. Play a record. <laughs> Can we put that online? <laughs> Can we get that on the web? <laughs> that, that I would love to see. <laughs> Better Roger Stewart? Yeah. yeah. Stewart. May. <laughs> Indeed. You need to say no more. If it, people don't it, know what it is from that, yeah. that information, X, them. Gervais Merchant Pilk. <laughs> exactly. Alright? Exactly. Rick, I was uh, out last night in the Crouch End area, and I passed yeah. out. I always, things upset me like this. It was a restaurant, it was a little French restaurant, yeah. but you barely noticed it. You walked past, it was like a row of houses, and a little French restaurant yeah. there, open, it was kind of summery. Bistro. It, no one in there, Rick. It was You're about joking. 10 to 10. I'm thinking if no one's in there on, uh, 10 to 10 on a Friday evening, it's doomed. And it really upset me. It genuinely upset me, because I always think about the little French guy in there. He, you know, he, he's put all his money into that. He's convinced Rene. his wife to do it. Yeah. You know, she's not convinced, but she's a great cook. Eve. Exactly. And it's already going down the pan. Do you know why? You don't want French food in a hot summer's night. You want Mexican food. <laughs> well, indeed, some kind of tapas. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, exactly. But then I was, because we were just discussing other things that upset us, and, uh, and I glimpsed- uh, War. Well, true, obviously war. war. I mean, obviously I started with war, plague, famine, famine yeah, yeah, disease, yeah. SARS, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, then it came down the list to, um, worried about people who manufacture fax machines. Why? Because of technology? Well, moving on. They, I mean, if you want to, say you're making fax machines, you're a little company, you make fax machines. A little what? A little company. Oh, right. You're making fax machines. Are you allowed to use email? What, like, if you work for Coke, you're not allowed to drink Pepsi exactly. publicly? It just seems like I'm I'm assuming the, the fax machine is, sales are plummeting. Now, the thing is, right, is that, now, I haven't got a fax machine, you're right, I've got email, but I much prefer a fax. Well, yeah, but Because you got... get it, it comes out the other, it comes out the other side. Yeah, but- you know what I mean? It is, it is, is what print... they've sent, that's what's great about a fax. But you can print off your email, can't you, and then you've got it in hard copy. Wow, well, it's sort of know, instant. But, you know, I don't look at the emails, the fax comes out, it's there, it goes, <laughs> it's like someone putting a little post note in your face, do you know what I mean? You go, oh yeah, I'll read that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Email, you got email. Uh, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? well, yeah, no. I, but what worries me is whether fax. I'm assuming fax machines are just. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone listening who works maybe for a fax machine. Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If you're in the fax <laughs> industry, give us a call. Tell us, uh, you know, what sort of sort of figures. <laughs> yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. We want to go down seventeen percent, something like that. <laughs> like those kind in, of the, stats. in the southwest. Exactly. Those are yeah. the kind of stats. Uh, but um, you got? Uh, do, have you got fax machines yet in the north, Carl? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, you're, you're loving it, aren't you? I like getting letters. <laughs> well, no one thinks that's anymore, do they? Uh, you like getting a scroll from a man on a horse. Yeah. Saying your When do you get letters? <laughs> do my mum still sends me the odd letter? Sure. Even though I call, she'll still, she, she likes sitting down at a table and... Yeah. You so know. what, you call and ask the questions, there's no reply, and then you get <laughs> yeah, a letter yeah, a day right, later going, later. question one, yes, I am well. <laughs> yeah. Question two, yes, your father's well. Yeah. Oh, it's nice though, isn't it? Yeah, a letter's yeah. nice. It, it? It's nice to receive a letter, yeah. It's always nice to receive a letter. Particularly if, like, you know, you're on a sort of expedition. <laughs> but, yeah. what does annoy me though, you, you were looking at them the other day, you know, you were talking about the pictures on them, postcards. Yes. Don't like them. You don't like, you don't like postcards? No, they annoy me. 
<laughs> and just, just because it's never anything of any interest, and the fact that even though it's been sent to you, you're the last one to read it. I just, whenever I used to send my mum a postcard, I, I, every day, I, uh, every time I send it, I'd horrify her by putting on it, having a lovely time. Um, does that pig of a postman still read all your letters? <laughs> and she'd just be horrified, she'd be terrified nice. he'd looked at it all the time. This is what worries me, I've always assumed that people would read a postcard. If I was a postman, I would definitely read a every single postcard. Yeah. So if you're on holiday, yeah, you know. What do you mean? Yeah, would, you wouldn't have a lot of time left if you read every postcard. No, but as, as you were posting, as you were posting it through the letterbox, you'd have a quick look, wouldn't you, to see what, was, what they were up to. Because that's why I never used to write anything of any interest on a postcard, because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want anyone to sort of know what I was up to. Let's say I was on a bawdy lads holiday, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 I would yeah, just yeah. write sun, you know, nice sunny, you know, got myself yeah. a lovely pair of shorts, Yeah, like that, you know, I'd keep the truth, Rick, yeah. for when I got home. Well, he's looking forward to going on holiday now, Carl, because he's got some prescription lens sunglasses, which we'll be talking about that after the break. <laughs> Bit of darkness. Look forward to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. An amusing story about a man wearing glasses. <laughs> oh, the darkness growing on me. It certainly is. And it's FM 104.9. <laughs> Love those boys. Keep the guitar riffs up, lads. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Oh, it's good to see that your back pain has not impaired your DJing abilities. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, I'm a professional. I'm yeah, a professional. You've sold it all. Yeah. Put the glasses on for Carl. Well, see, now, because I wear glasses normally, I, um. I've always had problems with glasses. The, the thing about glasses is it stops you from doing so many things, and you point, may not realise if you're a non-glasses wearer, certain things that you can never do. If you're, like, for instance, I have never been able to Volleyball. go into the mosh pit at a gig <laughs> and, get, and get carried above everyone. You know, <laughs> they, they carry you above everyone on their hands. Because I, so I knew someone would just but grab my glasses. you don't need glasses. to, you can see from the back. That's the good thing about you at a no, concert. Indeed, you can actually stand at the back the and look over. being able to at least jump on the stage and do a stage dive and all the rest of it. So that's one of the things I've missed out on. Missed out on, you know, sport really, because a lot of like, boxing, for instance, I could never do. I never do boxing, never do wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so our big championship showdown is not going to yeah. happen. Um, <laughs> We'd probably be the same weight category. Well, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> your reach. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, I remember when I first got glasses, I, I only had to wear them occasionally. I was, I think I was, uh, it meant I couldn't see things a long way away. And obviously I got them, but I was at school and I was a bit self-conscious, didn't want to really tell anyone I had glasses. I just, oh. I didn't reveal to anyone I was wearing them. So I used to go into a class, I remember being in science, and we always sat in the same spot, and it, I was sat right at the back, and I couldn't see what was on the blackboard. But I didn't want to start, but I didn't want to put my glasses on, because I didn't want people to know I had glasses. So I, so I couldn't see what was being written on the board. You have to copy stuff down from the board, science equations, things like that, I had no idea. So I'd have to try and copy off someone next to me, but not, that wasn't always possible, because I had to do it surreptitiously. So what I took to doing was pe sharpening my pencil every <laughs> sort of 35 seconds. Going up to the... Going up, memorising what was on the board. <laughs> and I got a D in, s in science. Oh, that's so awful, that's sort of, though. It's a big, it's a tough thing, glasses. So it really it is. Was, when you first start wearing if you're see, young. it was education versus vanity. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? And now he's think he thinks, well, hold on. He's sorting out his hair. You can see he's quite stylish. A, stylish hair. Because when I met him, it was like, I mean, words or gummage. Yeah. He, he won't mind me saying that. Yeah. His glasses were, I mean, idiotic when I met him. And he's got some stylish glasses now, so he sorted that out. Yeah. Um, his, his clothes, he's quite a fashionable bloke, and when I first met him, uh, it looked <laughs> like a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, it's step by step, and with these on, I think you'll agree, pop them on, Steve. Well, you know, I don't... Imagine him in the, on the beach. Close right? your eyes, Carl. Are they closed? I can't see, yeah. I've taken my glasses off. Oh. Yeah. So that's a weird thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Look, what are you laughing at, Carl? There's nothing funny about those. Stop smirking. I can see through Don't forget, you can see they're not real sunglasses, they're prescription lenses, so you can see yeah now. You see, I, I never knew you had to do that with, with sunglasses, I didn't think you had to have that. Right, yeah, when it's bright outside, people who wear glasses don't need to wear them. So they, they're, they're, they're looking cool, but they're bumping into yeah. stuff. No, but if your eyes aren't that good, then the sun shouldn't be bothering them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I always wondered about Roy Orbison, why was he doing that? What? Roy Orbison always had shades on, didn't he, and he was blind and stuff. It's like, what, what's the point of that? Well, because I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, I'm guessing, well, I don't even want to, I don't what know. What are you talking about? It's... Roy Orbison was blind, wasn't he? Yeah. Was he? I thought he just had very, very bad vision. No, I think he was a blind fellow, wasn't he? I don't think he was blind. Was he not? No, I think he, he had, had very poor vision. Wear him, wear him, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know what this conversation is anymore. No, well, once again, we've introduced Carl into the equation and he's just gone off on a completely bizarre tangent. <laughs> when I went, he went, oh, I'm going to pick up my prescription lenses. And he went, we had to wait. And, uh, the bloke came and said, uh, who's it for? Um, and he said, oh yeah, Mr. Merchant, here they are. And as he was getting out, <laughs> to try and embarrass Steve, I went to him, they are the exact ones that Keanu uh, Reeves uses in The Matrix, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> he went, he went, uh, what? I went, no, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. But, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what frustrates me. Can I just say, as a glasses wearer, and this is just a, a note to everyone out there who isn't a glasses wearer, when people ask constantly to try on your glasses, can I try on your glasses? And they try them on, and they always say the same thing, oh, I can't see a thing. What were you expecting? X-ray vision? No. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't ask. It, but if I you're a glasses wearer, you don't want people asking to try on your glasses. But I think they don't realise that- What by, are you expecting? By going, oh god, your eyesight's bad. Yeah. It's not like going- it, it, you know what I mean? It's not like saying, let's have a go with your calipers. Well, right, and popping you know, them on and going, God, bloody hell, you can't walk very well. But it's well. a form it's of disability, like, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it's, it's a, it's one that doesn't impair that much. It's an inconvenience that you maybe have to put glasses on all the time. Did I mention the mosh pit thing? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's not, yeah, but you're, you're not, you're not, um, uh, what's your, what's your vision? It's just blurred, is it? No, I can't see anything. I mean, it's really bad. It is really it really? Bad. Yeah, if I take my glasses off, you are just a blur. I see now, I can see nothing. It's just, just a couple of bald heads. <laughs> and I know only one of you's bald, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at Carl twice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Carl, it's your vision 2020. Well, there you go. That's, uh, Steve's eyes on XFM. Next week, Ricky's knees. <laughs> Bit of vinyl? Yeah, now listen, I want to mention this. This is from this new, uh, Morrissey compilation. It's a new series, I'm assuming a number of different rock stars are gonna do it. It's called Under the Influence, and various, uh, rock stars get to choose, yeah. obviously, songs which they grew up listening to and that have influenced yeah. them. And this is from Morrissey, he's the first person to do it. And there's some stuff on there which is, uh, a bit odd and a bit oddball, and there's some stuff which is good, and there's a Ramones on there, and Nico, and Patti Smith, but this is one of them. He obviously, famously, Morrissey was a member, he was, I think he was the president of the New York Dolls fan club in England. And this is from there, and this is trash. The New York Dolls trash from this new, uh, compilation, Under the Influence, uh, compiled by Morrissey. Are they the original punk band? Oh, eight, seven, hundred, eight, hundred, one, two, three, four. Well, we want your calls. Knows they no, are, we don't. So we don't want your calls. Everyone knows they are. Don't call in. Don't call in. Please. We're not interested. D not, no point. <laughs> Rick, um, it's half past one. Yeah. Adverts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coldplay and the Scientist on XFM 104.9, with your Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. We saw an interesting sight on the way here, didn't we, Steve? Yeah. We, we came, when we came in, um, yesterday to, uh... Well, to plan the show. <laughs> to plan the show, sure. yeah. Uh, we actually annoyed Carl for half hour and yeah. left. Yeah. Um, but a bloke with a completely tattooed face. Mm. Actually, sort I don't of... know what stage you are in, at, you know, what stage you're at in your life when tattooing your own face is a good but idea. But this, this wasn't sort of like, you know, tribal or religious or anything, it was a, it's a, a bloke, j just had a sort of tattoo on his forehead and around his eyes, professionally done. It looked quite old, so I don't know if, I don't know if tattoos do that now, I, I think they've probably got to watch themselves, but I was just well, thinking- not, there's not rules about what you can tattoo, I'm assuming if you're a tattooist you can do what you want, you can tattoo anything. I wouldn't have thought, there's probably some comeback, isn't there? I mean, I said that, you know, I think you've got to be so, but I think you've got to be a, a, over 20, well, I don't know, right. over something, and I wouldn't have thought many tattooists would tattoo someone's face. Would they? Well, I don't know, have you met I tattooists? I mean, I don't want to slag them off, but they, they, they are like, you know. I know why, they're big. Well, exactly, and they've got needles. Are, a lot of them are big. Um, but they do but seem like they live in I, the periphery of society, a lot of these But people. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't tattoo someone's face, do you know what I mean? I, no. I, I've been no, I mean, you'd wrestle a man to the ground <laughs> and then hurt your back, but no, you wouldn't tattoo someone. <laughs> no, I know. Does everyone ever regret it? I mean, do, do, I mean, I'm sure some people regret a tattoo. Whenever someone shows me a tattoo, I go, that's brilliant, because I can't bear to go, that's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just think that, because they, they can't change it, there's no point. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I go, it's brilliant. Well, was, I read in the paper, was it a man or a woman who had, um, David Beckham, they just had Beckham on their, <laughs> on their arm. Just, uh, d not a picture of him, but the word Beckham <laughs> tattooed on their arm, spelt wrong. Oh, They'd God. missed out the K. Or, like, or maybe they missed out the C, so it was B-E-K-A-M. Oh, no. Anyway, it was just spelt wrong. I mean, oh, I mean, God. firstly, why do you just have the name of David Beckham on your arm? I, I, it's, home tattoos are the best, though. Well, do like it yourself. Th that's done with a pin and a mm. sort of <laughs> some ink in prison. Uh, uh, you know, like with skins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's sort of wonky because they've done it in a mirror. Yeah. What does that say? We'll read it. To Nuck. Yeah, I yeah. did it in a mirror. For funny. Yeah. Have you, um, would you ever toy with a tattoo? No, 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 I've told you about me, me Uncle Stan before, I'm the, the what, ta tattoo, tattoo Stan. No. He's just covered in them, it just looks a mess. 
you know what I mean? You can be wearing the best suit in the world, but you still look a scruff. Sure, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Once yeah. you have it done. Well, well no, some can tattoos can, you know, can be quite tasteful. No, 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 but, but he was but covered. It was yeah. all, like, you know, cut here on his neck and... <laughs> really? you know what I mean? well. like, it's just, yeah, a mess. And he, he did a lot of his own. I've told you about him before. Have you? I don't remember it. Yeah, because I was saying, if you're gonna do your own, at least make sure you're a good drawer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look what it was, was just it? a mess. It was just sort of... <laughs> <laughs> what, he did, what he thought had he done? He just sort of doodled all snakes around... Yeah, and all these kids' names on his arms, and he's like, can't you remember them? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he might have had a lot. No, he did. Yeah. But and do you remember even from a young age thinking that looks rubbish? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it'll, be, it'll probably be about sixty now. I'd love to see what he looks like. Yeah. Now, well, a lot, just look at this. There was another. There was a story the other day in uh, one of the magazines that I read um, about this this fella. Who had a, uh, well, this would be Bizarre or 14 Times, then. Yeah. One of the magazines you read. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's gonna be... <laughs> it's not the Spectator. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. this fella had a big eagle put on his back. Yeah. With a snake, sort of, covering it. <laughs> and, um... So, such rubbish, isn't it? This, this kind of these symbols of, sort of, <laughs> dynamism and life. Yeah, I, I mean, know, yeah. A snake and an eagle. Yeah, a, a large-breasted vampire woman yeah. riding a dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's always a good one. But, shit, but, but, you know, this fella had that and, and he had it in his will that when he dies, he wanted his son to have the skin taken off. <gasps> oh, God. And put in a, um, put in like a little frame. Oh. Oh, God. That's, ho that's horrific. What's that? That's my dad's back. Yeah. Oh. Are you sure? God. No, no. Because I was, I read it and kind of thought, started having sort of memories of Aunt Inora again. Yeah. Because she used to always like, uh... Now, Auntie Nora is the woman who, who farted for five she, minutes. She had wind for five minutes. Sure. Yeah. But she also, uh, she used to say, oh, Carl, rub me back. <laughs> right. And, uh, with her being quite old, it was all sort of moly and warty. It was right. mouldy? No, it was moly. Mo mo oh, moly. Right. And what did you do? I didn't like it. I hated it, in fact. It was like reading a braille book. Yeah. It was like putting your hand in a, in a load of Cocoa Pops. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, really big brown things. And yeah. I just thought uh -oh. frame it, frame it hers would be uh -oh. sort of 3D-ish. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah. we're, What's we're, that, a chunk of the moon? No. Yeah. Yeah. Did you Artex that wall? Yeah. yeah. That's, That's Auntie Nora. That's Auntie back. <laughs> oh God! Any piece of your body can't you leave oh, behind? That's disgusting! <laughs> Put your hand in some. Some... Is she the one with the split tennis ball when she yeah, wasn't wearing knickers? Shut up! Well, no, let's not discuss the tennis ball. Okay. So she used to get you to to sort of knead her dough on her back. <laughs> oh God, this but, is really bad. But like, dough. What was she with, with her with her dress or whatever? Or well, she wore those sort of squid-looking things. That old. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Like. What? 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 <laughs> those squid-looking. Hey, Zani Nora, covered in octopuses. What are you talking about? What do you no, mean? It's like a uh, it's like a nightgown type thing. But, but what's a squid got to do with it? Because it sort of looked like a squid around the around the edge. Oh, I know, frilly things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she just said, "Oh, just oh, I'm aching there." Oh. She, she was never well. She was never. Do you know what I mean? She's always had something wrong with her. I don't. I don't ask her. She's <laughs> just, no. just like you know. She's not going to be all right. Did yeah. she have wind when you were sort of neat? It must be like playing an accordion. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, like, you, yeah, yeah, get a little tune going. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, who's the, who's your auntie with the tattoos? That's uh, that's Hazel. Oh, right, let's, yeah. Let's leave that. Why? Oh, let's, let's Why? Talk about leave, what, 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 what have I come across there? What's, What's up, up with Annie Hazel? What's up with Annie Hazel? There's nothing wrong with her. What? It's just a, uh, what? Just a, a lesbian, which is nothing wrong with that. Well, no, but you've made it sound like there is now, yeah. by not wanting to say it. My no, aunt is a know, lesbian. I know what you're saying now, I know what you're getting at, just because I call her Uncle Hazel. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> He's from Manchester, please, please, please <laughs> forgive him. <laughs> Lizzie, don't believe a word, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Email here from Chris, he said you met a girl in Australia whose boyfriend tattooed her arm with the word psycho, except the spelling was wrong, and she ended up scarred for life with the word fizzco. Fizzco. <laughs> fizzco. <laughs> P-H-Y-S-C-O. Oh, I mean, a word of warning, if you're going out today to get a tattoo, they're tattooists. Right. English is probably not their speciality. <laughs> so be careful, write it down for the first. You are walking though. on thin ice, so oh. I, I've seen some of these boys, they're big. Sure. They're big. No, and if they're willing to stick lumps of metal through their faces, True. what are they going to do to you? Well, yeah, indeed. So, yeah. Steve, sorry. 
tall tattoos. The piercing, you see, I have a weird problem with the piercing as well. Because, I mean, the earrings, that makes sense. I had earrings ages ago, but... Did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. you're a man who knows he hates pain, and he's scared it of hurt. everything. It hurt. I was about 18, I, I <laughs> took two in one, and, and they did it right, and he just went, and I went, mm -mm. <laughs> All right, I went, yeah. <laughs> I just went, oh, God. Yeah. Did you have them in both earrings? It's just, he just, yeah. it was like a staple gun, I just went, do yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And it didn't really hurt, and I thought, well, I'm not doing that again. It hurts too much, and it just throbbed. Were you still living with your, your, your parents at the time? No. I mean, what do no, people- No, I moved- your, no, your, was... your, kind of oikey Reading family, what would they have made of- Oh, well, they, they know I had them afterwards, yeah, and they- But did they take yeah. the mic? Oh, God, of course they did, yeah. 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 Uh, Rick, you ain't going to eat like that. <laughs> oh, you'll get followed. <laughs> oh, look at you. Look at that. Yeah. That's disgusting. And when I was, when I was new romantic, my mum said, Bloody hell, I thought I only had one girl. <laughs> 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 um, which is the earring, because isn't it like one ear is for gay people and one is for straight people? Is, is that just a myth? Or I don't that, know, it might it was be. something yeah. to do with which well, ear that, you had the, it the, Yeah, there probably was sort of like, signs for that, yeah. I, I, it's like when you're growing up, I had loads, like, um, if, right, a white polar neck, right? And a, and a, a ring on your little finger, that means you're gay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you can see him coming. Uh, dun, yeah, dun, exactly, dun, dun, yeah. dun, 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 d
And um, let me see. Oh dear. Uh, oh, dear. A three yeah. CD set. A three CD the set. best to inspire. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm assuming CD3 is just the Corals album. <laughs> Anyway, there's some, some good things that you've sourced, oh, sourced some good stuff this week. Alright, well, uh. Alright, yeah. Here's, here's All your, right, your rockbusters, yeah, right. Uh, cryptic clove, a well. couple of initials, and, uh. And you sort that out. Right, <laughs> uh, first what one. What was Dr. Fox on about that we don't. We okay. don't sound like proper presenters. That's I don't, strange, I, isn't it? I, it's mad. Go on, Carl. Right, the first one. Uh, a customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. Shop assistant, you want to do? Right? Customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. The shop assistant knew what to do. The initials there, C B. Right? C B. C B for the oh, first right. one there. Right. Uh second one, it'd be alright if uh if their heads weren't that big. Right? And again? It would be alright if their heads weren't that big. And that's uh, S F. Right. S F. Yeah. And the last one I know that. I know uh, that one. Yeah, go on. And the last one, uh Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O, right? Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O. You email in Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. That's that done. And those prizes can be yours. Yeah. More music, please. Bit of uh, Bob Marley. Are any of these going to annoy me? Oh, I've got to stir it up. Yeah. Brilliant. Are any of these clues going to annoy me this week? No, they're all good. Are they really? Yeah. Alright. Alright. Yeah. Well, we'll Alright. Ricky Dr. Vase at xfm.co.uk. Alright. Stare it up. Bob Marley on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Wait, did you get up today and just see the great weather and think, do you know what I'd love to hear some stir it up from Bob Marley? Yeah, yeah, yeah? I did actually. Well, I was going to play it last, uh, the week before last, before I went away, and we didn't, we didn't have time. So, uh. Well, we were crammed full of features like this one. Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Do you want one? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let, I think we should have a jingle for this. Okay, I've got, I've, uh, yeah, I've got a jingle. It's very similar to Chimpanz. Ch Chimpanz that. Yeah. Well, let's hear it, let's hear it. Okay. Oh, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent. So, cheeky okay. freak of the week. You've spotted a this freak This is where, week? this is where somewhat, I think, offensively, you pick on someone who's, who's not like other people and say it's your favourite freak of that week. Yeah, I remember we had the woman whose, uh, legs look like the hind legs of a dog. Um, we've had the little fella with the aging disease with the little head playing the piano. That's, that was your favourite. I think that's your probably freak of the year, isn't it? It's a pretty so, good one. So, wh wh what, what, what's this? Is it a man um, with a, a horrendous injury or is it a congenital, um, birth defect or what? Yeah, but you put it like that, and now it sounds like I'm being tight. It sounds like I'm being out of order. But I'm just giving him a mention. <laughs> <laughs> just giving him a big shout out. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> quite a lot going on in the freak world. <laughs> um, <laughs> there always is. You've what, you've been visiting hospitals the last week, have you? When we were away. No, there was a uh, there was a thing on the on a website. This isn't even the one that I've picked. So. So this is just a bonus. This is a bonus freak. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Then. Uh, this is a free freak. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, it's, a, it's, a fella, it's a fella called the Lobster Man. <laughs> the Lobster Man, of course. <laughs> Again, good name. You know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what are you gonna get? Some, got... some succulent. <laughs> meat I like the idea. With... That, I like the idea that the vicar on the christening suggested that. <laughs> I know you want to call him Mark. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yes. Look at his hands. What's his name? Uh, Mark Michael uh, Webster. <laughs> right. Um. Right. Uh, yeah. Have, have <laughs> you thought about a nickname? Not really. No. Have you? No, have you looked at his hands? Yeah. It, we, we don't want to talk about that because Do it's, you know they look it's, a little bit like lobsters. Well, yeah, but it's quite deformed. It's a, like you know we can't can suggest lobster man. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, vicar. <laughs> that is terrible, vicar. We're pigeon. <laughs> Go on then. Yeah. We're gonna, gonna see. This is what the sort of feature you come up with, Carl. So lobster man. There's probably people listening now with you know lobster feet, right. lobster hands. So um, squid boy. <laughs> so lobster man. What does uh, what does lobster man do? Does he uh, fight crime? Not that much. Okay. Apparently he got into a bit of trouble. He was in a restaurant, and uh, this was years ago, by the way. And someone picked him to eat him. No, so <laughs> the, apparently yeah. the waiter uh, said, "Oh, you shouldn't be sat here. You should be in my, my pan." Something. Oh dear. And it, uh, they had a fight, got out of hand. Yeah. Got, yeah. Out, got out of claw. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so that, that was- What do you mean they had a fight? What did, what, what, I mean, what did uh, he do? A waiter took the mickey out of someone yeah. with 
Oh, no, no. Can I just make clear? I'm assuming his his hands look a bit like those of a lobster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's fused. So it's just like two big fingers. They're right. fused. I assume probably in the womb, and they're just like instead of like having yeah, five yeah, digits, yeah. they're fused in it. But it, I mean, he can pick stuff up, can't he? Yeah. What does he pick up? He mainly eats crabs and jellyfish, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was having a fight with the waiter. He, he snipped off his nose. <laughs> Oh, it's funny, anyway, he just he just held on to the waiter's bib. Yeah, and exactly, the waiter was yeah. screaming, "Go and get him off me!" Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, does he eat other lobsters? Does he? Does he, does he would eat lobster, <laughs> or is it kind of? <laughs> do, uh, would he feel bad about eating lobster? Right. The, the little cheek of the freak that we've gone for, anyway. <laughs> the what? The little uh, freak of the week, yeah. cheeky freak of the week. Yeah. We've gone for um, this Siamese lad. Okay. Right. Happened back in. Uh, you can't have a Siamese lad, can you? All right. Yeah. This Siamese twins, uh, happened back in 1693. Oh, he's got a date, blindness, first time ever. Yeah. Um, and all it was, he was, he was doing all right for himself. He, he used to go on the, like, those circus things he used to do. They're two people you're talking about, Carl. So we're going to him. All right, then. All right. They. They, they did this circus show, right? Yeah. And, uh, everything's going well. They, they, you know, they're, they're selling out the tents and stuff, people coming to see them. Yeah. Um, he was doing all right for himself. Yeah. Right? Did, um, sorry, before I said that, did you think the Siamese twin was a man with two heads? Well, it can be, can't it? It depends. There there is, there's, there's, there's two people, they're conjoined. No, 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 but it depends, doesn't it? The one that I showed you in that book that time was a fellow with two heads. No, it wasn't. That was, that was a, 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 was a, f uh, a stupid picture in one of your stupid books that he had a growth that looked a little bit like it had a face on it. It wasn't a man with two heads. You're the same sort of people who send potato chips to Esther Ranson and say, doesn't it look like Norman Cook? Yeah. It's not two heads. <sighs> we'll bend this feature. No! <laughs> No, it's, it's just, they're uh, two people. They're two people, conjoined twins. Yeah. Right. So these it's just have to have, they just happen to have a similar taste in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's, yeah, they were doing all right, and it all went wrong when he crossed the road, got run over. The lad with two heads got run over. That's it. <laughs> what? How is that? How is that cheeky freak of the week? Just because, just because it got my interest, and I kind of thought, why didn't he just look both ways? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued to know. Why you... wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> I'm intrigued oh. to know how you uh, how you get run over. What was it, 1629? Yeah. Well, it's horses, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Oh, why wasn't he looking both ways? Carl, Carl Pilkington, you are a genius. Play a record, you fool. Well done, Carl. More Cheeky Freak of the Week next week. So, what's going on? Okay. <laughs> In the freak world. Universally speaking, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. So, uh, got a lot of rockbusters coming in. Yeah, all right, actually. People yeah. obviously seem at long last to have tuned into your wavelength, Carl. Mm. Which is, of course, 104.9. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, should we give the clues again, briefly? Uh, we just haven't even Actually, to be honest with you, let's not, because we've already had a load of answers. I know, so, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. if you didn't get it first time round, you don't deserve to win. We had an email saying, because I've got a bad back, um, am I squeezing Carl's head? Well, I've already had a little squeeze, didn't I, about half hour ago, didn't I? Yeah. Well, you gonna, gonna, you just gotta be careful, because I, I don't, I don't want any strain, so I'd say t keep still, whatever happens, and he's, you're right about it, aren't you? Could I have a squeeze? You know, just as while you're not really kind of capable. He's allowed to squeeze it, isn't he? Because I've, I've never squeezed it once. I've never Remember, sideways, it. temples, go quite hard but not too hard. Yeah. Front to back, go as hard as you like, because that's All the right, well I'll just have a try now. Go no, go no, no, you've got a bucket. He sorted it out. He says every Saturday between Yeah, but I'm taking over from, from him because Yeah, no, let him, let him have one squeeze. Let him, let go him have one go, squeeze. Have a go, have a go, then. So, at the, the, the front no. and the back... Yeah, no, go, 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 get round, get round so you've got... That's it, right, now, use the thing that I took like that. Not too hard at the front? No, really hard at the front and back. There you go, yeah. You got the hang of it. Oh right. god, it's good fun. I, I see know. How you like it. Well, well, we'll just give it a side. Just, I, right. it's great fun. Yeah, it's great. In the, you know, there's a little bit of you know grit there with the, the short hair, but obviously yeah. not too much. There's not much up there up top. Good, isn't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll be doing that again next week. Do you know? I got a form, right? Do you know I'm staff here. Right? I'm, I'm like on the staff. I'm, yeah. I'm one of the staff. Got some internal mail the other day. That you have to fill out about if you die at work, who gets your money? He says, uh, "Do you put yourself at any danger?" <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what, what did you say? Well, I asked Suzanne, I said, does that, you know... It's freezing. It's freezing, is that enough? Oh, but my leg lock round your ribs that time, and I, I had you, it was like, uh, like a little alligator, like a python and an alligator, didn't I? You get quite some, you know, you get a little bit of oh, leverage, you can crush a man's ribs with you, yeah. with mighty legs. Oh, something I want to ask you, Carl, I, there's that program on now, I forget what it's called, is it something like, guess who's coming to dinner? Does that- Oh, you, I, did, you were... I did the, um, non-broadcast pilot for that, because right, my yeah. mate was the, uh, well, you know, um, the Phil Belker was <laughs> yeah, producing sure. it. And I did it, you know. And the premise just... of it is that it's, it's one of those things about, you know, a conversation piece, the ultimate dinner party. I think you can yeah, have six, six invite people, six guests. Yeah, um, dead, alive, or fictional. Or fictional, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you choose where you want it, and, uh, yeah. And anyway, I was just intrigued to know what Carl's, um, ultimate dinner party, who, who would, who would pop round? Any of your cheeky freaks? So what's this? I, I'm putting on a- You're putting on a, uh, an imaginary dinner party. Anne Robinson's there, she's gotta be there. I said I didn't invite you, she said, well I'm there anyway. Yeah. So it was actually me, Anne Robinson, and six people. Yeah. And, and I they... chose people like heroes, like Marmad Ali, Homer Simpson, or stuff like that, you know, James Randi, yeah. So, you could choose anyone. Living or dead, you say fictional why. or otherwise. Right. Would it, would it, would it look like a circus from the, the 18th century? I'd have, I'd have a f I'll have like a few freaks in there. Like what? Who would you have? Well, the first person I'd have is probably, uh Probably have... Elvis. I had Elvis. I chose Elvis. Why would you have Elvis? It's just good, wasn't he? It was good at what he did. Right. Just have a... But once you'd said that to him, what, what would the rest of the conversation be? I'd say sing us a song. Right, so you make him sing a song. Yeah, okay. he'd, he'd be the, like the entertainment for the night. Yeah. When he's not on the stage performing, I'd probably have the elephant man there. Right. right. So John Merrick, yeah. Yeah, John Merrick. Okay. I've got uh, just... Elvis, John Merrick. If anyone's out there and you know, uh, you have anything to do, can you write down everything Carl says from now to a year and send it to me and Steve because you might want to put it in a book. Yes. Is that is that would that be good? Just maybe someone keep a journal of everything no, Carl no. does and says, and yeah. we try and keep a scrapbook of pictures. T tell you I would have. Who? Peter Kay. <laughs> right. He'd be good. He'd be brilliant. I don't. I'd want to be sat next to him, please. Well, you, I mean, you're friends with Ricky yeah, Gervais, why would you wanna... No, but... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Peter, Peter K. Alright, Peter K. Enough, yeah. Which one, which one, would you do him as himself or one of his characters he does? Just as he is. Yeah. He's, he's funny, he's a funny man. Yeah. Love him. Um. What else? Probably, uh That, that fella who, who lost his arm when he was climbing that mountain. Remember? He had to cut few, off his arm. Oh, yeah. Right, why know. would you have him? I'd just, I'd just like to have a chat with him and say, you know, what, what happened there then? Yeah. Well, we know what happened there, he cut his arm off. What no, would you no. say? Did it hurt? Yes, it hurt. But I don't think it would hurt, that's one of the questions. What are you talking about? I reckon the shock cancelled any pain out. If you're stuck there with a boulder on your arm, you've probably got bad pins and needles, right? Yeah. With a big rock on your arm. Yeah. And you'd say, right, so how long were you sat there before you said, well, I've got to cut this off? Um. Did you read about it? It was amazing. What do you think the other people would be doing when you were talking about this bloke about cutting his own arm? John Merrick wouldn't mind. He, 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 Alvi him. Alvis would probably be off his head on summer. Elephant Man will be having a couple of bombs. I hope Peter Kay didn't make a, a funny comment. I hope he doesn't make a funny comment. Yeah. Right? Can I just, um, can I just, a quick warning? I'll just put bloke with, bloke with one arm, bloke with- Be careful, Carl, what you serve for dinner. Yeah. Cause he's only got the one arm. Yeah. So, you know, certain things. I mean, maybe suggest, um, something you can eat with chopsticks. Or a hamburger. A hamburger. But don't go with something like lobster. Trek, you need both hands for that. And there's him and John Merrick teamed up. I think they've got one good arm each. Yeah. Well, Soup, maybe. Uh. What, what would you give John Merrick? Buns? A couple of, yeah, a couple of buns. Mm -hmm. Um, to have, uh, that woman, that woman in the boat who went round the world. Why? Just to see, you know, what, what, how she managed that. Pretty boring that, guests, it? really. Hey? But boring? What do you mean boring? What was she gonna say? What she say? She was going, well, I didn't see a lot. I was in a cabin. Really? There's a lot of water. A lot of water. I was a bit scared. The main thing I'd want to ask her, right, because I remember when she did it, and, <laughs> uh, there was an interview with her, <laughs> and her parents were there or something, and, uh, her man was saying how she's dead proud because, uh, she she decided to you know go around the world in a boat as a kid instead of just hanging around on street corners yeah. and stuff um she said uh didn't she didn't want a daughter to like be messing about on the streets at night on her own and stuff she yeah, was a yeah. responsible mother yeah and she sent her off on a boat sure yeah, in the middle of the atlantic on, on her own yeah so i'd like to ask her about i that. think even manchester's safer than that isn't it yeah and i'd have uh probably 
another woman so to chat to her probably go for uh, <laughs> Kim, Kim Marsh <laughs> Kim Marsh <laughs> sorry sorry you'd have the woman who sailed around the world right but you'd have to have another woman for her to have someone to talk to well why invite either of them then if you don't want to talk to either of them yourself what, what sorry I love the... this round the world yachtswoman round world yachtswoman and Kim Marsh but why of all the women you could invite <laughs> I Kim love Marsh that. is at the top no, of the no that's list. the best list I've ever heard <laughs> Alvis John Merrick Peter Kay a bloke with one arm the round the world yachtswoman chatting to Kim Marsh <laughs> That is genius. Why haven't they invited you on this show? I'm gonna call Anne Robinson. Right, okay. If anyone's listening to that, have Carl Pilkington. I know no one knows who he is yet, but what a great bit of conversation. Play a record, Carl, you're an idiot. Some Smith. <laughs> oh, always a treat. Yeah, we played uh, some, something from Morris's selection. Something that would be a my ultimate compilation is something from the Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it'll probably be this one. I started something I couldn't finish yet. I think that's one of their underrated albums, Rick. Strange Ways, Here We Come. Uh, it might be my favourite. It's my favourite, certainly. Yeah. And uh, that's from that album. I started Queen something is Dead I is a lot of people's favourite, but I don't like the wacky ones. It's on the Queen's novelty ones. It's, the it's ones... got some great ones. I think he's got his, some of his best tunes on there, but I don't know the frankly Mr. Shank. Yeah, he's always got this, this tendency to sort of write music hall style songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's, that's a great one, that. Um, mm. so there you go. Alvis, John Merrick, Peter Kay, bloke with one arm, woman who sailed around the world, Kim Marsh. What I like about those two, number, n numbers four and five, he had, doesn't even know their names. Yeah. I'm hoping he'll just write on the invitation, <laughs> dear <laughs> bloke with one arm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Haven't you done a party? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's better than most people. I imagine most people, when they do it, if they go, uh, Nelson Mandela. I know, of course, yeah. Oh, I, I think I read an interview with Mick Hucknall where it was something like, who, who do you admire? Nelson Mandela. Brilliant. I was re I don't read papers when I'm in this country. When I was, uh, on holiday, I read one, and there was an article in there about Beckham meeting him. And the article was about how many people have met him. And I was thinking, we are the only three people that haven't met him. <laughs> Nelson Mandela, yeah. It, it's just like, uh, does he rent himself out? Do you know what I mean? It's like the back of the, you know, in the back of the stage when you can get a Caprice look-alike to wander yeah. around. They go, is that a look-alike? No, that's really him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 40 quid, he'll come to your party. <laughs> I think what it is is that he was locked up for so long. Yeah, he's, he's now just he's never home. home. <laughs> he's a social- He's just... like Salman Rushdie, he's running around. I've seen yeah. him twice. Yeah. He's <laughs> no, his house must be a tip. He's never yeah. in. God. Well, I think it is. If you if you if you stay indoors for a long time, yeah, you've got to get out of there. You've got to get, get out a bit stir crazy, I suppose. But he has met, he's met um, some of the great names in world events. Obviously, he's met the Spice Girls, <laughs> Adam Titchmarsh. <laughs> he's met him. Yeah, they did his garden, didn't they? Yeah, David yeah. Beckham. Yeah. Oh, that must have been great. But I mean, maybe we could hold out and never meet him. Yeah, that's this is like even if we get invited, one of them. Well, I go, no. Yeah. Not really. One no. of the, we're the we're the only three people who've never met yeah. Nelson Mandela. I'm not meeting him until I make sure he's definitely going straight. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? I don't don't well, really. I like to hang out with people who don't No, well, I wouldn't invite him to my ultimate dinner party in case, you know, the silverware went missing. Oh! Well, you don't know, he was inside for a long time. You know, they pick up things in, the, in these places. <laughs> you can pick stuff up. It's usually Carl that comes out with those sort of things. Carl, what do you think of that? Well, Nelson not having him around because he's nicking. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's back out now. Let's back out now while we're ahead. Be good right. in, uh, Celebrity Big Brother. Yeah. Being used to being locked up and that. <laughs> <laughs> we could, <wouldn't> we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started something. I couldn't finish. Yeah. Let's Absolutely. should we play another record or should we talk about some uh, um on a lighter note, Muffy the hamster <laughs> had a narrow escape <laughs> with a <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> play a song. Let's have a rock oh, oh, God. Martina Topley Bird, need one. Alright, XFM 104.9. Well, it's that time. It's getting exciting. We've got Rockbusters results, but before that, a little bit of monkey news with. Oh! Chimpanzee that! Monkey news! <laughs> Carl Pilkerton. Brilliant. Nice to have. I haven't read that for a couple of weeks. Go on then. Alright, so, uh. Is that this little monkey? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh. He lives in Morocco. Right, you, I'll just warn you now, you, you're on thin ice from last time, okay? So, make sure. Is this real? It's been Don't say anything stupid. Think about it. As you're saying it, think to yourself, oh, is that true? Do monkeys do that? Do they think like that? So, go on then. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so there's this ma magician in Morocco, right? Mm -hmm. Got a little monkey working, working with him, mm -hmm. right? Um, the way it used to work, uh, magician used to do his thing on stage, mm -hmm. do a little bit of magic, people loved it. Yeah. Then the monkey came out, had a little cap, walked around the crowd and stuff, uh, got the money, had a good little team thing going on, right? Yeah. So anyway, the monkey's name was 86. Right. Because back then there was so mi many monkeys, it was like, oh, what names, do you know what I mean, what names yeah, do you use, what do you do? So yeah. they just like, named yeah. them, yeah. right? So this, this little monkey- Well, he had, he had 86 mon other monkeys. What? 
No, no, no. It's just that because a lot of monkeys were sort of working back then, helping magicians out, you know, doing bits and pieces, busking, what have you. Just well, Rick, you know how there's so well, many... Why would there be a confusion with that? If he only had one monkey, where's the confusion? People would go, oh, I'm not gonna go and see that, I wanna see 86, he's the better monkey. Do you know what I mean? What does it matter? I don't what... know what you mean. Well, why do they need... Wh 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 where was the confusion? With people going to the circus and going, what monkey are you gonna see tonight? I don't know. It's, it wasn't a billing, was it, with a monkey? But Rick, you, it's just the same with humans. You know, there's so many humans now that we can't give them names anymore. Yeah, they exactly. Have numbers. Exactly. Yeah, there's so many humans. You know, with five billion people, they, we can't give them names. It's yeah. impossible. But you know, with a few monkeys anyway, working. Anyway, number twenty-two. Go on. So anyway, so uh, there he is. Eighty-six. Eighty-six. Uh -huh. With his hat. With his hat, walking around, getting the money. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the magician, sort of, uh, you know, thinking about moving on. Because in Morocco, he'd sort of done all the tourist traps. Sure. So he had a word with the monkey, he said, how about we, uh... <laughs> See? No, let him continue. Think. He let, let him continue. He didn't have a word with the monkey. Let him continue. So what do you think about going over to Spain? Yes. <laughs> sure. So, uh, the monkey was in agreement? So he said, oh, go on then. Right, so, uh, so they get in the car, <laughs> and, uh, like the magician knew he'd have a bit of a problem on his hands because you're not meant to take monkeys out of the country. Yeah. Right? So he thought, right, what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll get a car, right? Right. Uh, stick the monkey in a boot, right? Uh, get on the boat and hopefully sort of, you know, stick it in, a, in some luggage and what have you. Yeah. We'll be over there, we'll be earning big money, sure. everything's gonna be great, so the monkey's like, brilliant. So they, they get in the car, they're on the way to the, uh, to the boat, and uh, pull over at a petrol station. Uh -huh. And uh, just before filling it up, he opens up the boot and he goes, Yeah, all right, and then it's like, Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, so <laughs> of he, leaves, he, does. he leaves the boot open so he can breathe and get a bit of fresh air whilst uh -huh. he's filling up. Goes in to pay the money. Yep. Pays the money, he goes, uh, I'm just paying for the. Right, uh, this monkey is not going to drive away in that car, <laughs> or we're never doing this feature again. <laughs> Carl, what happens? What's, num what's number 86 up to? So... <laughs> 86. <laughs> so, uh... That's the ending, isn't it? That's the story. Come on, let, let Carl right, finish the story. Be, brilliant, be. brilliant, brilliant. You're gonna love it. Right, so he's in the petrol station, and he's going, right, I'll pay for, uh, Pump 4. And the fellow says, what are you talking P about? Pump, pump 4, four? <laughs> isn't that a monkey? No. <laughs> sometimes I use numbers for monkeys, sometimes <laughs> yeah. I use... No, I mean Pump 4. Sure. Yeah, so he says, what are you talking about? There's no car at Pump 4. Right. <laughs> Keep going. You. Sticks his head out of the door. Yeah. The monkey's given it some. Uh, went over to Spain on its own. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know what to do. Um, well, hang on, let's just, let's just get a couple of the facts right here. Well, what do you mean, couple of the facts? Right, there are no facts. So, it number 86, number, number 86, 86 drove, he drove to Spain. You are, t uh, honestly, Carl, I, d you must know. It was an automatic. Right, how Carl, did he, how you did must he... know that is shit. There is no way a monkey <laughs> That's the thing with it. He gets stopped at customs. It's mental. How would he get through customs, Carl? Got, he got a passport? No, he was sneaking about because he didn't have a passport. So he parked and then snuck through. Do you want the facts? Let me see it. Well, I'll examine this, Rick, and we'll play a record. Play a record, uh, because a I can't, that's, that's, that's nearly as bad as the armed robbery. Right, go on. Yeah. Play a record. You mean better suede? Yeah. Stay yeah. together. My favourite. One of the 86's favourites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant. My favourite suede track. No, stay together. XFM. Well, nearly time to go. But, uh, before we do, a little bit of rockbuster results. Just checking some of the answers, Rick, and it seems that an awful lot of people have got it right. Go on then. Tell us them again then. Remind us of them before you give us the answers. Alright, Rockbusters number one was like this. It was a custom. We're stopping monkey news, by the way. Until you start getting some credible ones. Because it because that's ridi it's ridiculous. Mm. It's not true. No, it seems seems mad. But no, it's but it's it's really internet again. So anyone anyone can go online, download that story. It's insubstantial. It, 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 it's get ones get ones from journals or where the, the source is quoted. Okay, or, or yeah, we're not interested. Or we're not, we're not. Well, you don't. Mm. Okay, so that's same with so, uh, on thin ice. We've we've pulled this once. We've pulled rock, but we suspended it once, mm. and you came back again. So it's. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So go on then. Right, so Rockbusters, uh, Rockbusters number one was about a customer who wanted some paint, wanted to darken up a room, the shop assistant knew what to do. What did she do? The initials were CB, Seller Black, right? Seller Black. 
sell us on you black You see, paint? I thought Scylla black, because it's CB, and I thought, well, it can't be, because it's not Scylla. It's not sell her black. Cryptic, it's still cryptic though, isn't it? No, no, cryptic doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. Uh, they all <laughs> got it. They all got it anyway, so... It's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, second one. It would be alright if the reds weren't that big. Right? Right. The initials uh, are uh, SF. Well, well uh, one of my favourite bands, yeah. Yeah. The, the smaller faces, isn't yeah. it? Small that, faces. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Okay, go on then. Uh, and the final one, uh, Chanel, I've got another perfume out. Right. I'll just say, we've had an email from one of our, uh, listeners who said, if this turns out to be New Order, he's never listening to XFM again. Well, what's, what's the, the clue again? Chanel, I've, I've got another perfume out. N new Order. Right, well that's another listener goal. What do you mean? There's not a group called New Odor. No, it's, it's cryptic. No, it's, it's not- cryptic. that doesn't mean cryptic! Wrong doesn't mean cryptic! It's like saying what animal I'm thinking of. Frog. It- 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 that doesn't mean cryptic. Sell her black. What artist is that? Small faces works. Just about. If I say what animal I'm thinking of, what, what, what am I Monkey. Thinking? Well, there you go then. <laughs> so- so it does work. Play a record. <laughs> right? Play a record. So, who's a winner? Ah, yes. Now, I'm gonna give it to, um, uh, someone who emailed in with the correct answer, <laughs> and he, his name is Steve Martin. <laughs> really? And I'm giving it to, I don't know if you've noticed over the last few weeks, I've been giving the prize to people with just a kooky element to them, you know, if they well, got people a, to start a sending name. their name in, like, um, uh, Barry Bumpfroyd. Well, don't worry, cause I can spot if it's a, if it's a fake comedy name. Or what was that it, last one we laughed at? I can't remember, I think it was Gerald something. Yeah, it was. It was just like Gerald Smethurst no, or what's something. It, what's it? Uh, Preston? Gerald, Gerald Preston. Preston. Yeah, Why is that a funny name? Gerald. Jerry Preston, the great guy. But Gerald some Preston, reason, we laughed at that. He caught me attention. So uh, this week, Steve Martin's caught my attention. <laughs> right. Yeah. When was the last time Steve Martin made you laugh? This Steve Martin? Or <laughs> 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 um, Dickers has not uh, been- Yeah, we've had no correspondence from, from Dickie Anderson for some time, which uh, saddens me. Little Dickmeister General, what is he doing yeah, out there? Has he got- what, he's got like, he's got something better to do? Mm. Mm. Ridiculous. Yeah. Pathetic, right, well, well that's, so that's the end, eh? We've got the last song, so is there anything- It's the end, it's the end of Rockbusters, and it's the end of Monkey News. Monkey News will give you one more go for it, and it's gotta be credible, it's gotta be real, it's gotta be true. We need to see your sources, it needs to be yeah. corroborated. Okay. Rockbusters, they've got to be real band names. New Odor. <laughs> <laughs> New odor. <laughs> New odor. Just anything. Just brilliant. Well, well done to Steve. He got them all. So, so is that it then? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, uh, Cheers. I've enjoyed that. I hope your back's better, Rick. Yeah. And uh, Carl, I hope you um, buck up your ideas. <laughs> your brain's better. Yeah. <laughs> got something interesting about a brain. We'll can talk about it next no, week. No, tell it now. No, I'll- Quickly, what is it? No, I'll, I'll leave it. Oh, well, that's a hook. Like, people will be going for a week. Oh, well, what things have a girl's brain? Was it a brain that drove a motorbike? <laughs> Just oh. to Switzerland? <laughs> You've heard it. <laughs> well, I know that must be some people's favourite record, Steve. Well, it's only one of mine. Thunder Road. Bruce Springsteen. I wouldn't hear a bad word said against the boss. A lot no. of people dismiss him, as you said in the past, as mm. being some kind of stadium rocker, but you can't listen to Will a song you? like that and not be moved. Surely, Carl. Yeah, it's alright, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> A passionate man. Yeah. What? So, Carl. No, 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 it's right. So, oh, no, certain songs were like that. Was that was all right? It didn't sound mm. anything. If it wasn't Bruce Springsteen, if someone new came out sounding like that, I'd, I'd go, yeah, it's all right. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're a regular yeah. Simon Cowell, aren't you? <laughs> I, I don't know if I like music as much as I used to now. That's what happens when you work in it, isn't it? Because there was yeah. a, a, Danny Minogue was on the telly. In the Is week. it like when you work in a sweet factory and you, you don't you don't nick the Mars bars after a couple of months? Yeah. Yeah. Danny Min Minogue was on the telly in the week, right? Yeah. And, uh, she was doing, doing a medley. Yeah. Why do people do them? Well, to try do and get all the hits. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean, yeah. But who's that busy that they haven't got time to listen to a full album or... <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like, like, it's like a meal in pill form. Yeah. Well, I like most of Danny Minogue's hits, but I don't like the whole song. Yeah, exactly. So, if you want to just, like, pop the best bits down, 30 seconds, Put them all together. Yeah. Well, I've got, um, a Stars on 45 record from the 70s. Do you remember those? Yeah. Stars on 45. But it's that, like you say, it was, I mean, this one had a kind of, it would be a snatch of Stevie Wonder, followed by the MASH theme, 
followed by Leila, just the intro. <laughs> it was sort of, it's yeah. not music. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. Well, we do a bit of that, don't we? That's what DJing is, isn't it? It's a bit of everything. But we play the whole song, don't we, often? Mm. Yeah, we're, we're better, aren't we, Carl? Oh. So, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, do you want to look at the list? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's got described looks. That's our list we've put. So, this is a very amusing sort of link about describing your look. I don't know. What's this? I don't remember this. No, I just was thinking, like, uh, you know, everyone's got an idea in their head, right? Of well, what well. <laughs> 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 Careful, Carl. <laughs> don't open yourself up to criticism. Go on, yeah. Everyone's got an idea. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got an idea of, uh, what they look like and stuff. Uh, if someone wanted to know <laughs> what, what I look like or what Ricky looked like or what you look like, Steve, if that, yeah. Right? Um, what would you use to describe yourself? Do you know what I mean? Words. Not really. I don't understand. What, what do you mean? Well, like, uh... Someone who doesn't know us, we've got to describe, and we've... Well, what's what's the game? To hopefully get some sort of interpersonal language going, so you know they've got the same image as you, to well, a certain yeah, I, extent. I'm just thinking, if I was to meet Steve in a restaurant... Yeah. Right, I'd... I'd, I'd Nothing I'd, untoward going on, we're just hanging out. We're no, just having a chat, just yeah, having sure. a normal night out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Who's paying? Because, I mean, <laughs> is it expensive? Go, go Dutch, go Dutch, go Dutch. <laughs> I mean... Right, so... I, I say to you, I'll, I'll see you at eight, right, in yeah. this, in this restaurant. I turn up at the door, it's a bit of a posh place, mm -hmm. right. Uh, there's, uh, Steve Merchant in. Yeah. And the waiter sort of goes, I, I, I don't know, what does he look like, right. And, uh. Where's he from? Just a f little French fella. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, what does he look like? So I'd, the th thing I'd pick up on first, tall, tall lad. Tall, yeah. And then he goes, oh, well, you know, we've got lots of tall people in, right. Mm. And I go, big eyes? Big eyes? Yeah. <laughs> and then he'd go, yeah, he's over there. I'll be honest with you. I mean, you can have dinner and you can buy me dinner. I'm not sure you're going to get anywhere with me. If you're slagging me off. No, no, I'm not slagging you off, though. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just yeah. using, using what comes to mind when and I can it, you. And can I just, can, Tall can and I, big eyes. Can I assume that they know, like, could I say, like, easiest for me, would I'd say, uh, looks like Reg Varney from On The Buses. Would they understand that? Can I use sort of, like, yeah, he's, he's, he's thirty odd. This this waiter, so he'll. Yeah, so he'll I go, go right, oh yeah. yes, it's, it's a Reg Varney is sitting over there. Yeah, so yeah, he went right. German towards the end. <laughs> See, yeah. I describe you more, Rick. I think as, I would imagine, I'd say, have you ever seen that Johnny Vegas on the telly? <laughs> yeah. Imagine he was inflatable and he just let out a little bit of air. <laughs> right, well, at least that's, that's nice. what Ricky would look as like, as opposed to like you know, p p pumping harder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, that's quite. Carl, I'd describe as. You know those little red monkeys that you see on wildlife programs? They're, little, they're in the trees and they scream when they see a, a, a <laughs> leopard or something. <laughs> I think so. Shave that. Just right. shave one of those little red monkeys and put some sort of, um, you know, old sort of Manchester gear on it, maybe. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean? A, yeah, yeah, a, a, yeah, yeah. Banana rack and some baggy jeans. I'd right. like to see how the waiter would react to that. Yeah. He's got a picture of a monkey, then he's got a picture of it shaved. <laughs> So he's got no hair, he's and going, dressed like some kind of Manx scally. There go, he's, he's over there. Yeah, he's over there, Carl's over there. That's what I do. Brilliant. So, uh, now, now coming up the verve, after that, an amusing link about gay handkerchiefs. <laughs> really? Looking forward to this. Lucky man. By the Verve on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl, what's the problem with gay ankies? You were, you played Bruce Springsteen last week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you said he had, uh, got a load of trouble on his hands when he had, uh, had a hanky in his back pocket. Do I say that on air or? Off well, we were just saying that famously on the cover of the Born to Run, uh, Born in the USA album, it's just him, isn't it, with, uh, just the, the, his backside, basically, with, yeah. uh, a red handkerchief. I wasn't looking. Well, I just... Uh, well, I, well, I did it for research purposes. <laughs> for this amazing link. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, he had a red handkerchief, I think, in his right-hand pocket, and apparently yeah, that signifies, uh, homosexuality, apparently, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, I thought it was which way you take, I don't know. These are those myths, aren't they? Right, yeah, well, exactly, I don't even know if, if oh, this is... No, well, I, I read up about it. Okay. Right. Just research. And, uh, it's all sort of, you know, you've got all different coloured ankies. Are they? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, it depends what pocket you put it in. Yeah. As well. So you've got, like, the different colours, yeah. different pockets. Yeah. And, uh, Sorry, how many variations are there? Different pockets is what? 
What, you've got, like, your, your back pocket, your right back pocket. But well, what do they mean? Pocket. What do you mean? Well, what do they signify? You can't just tell us they signify something. What do they signify? Well, some, some stuff that we don't really want to talk about, to be honest. What? Sort of, uh, stuff that gays are into. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, so what do you mean? Uh, uh, Barbara Streisand records. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eurovision. No, like, a couple of things that were there that I know we can mention. He said something about. I love that. What he thinks he can't mention, yeah, I love yeah. it. Decency. What is this? 1956. No, no, no. But I mean, it isn't just you know having it away. It's like, <laughs> having it away. I love him. No, having it away. <laughs> you get up to some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he didn't want to offend, but he's yeah. offended a lot more people yeah, yeah. by saying they get up to some weird stuff. Right. In your opinion. Yeah. What do you mean? No, like, what, no but don't, 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 if it's, if, if there is something that I don't know about that it's like you can't say on the radio. Yeah, I don't, if, I'd, I'd rather not. But what do you mean weird stuff? Well, one of them, right, if you've got a red anky, right? <laughs> yeah. In your right pocket. Like yeah. Bruce. Yeah. That's that exactly what, what Bruce had, yeah. Right, well apparently then, Bruce is an armpit freak. An, ar an armpit <laughs> freak? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> really? No. No. But Carl. that's very specific. Carl. Seriously. Well, what, what, okay, right, okay. What else is there then? Sorry, is there some kind of homosexual body that sat down and, and came up with this at some point? Well, you said we've got, well, this is getting crazy. You've got, like, a blue handkerchief in your top breast pocket. I don't know what that means. You need to sit down and some kind of summit, figure out what it means. Yeah. It, it, it's just that you're not, you're not free from it either. So if you were to go in, in, in like, a gay bar, yeah. which, you know, you might do if you're straight anyway, because they're, you know, good, good places, I think. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, you can't actually go in there if you've got a cold, because every coloured hanky represents something. Right. So if I was to go in and a bit of a, a sniffle, sniffle, I could get into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> right. Well, for that, Marks and Spencer's white linen hanky, that means you like to be tied up and whipped. Yeah. There was another one, um, Armpit freak we've covered. Uh, yeah, armpit freak is done. <laughs> we've covered. An armpit freak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So, I know. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. But there was just one other thing, like a blue and white one, <laughs> is if you're into sailors. To so sailors. Like, yeah. If you have a little blue and white anky, that's in your left pocket. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, blue and white equals sailor. That's so it. I wanted to ask you something. You know, um, but again, we got to be careful here. You know when um, uh, you wouldn't leave the the building that was on fire because. Um, uh, you were, you were standing proud. Hang on, we need this, some people know, don't know what you're talking about. You, Carl, you were on holiday. Yeah. You, on holiday in Tenerife, right? Yeah. You, you'd had a moment of intimacy with your girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. A knock on the door, you had to stop and get up, and you peeked around the door, it was a fireman saying get out, but you didn't want to leave because you had a, yeah. Yeah. It was a little, yeah. yeah. But, what I, what I, what I don't understand is you maintained that while looking at a, a Spanish man dressed as a fireman. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? Is that, is that the fact? You maintained, I'm sorry to say, you, you maintained a, um, you know, arousal whilst looking at a gentleman dressed yeah, as a fireman. No, 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 is, is that, these are the facts and they are undisputed. What, did but you I'm, maintain- I'm not, a, I'm that, not a machine that, though. Do you know what I mean? I can't turn it on, turn it off. Right. But, well, yeah, but, but, but you were talking, I, I just thought you were talking to a fireman. You'd have probably lost it. I don't know, but you didn't. No, you, but the you... other thing was, I mean, <laughs> I was talking to Suzanne about it again, right? Yeah. She said, what are you talking about that for? Right. I said, oh, it just cropped up, right? Yeah. And, uh, the dilemma was, you see, I wanted to try and make sure that it was a proper fire because that was the last condom we had, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it would have ruined the night. So yeah. I was, I, I didn't want to like, it was like, you know, well, what's going on? Is yeah. it, is, is, is it, do we yeah. need to get out? Yeah. Is it a proper fire? Yeah. And you, uh, and, t and talking so, to this man in uniform, was he, what, what did he look like? Was he quite, was he good looking? Did he look like Ricky Martin, so? Was he good looking? Was he good looking in his uniform? I, I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember. Did he have a moustache? <laughs> Better play a record, haven't we? Oh. Is this bringing it back? What? You look uncomfortable. What, what? Did you just switch this on with your hands? <laughs> Flaming Lips, and that's Fight Test. Lips and Test. <laughs> lips Test. On M. <laughs> we were talking there about uh, homosexual people, and I'm sure we'll move on to other topics. Um, but I just mentioned, I was talking to a friend of mine in the week, uh, Rufus, and he overheard uh, 
he pieced together the, you know, sometimes if you overhear a conversation, you can piece together what's going on. Yeah. You know, and um, it sort of transpired from what he could, what he could make out that one gay guy had just realised or just found out that his gay boyfriend had um, maybe been having an affair and was on the phone um, and had called this person, the third party. So the other one was crying, wasn't it? The other one was crying in tears. Obviously, they just had a, a big argument about it. And all he heard on the phone was, was the guy saying, in a very kind of earnest tones, I'm going to do everything in my power to destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just like to think what that was. No, what was he? You know, no more guest list to G A Y. G A Y. I am going to uh, slash your diesel jeans with a pair of scissors. <laughs> oh, um, well, if they're listening now, I know. I mean, it's probably an emotional time for them. Yeah, but they probably don't think we're talking about them. No, not those. It's people. probably happened quite a lot this week. <laughs> well, possibly. I, uh, I, I do know quite a lot of. Uh, Gay people, mm -hmm. right? But they do, um, they do jump about when it comes to partners. Right. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> no, le le freedom of speech. Yeah. Let the man speak. No, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's quite, it, you know, they don't, you know, if they get bored, they move on on that. <laughs> which is fair enough, but they do, uh, and they go, piece this together. And they go out late, don't they? Well, we've covered that, haven't we? We've done that. Yeah. How have you? So you're, you. Do you know how we covered that? His favourite record is "Killing a Georgie," and he went at the end of the record. He went see, but how late was it? Yeah. If he'd have been sort of going out at a decent <laughs> time, that wouldn't have happened. Do you know what I mean, Steve? Though? They're yeah. always getting ready to go out about half past one in the morning. <laughs> 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 you're asking for trouble. Yes. <laughs> Incidentally, I should just point out. That, um, oh dear. That, uh, we've had an email, I've lost it here now, but anyway, it was one of our listeners saying that we've slightly embarrassed ourselves because, of course, Bruce Springsteen on the cover of uh, Born in the USA doesn't actually have a handkerchief in his back pocket, it's actually a red baseball cap. Right. So, um, well, I don't what? know if that also counts, I don't know if it's any kind of What does that mean, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, into heads, into little round heads. Aww. If Bruce Springsteen, and he's obviously not gay, but if he said, alright, Carl, um, just you know, little cuddle. Would you turn down Bruce Springsteen? Yeah. Well, no. Why? Just like, all right, mate. You, know, you, you hug your mates, don't you? If Bruce said, all right, Carl, I like your show. Love your head. Little cuddle. Little cuddle. A mate's cuddle. No, I, I just. Oh, what you, I say, what you're doing? <laughs> you just say, look, we're yeah. a couple of old friends. Bruce Springsteen, I've got all those great songs. I like what you're doing. Let's cuddle. Let's have a little. All right, the mate. The only thing is, right, Steve. Right. Do you know how he likes to squeeze me? Ad. Oh, yeah. If you like to squeeze me, Ad. Yeah. We had a, an old mate over this week. He's got a similar shaped head, apparently, as mine. Yeah. Right. He's hardly gave me a call or anything because he's he was busy with this other fella's head. <laughs> oh, you feel ba quite bad about that. Oh. Is he's a better head to squeeze? I'll tell you why. Because he shaves his every day. Right. He's got the same sort of hair problem with him. Shaves every day. Right. A problem. No, no. And it's because he's had it several times. Like Carl's a sort of comes through a bit long at the side sometimes, it looks a bit unkempt towards the end of the week. I've, I've seen there's a little, there's a couple of little pimples under there. Mm -hmm. Right, I really have to do it, just like, get there, slap my hands on it, squeeze it. With this one, I can sort of get my thing, do you know what I mean? I get my, mm, really, you know. You like, you like a gay, the way you jump about from head to head. That's <laughs> my <laughs> record, you like just a saying. gay. Just saying. <laughs> right, still coming up then. <laughs> what have we got coming what up? We got Rockbusters. Oh, uh, is any monkey news this week? It's been a problem. Why? It's not much has been going on this week. What, in the I monkey mean, world? In the monkey world. I don't know if they've caught on to the fact that they're getting coverage. <laughs> <laughs> they're keeping yeah, their behaviour uh, hush hush. Being a bit careful, but uh, I found something. Have you got uh, Rockbusters? Is it, uh, it's your last chance, don't forget. Is it good, these? Got Rockbusters, got some good prizes. Steve will look at them in a bit. Uh -huh. yeah. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Oh. Have you got a Cheeky Freak of the Week? Got that. Got yeah. That. Uh, so what deformity is it this week that you're ridiculing? <laughs> well, Out of Time by Blur on XFM 104.9. Alright, Carl, what are you thinking? Just thinking about stuff. <laughs> You're an enigma, aren't you? Yeah. I would just say hello to, we've got an American listener apparently, Karen. 
Like, well, it's a shot. I thought that might fill up four seconds. We're not struggling, are we? No, no, I mean, no, no. We well, it, just consult the list of uh, on, Dr. Fox-esque amusing Wife, topics. Wet Ones, Screwball, Shop Train, Cheeky Freak, Ronan. Ronan What's what that? was Ronan? Ronan. I just was, uh, telling you the other day about, you know, that, that song that he does? Uh, Loving Every Day as If It's Your Last one. Right. Yeah. I'm just thinking he's saying that as if like, oh, I'll have a good day. But I reckon if if you knew it was your last day, I don't think you'd be in the mood to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what, that's true. But well, yeah. I but, think the point is that it's living a day like it's your last. So God, God, imagine if it was every day like the last. Right, let's go mental. And the good thing is we've got tomorrow. So he's got the best of both worlds. That's what Ronan's saying. He's saying cram it in because it might be the last. I think it's more like it's the not knowing, isn't it? Live every day. See, I'd be, see, I'd actually be happy if, if I never knew mm. when I was going to die, yeah. uh, and I was definitely going to die in my sleep, what a brilliant life you'd have. Do you know what I mean? What, so you don't get an illness, but one night you go to bed and- I know that I, if you knew you were going to die in the sleep and never knew when you were going to die, it wouldn't matter if it was tomorrow or thirty years time. It wouldn't matter, would it? Yeah. I've lost you, haven't I? I've lost you somewhere. I can't, I can't, that was, see, I thought that was pretty easy, all that. I said, die in your sleep and not know when you died. There was no high concept there. No, no sleight of hand linguistically. What, where did I lose you? I think you lost him on sleight of hand linguistically. <laughs> Just then. <laughs> you lost him again. Yeah, I, I think that's the way I'd, I'd want to go. I don't want, I don't want to know about it. That's why I don't go to the doctors or anything. <laughs> that's a good, Brilliant. That's a good approach. And he, 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 he do you remember him saying, he, uh, He's gonna die of cancer because he uh, doesn't check his balls. He doesn't like the feel. Of course, of course. What do they feel like? Your balls? Like a like a wet chamois leather. <laughs> <laughs> With two marbles, two kumquats in a wet chamois leather. No, but I just. Uh, Why are they wet? Sweaty. No, they're not. I'm just saying smooth. Are they smooth? Yeah, because a, a, a chamois leather's smoother when it's. Do you shave them? No, I don't. In case, a, in case a fireman pops around, you want to look your best. It looks <laughs> like your head. You know, a fireman pops around, there you are, and he goes, oh, nice, smooth. So you never go to the doctors? What, even- I don't, I don't like it. But if you found some bubos under your arm or something, you- I'd wait for a bit, and I'd, I'd say to Susan, what do you think of that? <laughs> Just see if it develops into plague. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you know, don't you? you know, Old bandages <laughs> around your head, <laughs> yeah. and a bell. Yeah. Susan, yeah. where you are, can you get me a bell? <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. I don't- you know, I there was this kid at our school we took the piss out of for the basically the rest of his time there because when <laughs> he was about eleven, someone said, "How oh, would you want to die?" Right? We do the drowning fire or that. He said, "I want to die of old age in my mother's arms." <laughs> <laughs> How old was he? <laughs> like eleven, <laughs> losing. <laughs> Oh, my mother's arms! I know. What, getting off with her? What's that mean? Die of old age! You know, that's old cheek! <laughs> Brilliant! I want to die of old age with my nan and my mum! <laughs> yeah, all in the same bed. Oh, oh dear. So, if you, if you, if, if it was the last day, if you had w one day to live, okay, <laughs> yeah. what would you do with your day? Now, let's assume that, um, it's, you're not, you're not in a state of ill health. There's not much you can do, though, It's just the end of the world and you've got What do you mean there's not much you can do? I mean, that's what we're asking you. It's the last day of your life. It depends, doesn't it? If, if, if we're all in the same boat, if someone says, oh, unlucky, um, without bitterness, like, oh, we accidentally exposed you to some radiation, boys, and you've got a day, or if it was like, there's a meteor coming this way, we're all in the same boat, it, I think it would be different. It depends whether it's you yeah, make and, no and the rest of the world. No? I'd do the same thing. I'd steal a car and go joyriding. <laughs> but, like, go mental. I'd be smashing stuff, I'd be knocking people over for a laugh. I'd yeah. be going crazy. It'd be like Grand Theft Auto. Right. Okay. <laughs> it would be extraordinary. Brilliant. Driving through parks. That's what I, that's what I did in the getaway. Yeah. I tried to play it seriously and with about ten minutes I was just going around areas I knew yeah, trying to exactly. knock people over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I'd want to do that much. Seriously. You can watch telly because you, you might not know how the thing ends. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Free waste yeah. of time. You could watch 24, couldn't you? If you had a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On DVD. Do that then, do that. <laughs> do that, yeah. Well, but I mean, let's be honest, you, let's say you, you know, you can take all the money out of your bank account, you can fly anywhere in the world, you can do whatever you want. Well, you not a long got, flight, you could. Well, no, but you've got your girlfriend. Australia girl you wouldn't make it, would you? No. Um, oh, why, why, you, why, why, why wouldn't you go to the monkey sanctuary down in Cornwall and just 
going around cuddling as many monkeys as you can. I'm gonna tell you something now. Go on. Go in there next week. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Taking my mum and dad away, cos like Suzanne's mum and dad are <laughs> What, you're donating them? them? <laughs> Most people put them in a home. What are you gonna say? How you monkey sanctuary is cheaper? Second, second them down, uh, yeah, taking them down to Cornwall. Oh god, uh, I thought you said you'd never go away with parents again. No, no, but that was Suzanne's mum and dad. Oh, this is, is this to get so, even or something? So, yeah, so we'll do that and then, then we'll can it, then. <laughs> <laughs> that was your outing. Oh. You're phoning both sets of parents and it goes, right, you won't be seeing us ever again on holiday. We've taken you away, we've taken you away. Be careful that the monkey people don't buy you off your parents. Yeah. You and know, don't make sure, monkey. make sure they don't leave any of the monkey's food in the telephone box, cos dad'll have that away. Yeah. No. I was talking to him about that the other day. About <laughs> the, uh, nicking in phone boxes. And he, uh, Should we just me. explain that to well, They live in a small village in Wales and, uh, it's like one sort of utility store and when it's shut, they leave you shopping in the telephone box across the road and Carl's dad <laughs> found out about this and goes and helps himself. Yeah, to other people shopping. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, go on. And, uh, I was talking to him about that, saying, you know, have you picked up any surprises in the phone box? And, uh, said, no, no, we were talking about other stuff he used to do. Uh, one of them used to be going in this supermarket, right, in Manchester. Yeah. Needs a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Go in, take a new pair off the shelf, pop them on, leave his old ones there. Really? And walk out again. Yeah, brilliant. Floor and then you'd go in after and buy his old ones back like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd go in the next day. They <laughs> <laughs> look nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad's got a pair just like that. <laughs> I've always wanted to. Can I have those? <laughs>
Right. The Jamaican fella spots a boat. Yeah, that's right, yeah. All right. Initial there, D. 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 Okay. D. D. All right. And, uh, the last one, uh, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, you own it. Right? Interesting. I, I've just got number two. Right, uh, do you want- Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right, The third on. one, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, you own it. And what's right? the initial? E. All of them again, quickly. Right, so the first one, that fella likes sucking on iron. That's M. Second one, Jamaican fella spots a boat. Right? That's, uh, D. And the last one, do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, it's, you know, you own it. Right? That's it embellishes it, like it's a whole story yeah. by the end. That's, right. uh, that's E. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Please email, email only. Email only. We cannot be bothered to answer the phone. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. White Excellent. Red Hot Chili Peppers, universally speaking, on XFM 104.9. Well, halfway through, Steve. I'm Ricky Gervais. That was, uh, Mr. Merchant I was referring to there as Steve. <laughs> Familiar. <laughs> Friends by now. Five years in the making. <laughs> Carl Pilkington, I've known him a year and a half, but he's a good friend as well. Alright. Alright, <laughs> XFM, where paths cross. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh, so, uh, any interesting things to talk about, guys? Dr. Fox style? Uh, any amusing observations? Have you taken a sideways look at the, the week's news or anything, Carl? What have you? I'll tell you what I did here last night. Go on, go on. Um, Five Live. Yeah. They do like a, a review of what's gone on in the week. We've been busy in the week, I haven't always got time to, to follow what's going on. In the world, sure. Mm. Uh, someone's made a chicken with teeth. <laughs> 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 what, for what reason? <laughs> Don't know, because they can. <laughs> Just because they can. And, uh, like, they, they so it chooses food. Yeah. It had, uh, they had a few guests saying, well, you know, where will it all end? Uh, so are you, are you sure you weren't watching a Wallace and Gromit video? No, s seriously. Right. It's, uh, they're doing it. They're a chicken with teeth. Why would they spend millions researching? What do you mean they've got a chicken with teeth? What the f what do you mean there's a chicken with teeth? Sounds mad, doesn't it? What are you talking about, Carl? That's what they've done. Do you know, like. Why? I don't know. He's just messing with science and that, and that's what the people were saying. What? Why are you doing that? Do you know what I mean? Where? Where will it start? What's the next thing? They did the sheep. They did the cloning. Right. The rat with an ear on its back. Did that. Um. Can they have a mouse, uh, cat coming? Can't yeah. it? Uh, what else were they talking about? They were talking about that sheep again. That that cloning one. Yeah, Dolly the sheep. Do you think it's that clever? Well, they, 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 they do all look the same anyway. What's it got to do with its cleverness? The being cloned. Being cloned, is it, is it, do you think that's a good thing? He doesn't think it's that impressive because they look the same anyway. Right. They could have just put any sheep in there and go, look, no. they're the same. Yeah. Brilliant. So there was a program, people were talking what about- What are you talking about, a chicken with teeth? That's, it was the latest news, it was like all about the war and that, and I was like, yeah, 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 and then it's a chicken with teeth, I said, hang on. Your ears perked up. Yeah, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't hear anything about the war, did you? That was like, they might have been speaking French, or just like whistles. What? And now, story about a chicken with teeth. Yeah. You stop washing maybe, up maybe there. Maybe someone, someone can let us know, you know. Oh, God, don't open the floodgates. No, but I'm just saying I don't know the full thing. They just of course you Surprise, don't. surprise. They just touched on it. Yeah. Anyway, other stuff I did do proper research on in the week. Go on. Uh, having, uh, testicles done. <laughs> having, your, having your testicles done? Yeah. What does that mean? Same magazine that was doing the hanky coverage. Uh, <laughs> right. And you know what all that's about. Um... <laughs> It was like a great magazine. How can we get him as a pundit on these new shows, like Newsnight, do you know what I mean, Sky, Sky News? There, wouldn't he? Just on there, just ask him what they think, wouldn't that be amazing? Is there a producer out there that would take a chance on Pilkington? It's Pilkington, Raggy Omar, Ian Hislop, and they, a panel of people, and they just ask, ask people. Yeah. So yeah. You, so you can have, you can have your testicles made bigger. Why would you want to do that? Well, that's what I was asking. What's the point? Well, the actual testicles, or do they just inflate your ball bag? Because you could do that, couldn't you? You could, uh, have some air injected so it was like a big, <sighs> so they'd look bigger, but they'd rattle around inside, wouldn't they? Make a little noise, wouldn't it, when you're at, <laughs> like a, <laughs> manacas. <laughs> like some kind of instrument. <laughs> yeah. 
Like what sort of on those African instruments? It's like a big sheep's bladder with yeah, little. There's Pedro on the Renacas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just, he just, yeah, yeah, just stripped to the strip to the waist. Yeah, <laughs> just dig yeah, out with his hanging out. Why, and then, why, when, why then when you sort of like people, the neighbours would think, what's he doing? He's 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 been playing those Renacas all night, and really you were, yeah, you know. <laughs> Why, why the mouse with the ear on its back, go and keep it down. <laughs> yeah, this is really <laughs> loud to me. <laughs> eh? Why, why, why would someone have that done then? Uh, you brought it up. Yeah, well, presumably so that they could draw a little funny face on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously. And you could let them down after the holiday, like you do a lilo. <laughs> exactly. <and> just <laughs> <let> them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, on holiday you're floating round, you know, like yeah. you're just in the sea. With your big instrumental manakas, right? Just floating <laughs> it. You're having a whale of a time for <laughs> people playing it as they go past. Exactly. All right, Carl. All right. Become yeah. a bit of a sort of local celebrity. Yeah, look, there's Carl with his floating manakas, like a big yeah. jellyfish, right? Yeah. And then the end of the holiday or Saturday. <laughs> if you've got a little pair of tight speedos, it'll be, it'll be like Jordan <laughs> walking around. <laughs> and then he's like. <laughs> just let him down when he comes Let the knackers down for the plane. Mm. Yeah. Because apparently they do, uh, they do get bigger, don't they, as you get older? When you're an old fella. No, I think they get lower. I think that's it, that testicles and breasts get lower. Is that purely gravity? I think so, yeah, probably stretching a bit, innit? So is it- is Wear the old, and tear. Is the old fellas who are walking about saying, oh, sick of these. <laughs> yeah, they don't tread on them. Well, that's you know, why old people have always got a little sit down, you know, yeah, for a yeah. meters. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick them in the socks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Or they can have a, I suppose you can have like a little ball lift, you can have a face lift, can't you? Have a little nip and tuck, put on, or probably a face lift would help, wouldn't it? Because that, if you pull oh, your yeah. face up. That's going to that, bring the skin it, up. Bring up a little bit, yeah. Don't go too far, you'll have a little knob as a tie. But you can, <laughs> you know, it, you can tighten stuff up. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Steve with his kipper tie. That's a lovely tie you've got there, Steve. <laughs> and you look so young. Yeah. <laughs> What's that little sack underneath it? That little brooch. <laughs> well, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Playing um. with your little manacas all night, Carl. So a chicken with teeth, and you can have your balls done. That's imagine. Imagine Kirsty Ward, whatever her name is, on Newsnight saying that. And now <laughs> two features of the yeah. week: the war in Iraq. Let's forget that. Who wants their knackers done? Look at this chicken. Careful, it bites. I think we should send this link to Dr. Fox and see if, <laughs> it, see if he thinks it's an improvement on what he heard during the show. Play record. Play yeah. record. Yeah, get this link, send it to Dr. Fox. He'll love it. Alright. Alright. Plus, he'd be offer, able to offer us some kind of medical explanation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Teenage fan club. Oh, brilliant. Love <laughs> One of Kurt Cobain's favourite bands, apparently, Teenage Fan Club, and that was the song Radio. He loved them. We've just had a, a, an email here. It says, apparently, the they created the chicken with the teeth in order to prove that DNA can be reverse stimulated. The theory being that if you can revert chickens to a state in which it has teeth, I don't know if it ever had teeth, you can alter someone's DNA to stop them going bold, Carl. Did that, does, did they mean that because birds came from reptiles that had teeth out crops and th they're changed into a beak or whatever mm -hmm. that they revert I, I don't understand they revert dna i mean there's not not quite enough science here to for me to be able to answer it in detail well, not for us maybe but i think carl's probably grasped it what do you think that means carl? <laughs> yeah what what does he say <laughs> <laughs> okay moving on <laughs> oh dear oh <sighs> life's too short what else is that you got a monkey news coming up soon um like i say it's been a struggle we'll 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 do that. We'll do, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Do you want to... Oh, definitely. Should we do Cheeky Freak we of the Week? Freak of the week? I can't wait. I've, I'll always do these. I'd start off with these. All right, well, let's have the jingle for Cheeky Freak of the Week. Oh, no. Do you remember it? No. I remember it. Oh. Uh, oh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Brilliant. Something like that? <laughs> I want some more, because that was slightly uh, half hour. Oh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Excellent. Right. This, uh, we're going back again. Yeah, 17th right. century. Uh, well, it was, it was 1829, right? Oh, I'm impressed. Um, yeah. Now, the problem is with Cheeky Freak of the Week, um... Not so much the week, is it, if you're going back to 1829? Well... Not even of the century. You haven't even done Cheeky Freak of the century. Mm. There's... What's the problem with Cheeky Freak of the Week? Just because... <laughs> Other than the sort of moral implications. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah! Well, last week, it was a fellow with two heads. Yeah. Mm. We've done Siamese Twins, it's Siamese Twins again. 
Oh, no, it was Siamese again. twins. It wasn't a fellow with two heads last week. It was Siamese twins, conjoined twins, sorry. They're two different people. Mm. This is what I'm telling you. But this is the problem. They're going to crop up quite a lot just because they've got double a chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please don't write in and complain. He knows not what he does. You understand, don't you? Uh, Carl will actually feature one day in this section. Yeah. So. Right, go right. on, well, Carl. We're, go we're going back to, uh, 1829. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh... All the way back there, to 1829. The retro conjoined twin link. <laughs> uh, a couple of guys set up a business, uh, they were called Chang and Ang. Oh, they're the first, that's why they were called Siamese twins, because they were, weren't, weren't, wasn't that what it was based on, those two, Chang and Ang? Was it? The original, yeah, that's why they're, they're called Siamese twins, because I think they were Siamese. So these are the first ones? Uh, well, not the first ones, but they're first the ones one. that got to fame, I think, and why people started calling them, the people started calling them conjoined twin Siamese twins. I mm. think I'm right there. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, the, the sort of, uh, set up business, sort of going around, uh, the US. Well, both of them. And Europe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what they used to do, people were amazed by it anyway. Yeah. People wanted to know how they get through life doing certain things. That, that you, that you think about, when you think about some of these twins, you think about, you know, how do you get through a day like that? Yeah. Right? Um, and the thing that cropped up the most with people was how they take a bath. So they used to go on tour around the US and Europe and, uh, sit in a bath, <laughs> have a, have a wash and that. Mm. And, uh. Did they ever wash each other by mistake? They go, oh, 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 that ends there. That ends there, like those things in supermarkets. They put <laughs> yeah. one of those down. We go, oh, 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 oh. What do you, you mean? You put that there. What do you mean? You know the things on the conveyor belt, the little the little dividers. Yeah, they but, wind me up those dividers. I sorry, I was a complete tangent, but I, for some reason, it's my own psychosis. But I get so annoyed if I'm in a supermarket. I've got my shop, and I'm just about to get served. And you can always see there are certain people who stand behind you getting edgy, itchy, worried that I'm not going to put the divider down to separate my shopping from theirs. It's like they're terrified that I'm somehow going to deliberately pay for their Sneaking shopping. Sneaking their onion. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get an onion. I'll have that. Mm. And it's just, but what annoys me is it's not so much that, obviously it's a practical thing. It's the fact that they get a little bit edgy. You can actually see certainly kind of, um, dare I say it, a certain breed of woman and a certain breed of fella will uh, just get a little bit itchy, a little bit edgy. And they just, they just look at you, you can just see them sweating, especially if they can't read. I just lean over and do it myself. Well, I know, but it's the thing is that it's like they almost feel that they, uh, they ought to wait for me to do it, as though somehow it's my obligation. And it just annoys, for some reason, it's, I know it's ludicrous, but it really annoys me. And I actually deliberately don't put the divider down just to see them sweat. I like the way that they're, that they're actually quite well made. There's some that are brass with like a yeah. felt bottom. Yeah. Like you really care, like a, a twig would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? But, uh, I just leave a slight gap. And then yeah. when it gets to the, when the woman's putting it through the, the tail or the guy, I just say, that's my stuff. Do you ever look at other people shopping and go, oh, I should have got that? Often. God, yeah. That's annoying. It's, I'll tell you what it is, it's the same thing, and again, it's my psychosis. When people, if you're on a bus or a train, and we're pulling into the stop, but there's a good, you know, kind of 35 seconds before we're actually going to come to a halt, they there. leap up, they get and they're first, straight yeah. by the door. Yeah. Like, but it's this fear that something, they're going to miss out. Oh my god, what if I fell over yeah, now and broke my ankle, I'd never get out. To be fair, I've never had that that, um, commuters worry, I've never commuted, but every second counts, doesn't it? Because you miss a train, it can make a difference of half an hour. So that's why commuters literally run to but, get their connections. But the thing is that with a bus, yeah. um, you, you know, there's often you'll be people who are sat right next to the exit will get up and stand up for a while, waiting to get out. It just, again, I'm I'll not saying what, it's not, it makes I'll perfect sense when to you've them. Got a day it's to my live, psychosis. They're gonna be mowed down in the streets. Like, <laughs> they will just gonna, be a few You're of the gonna people. be in a lovely Chrysler. Exactly. Yeah. Just, well, I will be going straight through a branch of Waitrose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> taking people out in the, in the, so in the aisle. we do not condone going through Waitrose in a Chrysler. <laughs> in a car. Now, it's Chang and Ang, they're in the bath, they're washing their own bits, they've got one of those dividers, right? They go, well, that's, that's definitely yours. I marked mine. That's definitely mine. What? Don't wash that, Chang. I won't, I wouldn't hang. I wouldn't wash that. Right? So what, what are they doing? They're in the bath. Carry on with the story. Uh, that's about it, really. I mean, Jesus. that's, that's the, <laughs> the fact that people- So, two people, two little oriental fellas joined in the hip, had a bath. No, no, no. That's no. your story. No, they didn't have a bath. They sort of, everybody, they must have done some sort of research, right? Who? Changarang. Right, and they said, well, what do people want to see? Isn't that basically Roller's song? 
But it's an idea that people have queued up. They've paid the money. They're in a tent. They're going, well, I hear they're going to have a bath. They're going to have a bath. <laughs> two, two Siamese people are going to have a bath. How would they possibly do it? Well, I've heard they get into a bath. But that, uh, that's I don't know what they wanted exciting. to see them nude and where, where the join was. No. More than uh, how do you get in the bath? I don't know. They just that's that's what they picked. <laughs> they said, "What what would be good to see? What what, what do you, you know? What do you want to see them do?" Having a bath. How'd you and get into picked... trousers? Was there was well, this exactly? Special? This is all part of it, isn't it? That's why they picked having a bath. <laughs> <laughs> this is all part of it. Well, then, once we get dressed afterwards. Yeah. It was the best out of Chang and Ang. It was your favourite. Uh, they both look the same, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> There's a surprise. One was a short ginger woman. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, is there anything you you know what what would be better? Than having a bath for you when you'd seen them. What what would sort of make you go, oh, I wonder. Oh, one of them pulling and the other one going home alone. Yeah. I go, look, look, oh, just, she's definitely up for it. I'm taking her home again. Oh, what am I going to do? Can I watch? Definitely not. Definitely not. Look, you go to bed. I want to <laughs> I want to wine and dine her. But if they if they if he's got her back to their place <laughs> and they're going at it hammer and tongs. But are you saying one of them? No, Aaron Tongs were their cousins. <laughs> right. They lived, they lived miles away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if one of them gets knackered, can the other one take over? <laughs> God! I think we, we play that, a record. That annoys me. What? Oh. That, that sort of being at it all night. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's put a song and I'll come back. What to do you it. mean? No, no, no. No, come seriously, because. Okay. REM, yeah. Well, uh, after oh. REM, night swimming, being at it all night, and why it <laughs> annoys Carl. the pots again. <laughs> Relations. Night Swimming by R.E.M. Well, before we played that track, you remember Carl was on the, uh, right teetering on the cusp of telling us why he's annoyed at going all night. I assume you, you mean... Intercourse. Relations. Yeah. What do you mean? What annoys you about that? What, what? Sexual relations all night. The concept. Or people keep you up. Is it your next door neighbours, wasn't it? No, just, just that thing of people who say, oh... Was that it all night last night? <laughs> who says that to you? You know, lads who think they're a, you know, they th think they're a bit of a lad and think that that means it's good. What, like Sting and his tantric sex? Sting. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair, it goes for eight hours, but only three minutes of that is going for it. The, the other sort of, you know, seven and a bit is sort of laying next to each other, isn't it? <laughs> right. Or sometimes in a different room. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that why it's called Sting? <laughs> hey? Well. If you're at it all night, but it <laughs> it's gonna sting. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your problem with this notion of going at it all night? It's just that thing of, uh, you know, get it done right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Get it done. Yeah, get in, get out like the SAS. Once you've done it, you've done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no fanning around. No messing about. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just that, isn't it? It's like, you know, <laughs> do it right the first time. Once you've washed up, Right, you put the pots away, you don't dirty them again. <laughs> what a lovely analogy. That's one of the great Is that, is that what you say to Suzanne? Come on, love. Once you've washed I've up. I've already washed up. You don't dirty the pots again. <laughs> God. What a romantic Ding song. Dong. Hello, is that a fire? Oh. Hello. <laughs> Did he have a moustache, the fireman? Oh. 
Radiohead. They're there on XFM 104.9 on Wicked Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington with the answers to Rockbusters, the, the biggest quiz on radio, probably. Mm -hmm. Do you want to remind us the quiz? No, 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 you mean the crappiest quiz on radio. Yeah. Right. Um, first one was, uh, that fella likes sucking on iron. Yeah. Right? The, uh, the initial was M. Yeah. What was the band? It was Metal Liquor. Alright. What's or Metallica? No, no, wait, wait, I've never heard of a band Metal Liquor. Metallica. Metallica. No, you said, yeah, you said Metal Liquor, I don't understand. Yeah, me Metal Liquor, Metallica. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, say yeah, it again, say it again and try and make Metallica sound like Metal Liquor. <laughs> me Metal Liquor. Metallica. Me Metal Liquor. <laughs> Is he having a fit? <laughs> say it again, make Metallica sound like Metal Liquor. Metallica. Metallica. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, second one, the, uh, Jamaican fella spots a boat. That, yeah. that was easy, that was D, that was Debarge. Uh, you got that. Make it sound like the band? Debarge. Make it sound like a Jamaican fella saying, spotting a boat? Debarge. <laughs> right. So you got that one. Okay. And, uh, the last one. Do you want a game of tug of war? Well, it's up to you, you own it. Yeah. Right, that was E, that yeah. was your rope. Right, Europe. Europe? Right. Who did the final countdown? Yeah. So that, that's the... No, uh, what, what, we've let that go? <laughs> that's the three answers for this week. Who's the winner, Steve? Well, again, I mean, there are lots and lots of people who got it right, Rick. So I don't know if it's just us that think this is rubbish. Right. But, who's the winner? Um, who's the winner? Well, you know, I'm always a fan of people with just something, a, a name, I don't know, that maybe tickles me. <laughs> and sadly, I did want to give it to, <laughs> I wanted to give it to Daniel Jowett. <laughs> because I just, for some reason, Danny <laughs> Jowett. going to start, stop, But stop sadly, I just realised he got it wrong, so I'm going to give it to a different Dan. So not only did you ridicule his name. <laughs> He's not even getting the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, better luck next time, um, <laughs> Danny Jowett. Instead, I'm giving it to Dan Mason, um, of Ilford, so he got them right and he wins those prizes. Alright, well. Okay. More of that next week? I mean, what, what do we think? What uh, are you uh, we'll do it next week then. Yeah. Again. Okay. What are you doing now? Got a record or what's that? Uh. Hoople. But a Motley Hoople? Oh, it's a Hoople. Yeah. Hoople. The Hoops is. Monkey News? Next. Alright. Mark the Hoople, Roll Away the Stone, classic little ditty on XFM 104.9. Alright? Play the jingle. Oh, is it it? Is it it? Brilliant. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey News Extra! <laughs> well, is there monkey news? Uh, i tell you what, I've been having a bit of a problem this week. Why? Um, I, I, it's just been a struggle. Normally, I can come into work on a Monday and there'll be something that's happened over the Saturday, over the Sunday night, do you know what I mean? Over the weekend, the monkeys have done something. <laughs> Been very quiet. I thought, I'll be all right. Let's see how the week goes on. Uh, I don't know if they've caught on to the fact that we're giving this coverage now, mm. or I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Normally people are emailing me stuff all the time about monkeys. Uh, been very quiet week. Uh, been checking, uh, I was looking in books last night and stuff. Uh, so is there any monkey news? I, I've I've got some, but just because it's not that good, something else I found out that I thought I'd share with you. Go on. I was looking in the Guinness Book of Records, right, because I thought they'll have something in there about monkeys or something, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a little monkey, I think it lives in Asia, right? Uh, there's loads of them live in Asia. Might and, just be travelling, but yeah. And, um, something I found out, I don't know if they've got it right, and that's why I want to bring it up. Uh, apparently, it's the mammal, right, that's got sort of the, the pointiest eyes. Eyes that pop out of the red. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, right, I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Apparently it's, it's it's the biggest with the sort of goggle eye type thing. Right, <laughs> 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 right yeah, go on. Apparently, 
they they come out of the red. Um, one point six centimeters. One point six centimeters. What you mean? They protrude. Yeah, they uh, protrude uh, from the head at one point six. Okay. What? How, how long? Have you got a ruler, Rick? <laughs> One point one point six. He's, he's I'd say I'd be a little bit go. annoyed if the monkeys beat me. Well, I don't think it has. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Is there anything we can? I mean, what's one point six? Can you? It's about drop your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, well, oh, about three quarters of an inch. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have they got it right or what? <laughs> Maybe I should come down to Monkey World with you next week. Uh, uh, so anyway, so that's that's not the monkey <laughs> news. That's just something that cropped up. And <laughs> sure, I do know once when we were playing pool in the office. I think Lucy was your partner. Yeah, it was me and Ash versus you and Lucy, and um, you were having trouble because his glasses kept slipping down. So Lucy pushed his glasses up his nose, but the glasses touched his eye. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he started it. He started it. Well, you're the one who joined in. <laughs> no, I know, and I feel I'm, I feel bad now. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me nervous when he goes. Yeah, it's not. Play no, I'm just trying to think about which part of your fat middle-aged physique I can pick on. <laughs> the tits would be a good. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Oh, the belly. Sure. <laughs> or what do you think of that? Oh, that that's what is that? Play a record. Is that monkey news for this week? Have we not got well, any other monkey, monkey news? news? Oh, well, it's just it hasn't been that good. I mean, the one that I found out here, um, because we've covered so much in the monkey world, right? The fact that we've done a monkey that was a sort of half man. We've done a monkey that got a got a decent job in a train station. Um, can you think of any other? other well, that's just some of the great monkey news from the past. That's what yeah. I mean. So that's what you got to compete with. So even though this is quite amazing, um, just thought, tell us. I know the monkey's got married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of the monkey getting married. <laughs> what do you mean? It's got uh, another one. You know, it was knocking about with some uh, woman monkey for a bit. Um, a woman monkey. <laughs> they decided to, you know, get married. Yeah. They did. What do you mean they decided to get married? Was it yeah. pressure from her parents? They had a, they had a good do, and, uh... <laughs> a good do! I love the spread! I love that. Just peanut volivons. Yeah. Cele uh. Celebrated in a pub, and then they both went off to the cage at night. That's, that's what I mean. Even though that is quite impressive, because... But it's not true. <laughs> or it's a joke. It's nothing. It's not... And an over website, official sort of news website. Two monkeys have married in Romania uh, after a whirlwind romance. Well, that's <laughs> after a whirlwind romance. <laughs> God, yeah, yeah, a quick one hanging onto the rope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was in the tire. Yeah, he saw it. <laughs> yeah, he went. I have a go at that. They go. We well, got to marry her now. Yeah. Her parents came and said, "Do you just? Yeah. Did you just shut He was in a zoo, knocking one off. She went. I can do that for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guess say so, the monkey bridegroom. Was scared by the number of people attending the wedding and refused to get out of his cage. No, oh. bride. Was, <laughs> not bloody was, Hello Magazine again. No, it was no. I think it was like last minute nerves. Right, like right, you know, right. you, I, you, I'm yeah, single now. Thought. It's like you know, it's the big step. Yeah. But his bride enjoyed every minute of it. She was loving it. Yeah, she sure. looked lovely, by sure. the way. She looked lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did she look good? Report. She only appeared to have problems with her veil and dress. Do you see? You know, uh, uh, the, the the this is. The guests I hope they didn't ruin there. it like Anthea Turner and maybe get sort of sponsorship PG tips or something. <laughs> tips with strong plum brandy, so they got them drunk as well. So they carried on the celebrations at the pub, and the bride was taken to her new husband's cage at night. I, I really, I, well, I apologise. Play a record. I'll tell you what winds me up. What monkeys getting married? I know. Well, I'm not getting any action, and I got bigger eyes. Little by little, Oasis on XFM 104.9. Well, that's the show. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilgerton. Carl, do you think it was a good show today? It was all right, wasn't it? With some. Uh, what do you think? What do you think the, uh, the 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 uh, the loyal listener has gotten from today's show? What do you think? That we, what do you think that you know we've added to the world? Well, I think I think they know what they've got, right? 
But if someone's just tuned in, I can tell them they've, they've missed out on some, uh, <laughs> some good stuff. They've That's missed out on, uh, Chang and Ang. Yeah. They're the, uh, they're the two who are the one who invented, <laughs> uh, they're the ones who invented, you know, the Siamese twin thing. Yeah, that's it, they invented it, yeah. You've got, uh, you've had, like, I would spend our last day. Yeah. Right? Running people over. Chicken with teeth. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, is it like, you know, there's no other show that could yeah. give you all this. Yeah, go on. Uh, Gay Ankies have done that. Yeah. No one will be having a problem there tonight. Yeah. Uh, another monkey marriage. <laughs> another monkey. Another it one. sounds like the end of the news. Yeah. You know what I mean? The headlines on Sky News and headlines on, and another monkey marriage <laughs> in Romania. Um, if you've thought about having your testicles bigger. Yeah. We've sort of covered that. Yeah. Um, and the monkey that, uh, that had big eyes. Yeah. Uh, if it's listening, you know, its position might not be safe in the Guinness Book of Records. Oh. If, uh, and, uh, and of course, um, Carl stays hard by looking at firemen. <laughs> Indeed, we've also learnt that. Well, that's, that's not, that's not true. Well, you, you did. Yeah. All we know is that you saw a fireman and nothing, see, it didn't seem to affect your, uh, erection. <laughs> we avoided saying erection in for fact, two hours. In fact, if anything, it prolonged it from what we We've can avoided oh, saying just erection just for two hours and then he just, just you know. Healthy young man. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, sure, I'm sure he was. Fireman. I'm sure he was, but... Fireman, keep Carl hard. Right. Amy Mann to end with. See you next week. Bye. Bye.